faces with bright shining places. No, that's not right. Reverse that. Good morning. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee will be at the news desk. There's Josh. Arnold. Hey. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee, and I'm a... I had too much sleep last night. Ever been in that uh, that camp? And here's uh, here's Tom. I'm uh, I feel groggy. I uh, can, can I trade with you? Yeah, out on me my too. Uh, out on my feet. I uh, yeah. Well, it had been a long time coming. Mm -hmm. uh. But what I did was I turned everything uh, in the bedroom, got everything uh, all set. It did the lights dimmed. This is like you know as you go to sleep uh, because it doesn't get dark around these parts until quarter to eleven, mm -hmm. eleven yeah, thirty at night, yeah. something like that. Two a.m. So I had everything in, and I I put on my sleep music, and then <laughs> <laughs> I just le eased back. Uh. And the next thing I knew, it was 12 hours later. Yeah. No, it was something done. else. I slept, uh, I want to say, six and a half hours straight, which is unheard of from this... Uh, really? This... Uh, wet the bed? I did not wet the bed, no. Did you get up at all to pee? I got up after six and a half hours. Okay. Nicely done. No, I mean sleep out, unconscious. Good. Chick, I don't sleep hours. I don't sleep great, but don't most experts say that six and a half should be kind of the standard and if not kind of the minimum? Seven's the minimum, I guess, yeah. is what they say. But yeah. But I, we have a sleep news coming up this morning. Oh. Uh -huh. I sleep uh, two or three hours, wake up screaming. Sleep another two <laughs> oh, or three no. hours, wake yeah. up screaming. Every night. Well, now, uh, this is not applicable to you necessarily, but there is a new term out there from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Yeah. That's got to be a great place to work. Makes you tired. No. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you yawn you, a lot. You, you're, you're late all the time. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, what do you want? I was studying. I'm doing research. Yeah. <laughs> I got finals, man. I'm cramming. The American Academy of Sleep Medicine has coined the term sleep divorce. Mm -hmm. You know what that is, Josh? I do, yes. It's when uh, a couple decides they're going to sleep in separate beds or bedrooms, and uh, it, I, I, it's one of those phrases that marginalizes the actual pain of divorce. Nobody, uh, my kid is cutting themselves. Why? We're going through a sleep divorce. <laughs> Can we not call it anything else? You seem bitter. Well, I just don't like phrases like like that, like uh, ch chocoholic. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, you're... Addicted to alcohol, are you? Yeah. <laughs> there was like trend. alcohol only for chocolate. Yeah. No, it's not really like... Be, oh, these things are so good. It's just no. like crack, is yeah. it? it yeah, is that right? It destroyed a whole community. Is <laughs> yeah. that so? Really? Oh. Yeah, remember that Hershey's <laughs> thing we had? Oh, that was horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, too yeah. much chocolate ran over that kid? Yeah, okay. He's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll be fine. Have the fun days. <laughs> Have the fun See, you know what? Ladies and gentlemen, what just happened was we were having a nice conversation. We got hot. We got hot as well. And someone <laughs> took it too far. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't create this term. It's from, once again, the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. You mentioned finally getting some sleep. Which yes. I, and in I, fact, I think uh, sleep divorce, uh, so-called sleep divorce, leads to less actual divorce. Well, well studies we'll, have shown we'll that. We'll find out, yeah. It's about sleeping in separate beds, mm -hmm. like 1950s television people. I can only... I can only... <laughs> yes. Instead of news reports, I think they should only have experts on all the time who have gone through whatever they're talking about. You know what I'm trying to say? Do you want to like I, 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 w I would say that in my experience, if you start moving into houses with separate master suites, you're going to get divorced. <laughs> That's all I'm going well, to in say. Your, in, in your experience, let's face it, you move into any house with anyone and you're going to get divorced. <laughs> Thank you, Ace. Well, oh, from from the two relationship winners. <laughs> That's right. You're right. I can't argue with anything you've said so far. Sure, I'm an awful person, Chick, evidently. I get it. If you get the house and there's two master main bedrooms, whatever they're called, is there one that's secretly better? And in my head, is it always the oh, woman yes. that secretly oh, yes. gets? Oh, she yes. has a bigger closet. Oh, she yes. has nicer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's all I thought. I'm glad I figured it out. Yeah. yeah and. and uh, let's see. I don't want to get into this, but the term is that you can't say master suite anymore. What is it again? What they primary, change? primary bedroom, primary bedroom. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable the political correctness of everything. Can't say walk-in closet. Why? I'm not kidding. I, I read an article about it because that apparently is um, offensive to disabled people. I was going to say if you could have. Now, my say, dad was uh, in a wheelchair for many, many years. I'm pretty familiar with wheelchair etiquette. I you know he would have thrown his cane at somebody if, if they you could got say roll roll in. 
closet, that might be even be a bigger rolling, closet. Rolling, 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 rolling. Right? Well, yeah, <laughs> it takes more room to turn a wheelchair around than yeah. turn around in a closet. It has got ridiculous. You, you can't win. As the so what Last night when I was primary baiting, it kind of ruined the whole <laughs> experience. <laughs> uh, well, in any event, we'll find out about... Um, so-called sleep divorce. I think it, it is a terrible term, but I do think that for many people, separate beds or bedrooms is a great idea. Well, for people like us, especially who get up so early in the morning, you don't want to wake up your partner, you're no. tiptoeing around. Yeah, that's the thing is, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I am always tiptoeing. I... I get dressed with this, what with my little do? light like no. this, going... Yeah. You yeah. pay the bills. No, no. They should be so lucky to be in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> Every morning. Tom, have you ever been more proud of your son? <laughs> Christy, yeah. you should go, Mama's got to go to work, and you turn on a workout playlist, loud as can be. No, and he's got to no. lay there and suffer through it, because you're the breadwinner, Mama. No, it kind of sucks for everybody. Bread winner like, too, but women no. don't want to sleep with men, because we snore, we have night farts, yeah. we uh, <laughs> can accidentally slice you with a toenail every night. That's again. true. I don't want to sleep with women, uh, and, I, and I don't mean have sex with, I mean sleep with, because uh, I've asked you all day long, what is it, what's on your mind? What would you like to talk about? Oh. Oh. And you don't tell me until oh. 8.59 <laughs> when I'm ready to roll over. Yeah, there's that. Yeah. Well, my oh, sister, goodness. she called me today. She's mean when she talks to me. Women. Well, Christy, why do you, why do you do that? That's Tell great. I know. <laughs> Josh, if you, I've got a couple of ways out of this. One of them is um, you point to this ear and go, this is my bad. It depends which side of the bed you're on. This is my bad ear. I can't hear you. <laughs> That's a classic. That mm. works. And it doesn't. I just do I it know. all the time. You've been using lawyers as an excuse for years. Now that you have a legitimate medical problem, we might yeah. never talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, He's always used that with us. He's always, if he does, uh, my lawyer said, uh, legally, I, uh, or uh, medically, I, and then he fills in whatever he does want to do. It's brilliant. Yeah. I've only recently started doing it, and it really, really works. Yeah, I'll forward you the bills, by the way. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the sleeping what? thing is interesting, and I... Are you trying to tell me that you really, there are really <laughs> things that you've told me that you can't do, and you're, because your doctor or your lawyer has said you can't do them? Oh, that, sure. That's yeah. absolutely the truth. Yeah, absolutely. I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe there's a man alive that could tell you if you wanted to do something, they, they would tell you you can't do that, and you would go, oh, I can't? Okay, no problem. <laughs> I don't believe that would ever happen. If you wanted to do it, you'd do it. I don't know. My heart doctor's kind of convincing. <laughs> <laughs> really? Really? Uh, really? Uh, 38 ounces of caffeine uh, yeah. before you even get here? Uh, decaf, if, decaf, my friend. I don't if we believe found you. out that he had a... <laughs> If we found out he had a secret apartment somewhere in town, and sometimes when he said he was going to an appointment, he was just going to the secret apartment to take naps and watch the bear sure, and read absolutely. the left-sets letter, yeah. you'd believe it, right? Hell yes, I'd believe it. I'd, I'd, I'd be thrilled. Yes. I'd, be so, I'd be like, good for you, man. As a recliner, he, the I man heard doesn't he, even own a I heard recliner. He, took a, he got here early one morning and took a nap. I wanted to throw a parade. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> good job, man. Yeah, I, every once in a while, that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, there's, wouldn't it be great, though, to have, like, a, just a separate apartment, just a sleep place? For some couples, yeah. So for some, no. Rappers Lately. have that. They talk about how... Rappers have that. Yeah, they have their girlfriend <laughs> stay there, and then it's okay because she leaves a key so he can go cut a key, yeah. which means he cuts his cocaine up there, Josh. <laughs> That's see. right. I see. You know, Saturday night was for the wives, but Friday, that was for the girlfriend. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. You know. Is that, nice. is that good fellas? Henry yeah. Hill had an apartment with his girlfriend there, yeah, and he, that's where he cut keys as well. <laughs> yeah. And then his girlfriend had a girlfriend, and uh, he started sleeping with that girlfriend because she could uh, cut up the dope better. What do the remember? cops say when he come in and uh, they see all the powder? All oh, you baking a cake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is that? It's a class for you? Oh, yeah, you know everybody, don't you? <laughs> F.O. Uh, well, we'll get to, uh, well, once again, the, uh, the term from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, the... Um, the sleep divorce. Okay. If you sleep in a separate bed from your uh, partner, uh, send us a note and tell us why and how it's working. Uh, Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com is the way to go. We'd love to hear from you. Also, we have a couple of um, notes about uh, the um, extra stitch. How did that come up yesterday? <laughs> Josh, Josh. this crap. <laughs> I believe he disguised it as a joke. He There's a thin veil. He said he wanted a joke with the doctor. No, I have no interest in doing that. <laughs> I can't imagine. What, my point was essentially that I can't imagine that ever going over with anyone in the operating room. Oh, that's what we were talking about. Um, 
a woman giving birth and then the guy looking at the doctor going, hey, when you stitch her up, how about an extra stitch uh, or two there? Uh, they don't. I've been, guys have told me they've said it, and I just don't, I don't and, know that and I And I got, that, that to me is one of those things that they've heard a hundred times. <laughs> it's like a really old it's, joke. It's just. Know uh, your audience, man. The husband's no, stitch. No we have one's a, laughing. We have a, uh, a number of uh, notes on that topic from oh. folks out there. Right now, let's talk about uh, the summer. Summer, it's the best time to have great times, and you don't want to waste your time. That's where HelloFresh comes in. Maybe a few times a week, how about just grabbing a box? The food is already in there. It's fresh farm-to-table stuff. You picked it. You didn't have to go buy it, though. You didn't have to go to the grocery store and walk around with a cart and that, and that list or checking your phone. No, HelloFresh does the shopping. They do the measuring. You put it together. They even give you cards with pictures. So if you don't know the difference between a, a pomegranate and a watermelon, you can go, wait a minute, this goes here. They've measured it, ready to go. And, of course, it's a farm-to-table stuff, so it's famous for their freshness, hence the name HelloFresh. Willie, what have you been working on over there? Y'all, check out the bruschetta chicken with mozzarella crust, bacon, mashed potatoes, and broccoli. HelloFresh sends you 10 ingredients. You put those together in six easy steps. In just over a half hour, you have this delicious, colorful chicken dinner that you made at home with help from HelloFresh. Some of the stuff takes just 10 or 15 minutes. They've got some great new stuff crunchy curried chickpea bowls or creamy dill chicken cutlets with green beans and potatoes. I'm getting hungry reading about this. And uh, you've got 40 options every week, and you can switch the proteins around, have some fun. They've got everything from vegetarian over that way and way over this way to good old-fashioned comfort food. You make the choices. Have some fun. It's a great way to teach the kids to cook, by the way. Again, they've done the shopping. They've done the measuring. It's all right there. And the secret of those little packets with spices, yeah. check it out. They got their best offer ever, 50% off and free shipping. BT Show 50 is the code. The 50 stands for the 50% off. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 50. You'll need the code a couple times. So remember, BT Show 50 at HelloFresh.com. And uh, by the way, it's great for date night, Josh. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, it is. Like a glass of wine, we're going to make uh, the, uh, I call it Josh Cordon Bleu. Yeah. And I made up the name, but everything else is great. And it's, help, it's fresh from HelloFresh. Coming up today, the opposite of that would be the fresh corpse flower. <laughs> Have you heard about oh, this thing? Of course. This oh, thing is it that again? time of year? It's that yeah. time of year. A couple of them. Okay. And they really stink. They smell like a rotting corpse. And they're in the news. This is the Bob and Tom Show. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. <laughs> Essential Morning Radio. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Bob and Tom Show this morning. I'm Mark Allison. And on the way, Al Jackson will be joining us, zooming his way in from Denver, Colorado, co-host of the nationally syndicated daytime talk show Daily Blast Live. Actually saw Al on the show yesterday looking great in his suit and his glasses. And I'm sure he'll look just as good today. He likes to show up on our show in his tracksuit. He calls it tracksuit Al Jackson. He's also the author of a children's book, Where's Baby Ford? Available at his website aljacksonlive.com and he'll be zooming his way in with a quiz for Tom and Jess Hooker. The cooker will also be in this morning on a Thursday right here on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, everybody. Christy Lee with your Bob and Tom Entertainment News Update. A deadline for Hollywood actors to reach a deal with studios and streaming services is passed without word on whether a strike will be called. The Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists had set a deadline for midnight Wednesday night for a deal to be reached. As of yet, nothing has been announced. If the actors strike, they will join formally with screenwriters on the picket lines outside studios and filming locations in a bid to get better terms from studios and streaming giants like Netflix and Amazon. It would be the first time since 1960 that the two guilds are on strike at the same time. HBO dominates this year's Emmy nominations with the elite trio of Succession, The White Lotus, and The Last of Us combining for a whopping 74 nods. Succession led all nominees at the Wednesday morning announcement with 24. And Sarah Silverman has sued chat GPT maker OpenAI for copyright infringement. Silverman's lawsuit says she never gave permission for OpenAI to ingest the digital version of her 2010 book, The Bedwetter, to train its artificial intelligence models. Her lawsuit says OpenAI likely stole her book from a quote-unquote
We have um, my favorite former lumberjack is in the studio. He is comedian Greg Hahn. Hey, all right. Thanks for having me here. Hey, Chick, we're going to Vegas? We're going to, we're going Vegas. to Vegas. We're going to get a glass of crazy, and we're going to Vegas. <laughs> little blackjack? Yeah. Blackjack. Black, hit me. I don't know how to play it. Just like yelling, hit me. Hit me. 19, hit me. Hit me. 27, keep hit me. <laughs> Take the $700. What is this, a free rum and coke? How do you guys stay in business? <laughs> and I throw the dice. That's what I do. Hit yeah. me. I bring yeah. my own dice. I throw them in. Anywhere I want. <laughs> Greg Hahn is I here with the us. High limit restrooms. Oh, Greg is um, one of my favorite people. Uh, now, before we get to the action, you've never met Jessica before. Hi, Jessica. Isn't she Hi, pretty? Greg. Oh, beautiful. Nice blue eyes. Ten. Now, um, let's. Uh, not like you, you look a little bit different. You've What's got going kind on of, with me? We have kind of a lumberjack shirt on that I like it's very much. It's summer. It's a summer theme. Yeah, it so is. It's very glad. nice. Yeah, yeah, thanks, very Josh. Nice. Josh, madman. Mm -hmm. Is that right? <laughs> now, <laughs> now you know, your, like, uh, like your hair looks. Shows, yeah, what's going on with this? Your uh, hair looks a little different. What I'm wearing it? a mood wig. Oh, mood okay. Wig. Nice. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you got a nice set of hair up there. Thanks. What, what, what color is your hair today? It's a new shade of fake. Bullseye <laughs> <laughs> maple. Witness protection 22. Bozo <laughs> 6. Bozo yeah. 6. It's a new shade of fake. Yeah, a little chocolate uh -huh. thunder. Yeah. yeah. What was it? Bozo 6? What'd you say? Yeah. Bozo 9. Bozo 6. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I like the mood wig. That would be funny. It's darker than normal. It is? It, yeah, you don't it stick is. with the same fake color? No, I don't know. I, I glance at you it. You skip what's on sale? Like, what is that? Uh, it looks like you're doing uh, Elvis just before the end. Oh, and it does not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. Not that dark. <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Greg. I got a story for you. Oh. No, I happen to know a couple things about you. Uh, Marine Corps, what you were uh, exiled as what? A, uh, captain by the time I got. Captain. Man, I was lucky to be in the Marine Marines. It was so great. Okay. Oh, yeah, you, know, you learn stuff. Like now if I'm on a bad date, I just call it an airstrike on my own position. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I happen to know that uh, you have a couple of hobbies. You're a drummer. Yeah, I like um, the drums. You like to play the drums. Uh, as you say, bringing the thunder, I mm -hmm. believe. Right, that's with the double pedal. Uh, sure. For drums, you have the condo. You know you double have bass the, uh, drum. You have the uh, up, uptown condo. Is well, my nice. condo is very, you know, I designed it myself. A lot of ladies don't realize a single man designed my condo. Like the ping pong table faces the drum set. Feng shui! <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how's your dating life? You know, are you kidding me? It's the best! <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being exclusive as long as I can date a few other girls. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I like to get down on one knee. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I say, would you like to be worked into the rotation? Bang! <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm dating a beautiful girl. She's lovely. Been funny, wouldn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. I wish Probably I was a little a more big banana. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> probably, probably maybe have something really straight, like the mascot's yeah. a guy in a suit. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. You have yeah. to provide your own explosions. Yes. I. Uh, mm -hmm. I was making a uh, hundred and thirty dollars a week. Out of that came taxes, my union dues, and there's a, uh, clown, there's a union? clown union. No, it's called uh, Agva. Ah. Is the union? Can you uh -huh. imagine if they were on strike, though? The clown union. The funny. <laughs> the, the picket lines. And... Yeah. Be uh -huh. noisy. And what then... do we want? <laughs> when do we want it? <laughs> Hi, this is comedian Rob Haney, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24/7. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. Yes, gentlemen, she is wearing a pearl necklace today. Is that, right? that? And Christy, is that giraffe print? I don't know. Is it? Yeah, what the hell is it? Nice. Some kind of animal print. I think it's cool. Thanks. I'm wearing a t-shirt and a... What is this? A jacket? jacket? Yeah, you look cool too, man. Dumb. <laughs> and there's uh, Josh Arnold. Oh, hi, everybody. He's here. Yeah, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. Keith. There's Willie Griswold. What's up? Pat Godwin on the road. I'm Chick McGee. Here's Tom Griswold. Pat Godwin uh, had the first of uh, several shows last night in beautiful Sarasota, Florida. At McCurdy's, he is recording his new television special. We'll give you the details on that. It's Life with Pat. If you're around, uh, <laughs> go check that out. Now, uh, a couple of things. Uh, we have to get to. First of all, tomorrow we'll be coming to you live from Dayton, Ohio, the birthplace of aviation. We'll be at the tank inside the Dayton Arcade, a classic building. We'll have some great guests, Duke Tomato and the Power Trio, and comedian Roy Wood Jr. All joining us tomorrow. You can, too. Hope to see you there, or uh, hope you're listening tomorrow for that event. Now, we were talking about a couple of interesting things, including coming up a new story about um, something called the sleep divorce. 
from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Right. And this is a, the, essentially, they're using the term meaning sleeping in separate bedrooms. Do you want to do the story? Go ahead. You got the story there? Um, yeah, as I started to read something else, yeah, I did have it. Here it is. A recent survey has found more than a third of Americans have so-called sleep divorce. According to the poll from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, many couples sleep in separate beds from their partner to get a better night's rest. Hmm. It breaks down like this. 43% of millennials, 33% of Gen Xers, 28% of Gen Z, and 22% of baby boomers sleep in separate beds. I would think it would be the opposite. I would too, but it's... Wouldn't you think more baby boomers, baby boomers would be in separate hmm. beds? Yeah. No, I think they grew up more traditionally with you don't do that. Hmm. Really? Sure. What? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but I I've think been, older people have a harder time sleeping. Though. I've been in relationships where that was the case, where we slept in separate bedrooms. And uh, that was, well, yeah, that one ended the divorce, but I don't think that was the reason. Uh -huh. And then there was another relationship where I had where we slept in separate, separate bedrooms. And that was the beginning of the end. But then I've been in a relationship where I couldn't sleep unless she was in in the bed so or i slept better when she was sleeping with me mm -hmm. so i don't know i think this oh, is that like, might be a personal preference for you. yeah i think it, this is like everything it, it's different things for different people right. and it's still the minority who are doing it right oh you mean uh, non-white <laughs> yes Jesus. And, oh, okay <laughs> non-white non-cisgendered 33 percent of those pulled reported going to sleep at a less desirable time to accommodate a partner 42% uh, said they do not adjust their sleep routine, though, for their new partners. And 18% wear an eye mask. 15% use earplugs when sharing the bed. Okay. What percent wear an eye mask? 18. This is a true story. That seems very high to me. Do you ever uh, wear an eye mask, Josh? No, no. Isn't I, I, But I bet that, uh, that's primarily female. Yeah, but yeah, I know a lot of women that do. The last big-time house I moved in in a legal entanglement. Uh-huh. Uh, about three months into the marriage, I walked to that side of the house and I went into the bathroom <laughs> and it was twice the size of my ba bathroom on the other side of the house. But anyway, I said, what's this door go to? And she said, oh, that's the, uh, that's the toilet. Oh my gosh. I had no idea that she had an extra, a special, you know, they have an extra, a, right. a water closet, right. a literal water mm -hmm. closet right. is what they call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had no idea. Did that get to you? It was like two or three months. Were you jealous? I, I, I wouldn't describe it as jealous is my, uh, was my uh, when, emotion. When she wasn't around, did you go there and, you know, do a quick... Uh, I could have uh, taken her hairbrush and rubbed it in my ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant, did, yeah, you, did, did you make use of the water closet no. facility? No, I did not. Never? No. Well, that that whole thing, that whole that whole deal, yeah. was uh, like a magic trick. I didn't see anything until, well, if we were going to dinner, it was like, okay, I'm ready. And I had no idea how it happened, or if there was a shower over there, or whatever. But it all just happened. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. I think that yeah. can be a positive. Totally separate. Ways. It could. I guess it can be a positive. Not in this case, but I guess it could be. But that may have been not because of the proximity of you to each other. It, you know, no, I think Ace hit it on the uh, head. It was because of me. I think that's the problem. I was present and, in the and relationship. And I'll be devil's advocate. It might have been because of her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't imagine that. Uh, or the two or of maybe you, the two of you right. were just toxic yeah, just together. just didn't mesh. There you yeah. go. You know what? Let's break yeah. this down. They're going to go around the room. Everyone say whose fault it was when their last relationship ended. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know what movie. Movie it is, mine. but no. the line is spoken. I don't want to blame anybody, but they point to it's you, it's your fault, and I laugh every time I hear that. Um, Speaking of relationships, dear Tom, Tom, and the Funny Bunch. Oh, I like that. New show name, new while, show name. While listening to yesterday's show on the VIP app, I heard the insinuation Tom was coming out as gay for Pat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We talked uh, quite a while about it. It's a joke. This prompted an <laughs> this prompted an emergency meeting of the GAC. What's the GAC? Gay Application Committee. Ah. As a decades-long Bob and Tom listener and gay man, I want to thank Tom for his interest. Huh. <laughs> However. <laughs> 
You guys are busy. You got a lot going on. You don't we, need to add him to the we party. We believe our community has plenty of struggles without adding a uh, Griswold. <laughs> <laughs> we thank him for his interest, but are unable to accept his application at this time. Love the show. All the laughs. Best, Chad. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a request, uh, Mr. Obvious. Ah, well, and I had just mentioned that if if um yeah. if I were gay, you guys suggested I get together with Pat, and I said I thought I could do better, and that resulted. In <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the right, right. You'd be so lucky to be with Pat. He could sing you to sleep every night. Well, Pat would have to dye his hair blonde, though. Remember That's that? very funny. <laughs> and and he's lose one hundred and fifty pounds. Is just great. I've got a question. I've got a question. I, I want this answered. I want this answered now. <laughs> Given what he's all, Ace has already said about yes. me. I didn't say anything about you. And now you. just what he said about Tom. Who the hell does Ace think he is? I don't understand. I said nothing about you, Chick. You're, You're a dirty liar. <laughs> <laughs> Who does he think he is? Now, uh, well, um, I what, can... Once again, the topic is uh, having separate Get bedrooms. Get the bricks, pal! And separate beds. Uh, uh, Christy, without getting into uh, good I, present, you know, present, me, my life present day. Is an open book. Um, in the, historically, if you will, or uh, to review your past, have you always been in the same bed with your mate, if you will? Yes. I don't care for mate. I do. I'm trying to be delicate. Significant other. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've I've always been married most of the times. So when I've been with someone, <laughs> yes, we slept in the same bed. Was that did was that a, a, a dig at me right there? <laughs> no. Why? Because you're three bastard children. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I, think, I think you and I are getting our face kicked in this morning. That's all I know. My current situation. Um, he's he still not has there 100. percent He still has his own house right now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that, wow. <laughs> Talk about That's like a sleep bedrooms. annulment. <laughs> that could be fun, but it's really hard to grab a girl's boob when she's in a different house. Yeah. It's really tricky to figure out. How to... Uh, he'll be moving soon. Don't oh, worry. Okay. You mean in, the... into the same house? Of course. Okay. Shoot. He's there 90%. <laughs> not, 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 like, not like to a different state. You got to be, you got to finish your sentences from here. <laughs> Tom, I said wrong idea. I'll, I'll say it again. When Christy and I get married, it'll be Christy's, it'll be our ninth marriage between us. <laughs> It'll be her, f it'll be your fifth and my fourth. Yep. Yes, sir. Oh. You guys are putting up good numbers. Suck on that. That's like Rodman in the playoffs. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, Isn't that yeah. crazy? We uh, got it down to a science. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bob and Tom, my wife and I recently became empty nesters. This left us with an empty room uh, with a bed in it. We quickly figured out that if someone, <clears throat> me, he says, was snoring, neither of us had to sleep in the couch. I also realized if I wanted to stay up until 2 a.m., I could just go to the spare bedroom and not wake her up. Conversely, if I'm exhausted, ready for bed at 9, I can just go to bed instead of waiting for her to finish doing her toes until 10.30. <laughs> so we are officially sleep divorced. Okay. Of course, she got the high-end queen bed. I got the used twin bed. <laughs> but, hey, it's quiet in there. Ooh. So there you go. See, that's how it starts. <laughs> no, th th for all we know, that could save their marriage. Okay. Yeah, we could. I would, you got to get the same bed for each person because there's going to be a secret animosity that builds if someone has a better bed than the other person. Yeah. If you can't sleep, you got a crick in your back and you just hear, oh, she's sleeping sound in there because she's the princess there's, and I don't get to sleep anymore. There's so much else going on in a relationship. The last thing is the furniture. I don't think that's going to, but maybe so. Wait, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, by the way, uh, Ace, you want to take this? Oh, Chick's God. Dis Chick's, <laughs> Chick, is, Chick is discussing marriage and furniture. And interestingly enough, not, I wasn't the one did, buying the furniture. Not only did Chick <laughs> sleep in the couch, he slept he on 10 it. different couches <laughs> in, this, in the course of a year. <laughs> Why is that an insult? Because I contributed right. to uh, economic growth. You, yeah. and and you, tried, you tried to keep her happy, didn't you? And the furniture right. industry. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's, I tried to do the right thing. I got one of his couches. I Son had one of, of his <laughs> I had one of his so, couches. So did Christy. Uh, yeah. How my you get an ad? For those of you just joining us, no. one of Chick's exes would buy a new couch about every two months. And wow. then a new house every year. Yeah. Dad, I know that no one... I'm laughing leaving. up, jackass. No one from the government made you give your furniture away, but besides the table, the table that's the old door, the desk that you use, did you pick one piece of furniture in your new house? <laughs> 
No. And did you want to? I, I don't know that no, I'd no, want here's to. The, yeah, no. Josh is bringing up a good point. Sometimes, a lot of time, I think, if you're in a relationship, if, yes. if that's what she wants to do, that's wonderful. And seeing her happy is your that's reward. That's so sweet. And just, Absolutely. And women are better at that for the most part. No, not at seating things. Hot girls sit like idiots. Hot girls sit on tiny little chairs. <laughs> I need a big couch. I need to sprawl out. Hot girls are never comfortable. Oh, they shouldn't be picking out couches and beds. <laughs> huh. What have you done, Tom? What have you done? No. Go to a fancy hotel. Right. They have terrible chairs in the lobby because hot people don't get cozy, man. I want to get in there. I wanna... Now, Willie does make a good point. I want a dent in the couch. That's Willie's spot. Yeah. Ooh, a little smelly and it's kind of weird. I, on occasion, would be showing a photograph and go, looks good to me. Yeah, I yeah sure. Yeah. I don't have the whatever... Uh, and they're very kind of excited taste. about it, and it means a lot. Sure. And everything came out just fine. But I've got my old door table for my desk. Do you have a chair? Do you have your chair? For, uh, my desk, of course. No. Oh, like, you mean a chair that I sit in? Oh, no. Yeah, like I, I come I home and I sit in my chair chair. You like, don't see him do sit. He, don't, he does not go anywhere and sit, I don't think. They've yeah. just got a couch, and it feels like cardboard on concrete. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. That's not true. It feels like velvet on concrete. This is a nice place. <laughs> this is a nice place. <laughs> no, I'm not a person. I don't have a chair where I sit. I don't watch TV. Tom's a great white shark. If he stops, he's he's done. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't. Yeah. I have dogs to walk. Where do you watch Pla plants, television? Plants to water. I have almost never watch TV anymore. <laughs> it just kind of glances at stuff. And then okay, but if on. you were to sit down and watch a television show, where would you do that? Just a couple spots. <laughs> <laughs> Christy, there's a couch in the living slash kitchen area, yeah. and there are four chairs outside by the pool that the girls watch TV at. That's uh -huh. a great spot. And those chairs are awesome. Yeah, great are job best. on those chairs. Oh, those okay. chairs must have been picked by some ugly designer that was working with you guys, because those are cozy. <laughs> <laughs> They're lovely. They're great. Yeah. What does it say, though, about, well, I don't, th do you, don't you all agree that we'll never get relationships figured out, but... We'll keep trying. trying. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Isn't that interesting? That's because, you know, I don't know. it's because of the sex, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, Just that's part to be of it. more subtle and say the part of There's a reason it is pleasurable. That's sweet, sweet. Sweet, <laughs> <laughs> sweet. sweet. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> and a lot of women like that. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> Give me that car. <laughs> <laughs> and now this report from Dick Long. And Dick, what's going on with the, uh, Coming up, we have sporting news. And, of course, Chad from the Gay Application Committee. He, Thank you, Chad. Yeah, and, thanks, buddy. Um, yes. Oh, I, I promised I would read this. Do we have time? Yeah. Um, Got all the time in the world. You were talking about the, uh, the, the, the so-called joke. In the birthing room, the husband says to the doctor, mm -hmm. Hey, Doc, while you're down there, why don't you put in an extra stitch? Yeah. That can't ever get a laugh. <laughs> um, Certainly not from the woman. Uh, this is from an this is from an OBGYN. When someone says, "Hey, can you put in an extra stitch for me, Doc?" I say, "I always do that for the little guys." <laughs> Hilarious! Yes, Zingo! Jason's written in from Texas. He says his wife's doctor is the one who said he actually said, "Hey, you want me to put an extra stitch in for you?" And we've all had a doctor or two that's the funny doctor or whatever, which sometimes is, is yeah. <laughs> not. Uh, yeah. Helpful. <laughs> yeah, not now, Doc. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Let's see. My friend's wife had just given birth and was getting stitched up. The doctor looked at him and said, let me guess. You're going to tell me to put extra stitches in. He looked at him and said, no, leave a couple out. I'm tired of her screaming all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> By the way, P.S., his wife was not amused. See, that's the thing. Uh -huh. Thank you, Scott, from Pennsylvania. Kiss your wife on the... I, look, I've never been in a birthing room, but I, I imagine you kiss your wife on the forehead and uh, you're probably crying. You get her some ice or whatever and uh, don't make jokes about her vagina. No. <laughs> Here we go. This is from Doug in Iowa. Our neighbors recently had their fifth child. The husband told me he had asked the female doctor to add a couple of stitches, <laughs> which earned him a scowl from the doctor without missing a beat. His wife told the doctor, just go ahead and sew the damn thing shut. <laughs> <laughs> hey! There Excellent. You go. Uh, Very helpful. Very helpful. What's coming up in sports? Uh, well, we had the ESPYs last night, uh, one of Tom's favorite events. I know he looks forward to it every year. In case the money in the... <laughs> uh, 
to Wimbledon. We're down to the uh, the semifinals. That's on, not over. On both sides. <laughs> and there are exactly no Americans left. Uh, when did Americans lose the ability to win at tennis? Uh, it's been announced that uh, a certain team that Aaron Rodgers might be playing quarterback for now, uh, they're going to be the official NFL team on hard knocks this season, which is the only choice that really makes sense. Because it'll be great. And uh, let's see, what else we got here? Do you think the NFL will continue to allow that show to go on once the contract is over? What do you mean? Well, they, they, the teams don't like it. I don't, well, it think, I don't think what the teams like or dislike yeah. has very little to dis do with decision-making in the National Football League. The bottom line, the shield, the cash. I see. Okay. The well, God we trust is what matters. But okay, right now, uh, it's a quiz time. We've been talking about beds all morning. I think this is actually a great point. We were talking about the so-called sleep divorce, where people can't get along because they have different tastes in beds, et cetera, et cetera. This is where the sleep number bed is way ahead of its time. Oh, yeah. Because um, they understand that um, everybody has their own their own thing when it comes to, say, the firmness of your mattress. So, for example, Christy Lee, your sleep number setting is what? 45. And that is a softer mattress, yes. whereas Chick McGee, yours is... 100. I like that firm mattress. Too. And uh, with the sleep number bed, you can have that on either side of the bed so everybody's happy. That could be a 45 on the left. On the right, it could be 100. Whatever you want, and you can change it at the touch of a button. And there are a number of different sleep number beds, by the way, that respond to your movements throughout the night to keep you sleeping effortlessly that actually will help you figure out a way to get better sleep. And it's not just the firmness. There are all kinds of things involving the uh, position of the head they can have it they can raise it up so that can help for example with acid reflux issues lots of interesting stuff so you want to spend a little bit of time at the sleep number store to find it you go to sleepnumber.com slash bt show because you want to sleep at the next level we all know that sleeping is very important and right now how about this for important save a staggering twelve hundred dollars on Sleep Number's most popular 360 smart bed. And by the way, special financing is available for a limited time. Details on that can be found at your Sleep Number store. So check it out, sleepnumber.com slash BT show. I know I love my Sleep Number bed. I believe I'm on year 19. And Sleep Number beds, by the way, are famous for lasting longer. And I can tell you, you're going to love yours. Check it out, sleepnumber.com slash BT show. Also coming up, ever heard this term? The eargasm? Mm. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> You're aware of this? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we're going to find out what it means. I didn't know anything about it. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to The Bob and Tom Show this morning. The show is also out there for you on our YouTube channel. Watch and subscribe. Chris, are you, you're a single guy, right? Uh, I am, 37 and single. Nobody plans that. <laughs> <laughs> right? No one's in high school going, I'm just going to wait till the end and see who's left. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to find someone my age if for no other reason than they would get my references. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> right, you get tired of telling girls who the Black Crows were. <laughs> and I don't know if you've ever dropped a Fletch reference on a 23-year-old female, <laughs> but you might as well hand that girl a ruby cube and a beeper because <laughs> she's just staring at you like what's a water buffalo <laughs> it's hard to even find a single 37 year old woman and then when you do they have a tendency to fall into three categories they're either a super career oriented successful chick mm -hmm. So I'm out, <laughs> right? Those girls are looking for a guy that owns a suit. Mm -hmm. I have a pair of slacks. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I know I got them because my mom bought them for me, so I had something to wear when people die. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever shown up to a funeral in jeans, but your mom refuses to let that go. <laughs> yep, I agree. In my defense. Fence, the funeral I showed up to in jeans was for a 94-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. Not exactly a tragic event. <laughs> 94 is a solid run. Yeah. It's about time. Uh, have you ever been to a 94-year-old person's funeral? Nobody's sad. Everyone's just happy to be off work on a Tuesday. <laughs> A second category of women single at my age are divorcees, and those women are like Chernobyl. They're beautiful, 
but something bad happened, <laughs> and now we all need to leave it alone for a few years. <laughs> for the millennials listening, Chernobyl is a city in Russia. I know a lot of you are wondering why I'm mentioning that map on Call of Duty. Uh, and the last category of women single at my age are women that have been single the entire time because their therapist hasn't quite got their pill combo locked down <laughs> and they still have episodes where they'll break into your apartment and set fire to kittens. <laughs> I don't even have kittens, man. She brought them. <laughs> Chris Porter. Hey, you dog owners. Listen up. This is something for your big sweetie. Chew Works. Has your dog ever scarfed down one of those chew sticks without really chewing? Chew Works has a hold to chew which will prevent choking and GI blockage. When dogs can't properly hold the chew stick between their paws anymore, they tend to just swallow it. Available in three sizes, mini, junior, and large, extra large coming soon. Their whole purpose is to provide a safer and healthier way for your dogs to chew. Chewworks.com. confused. Has this ever happened to you? Oh my, just look at that. What am I going to do? Uh, what's wrong, honey? Look, look in the mirror, all that gray. Boy, did it sneak up on me. <laughs> no, it didn't. You mean it's been gray for a long time? <laughs> Only all of your life, sweetie. <laughs> your brain matter is supposed to be gray. Now close up your cranium and come to bed. All right, dear. Oh, I'm so lucky to have you. I totally agree. Ha, 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 ha. If the top of your head is cushy and gray, hair color is not your problem. Remove that hatchet from your skull. Say hello to your cerebellum. <laughs> oh, dear, you've got a little gravy on your blouse from dinner. Oh, honey, that's not gravy. That's part of my frontal lobe. Ha, 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 ha. Just for morons. From Frigamall Industries. Ask for it by name. Sunshine. Bob and Tom, 24-7, 24-7, 24 We have a topic today, Kostaki? We do. The topic today, uh, sort of dovetailing the uh, Super Bowl, it's uh, company slogans. Okay. And a bunch of them are beer slogans. They seem to be uh, <laughs> handy for joke writing, the beer slogans. Uh, Sam Adams, their slogan is, always a good decision. <laughs> Really? Beer is always a good decision? Wait a minute. I can say no. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Yes. Uh, this might be my favorite slogan ever. Uh, it's such a beer guy slogan. Carlsberg, probably the best lager in the world. Only a beer slogan could start with the word probably. Like, we don't even know. Who cares? It's got to be top 100, right? Have a beer already. That is a very fine beer, though. I must it is say. a good beer. Probably the finest. But think about it. No other company could get away with that. Like, you can't have Delta. We'll probably get you there. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. Can I say something about driving on the highway, first of all? Sure, yeah. People got to focus. It's scary out there. Amen. Mm -hmm. I was on the highway. A guy next to me is texting while he's driving. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look at this son of a... And then I hit a car. <laughs> <laughs> So I think wow, he won. it's dangerous. I think he won that round. Uh -huh. <laughs> Game, set, match, yeah. Accident next to me, LOL. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> OMG. Uh -huh. so, text and drive. WTI. No, I see it all the time. I can barely see the I've letters yeah. anyway. I, I, drove by a, I told you this. I drove by a lady with a book open on her steering wheel. Reading. And eating a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, wait a minute. You know what? Mm, oh pizza. <laughs> Hi, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. My name is Jim Gaffigan. I have to go and, well, I just had a... Tickets to that event.
Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. Ace Cosby's here. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. The Hello, Griswold. Tom. Tom, you received some sad news earlier when uh, a representative from the Gay Application Committee... That's right, Chad, uh, yes. ...has announced that you've been denied. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I was thinking, you were saying, if I were to go gay, would I hook up with Pat Godwin? And I said right. I thought I could do better. Mm, yeah. Uh, that resulted in a... Poor Pat being upset. Oh, I well, bet. sure. <laughs> Pat's not here, but he's he's at McCurdy's in Sarasota, Florida, taping his uh, television special or, 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 or recording it, I should say. Sure. Uh, Frank has written his. He says, uh, "Yeah, just heard about the gay application for Tom. I think Chad uh, hit the nail on the head by denying uh, Tom's application, but Chick would be most welcome to join. Oh, as you are a uh, handsome and sexy bear." So. What the hell did I? I mean, I'm, I'm. No, you're flattered. being welcomed. With I'm, open, I'm flattered with open arms. All right, well, and, and open I'll, ass cheeks. I'll have to take. <laughs> well, I can see why they. <laughs> They denied passed, him? Passed on your app application. Yeah. Yeah, and you'd make it all about yourself. You'd insist the G and LGBTQ stood for Griswold. It'd be a real <laughs> ego thing for you. Uh, mm. This email's from Leslie. Man uh, or woman? Uh, I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to guess uh, a woman. Okay. She says, for 39 years, I've listened to your program. My kids listened at the breakfast table. We played Bob and Tom in the car. We picked up six neighbor kids for school every morning. We sang with toast and orange barrels. And July 13th, 2023, I am retiring. Oh, wow. You have gone to work with me every morning since the 80s. If you ever oh. question why you do what you do or dread coming in on a cold Indiana morning or a hot summer morning or... Any morning, really. Any morning, really. <laughs> in, in any state. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. you're, you're going to walk in here and you're going to get insulted by Ace. I mean, yeah, you know, I can see Ace how you feel. brings it for some reason. <laughs> know that you bring joy. I laugh in the car. I repeat stupid jokes. And unfortunately, I, yes, relate to Tom way too much. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing your talents. I'm heading up to Michigan to see what all the fuss is about. That's uh, from Leslie and Tara Hope. Well, congratulations right. to you, Leslie. Thank when she said gosh. she was retiring, did anybody oh, else nice. think that the show is just so bad today <laughs> that she goes, I'm out? Yeah, no, she must have heard more. last Wednesday's show. <laughs> Don't. Sorry, we, we're still apologizing. Oh, man, Wednesday. Right? Yeah, yeah, you come off a four-day weekend. Yeah, come on. <laughs> None of us can get it together. Uh, why don't we just do a letters segment right now? Okay, sure. good. I've got yeah, another one, too. You have yeah, one? I got, well, I got a I stack you. of random um, stuff here. On yeah, we hit a nerve. Topics. Yeah, I think we... We got the topic of sleeping in separate bedrooms. That's the one. Uh, we've got the topic of tipping, which um, uh, this all started when I mentioned that I'd tip the guy at the movie movie counter after getting the popcorn. And admittedly, the popcorn was quite expensive. And that made Josh mad. Yeah. But you have to understand, the, the movie theaters, they only make money on the concessions. They don't make any money in the movies. They well, make a, sure they make they a small percentage on the movies, but but you're right, you're right. Most when you of see it, those big blockbusters making hundreds of millions of dollars, the theaters get a, a couple million each. Oh, I'm thinking they get about, they, they get they get about one percent. I think is yeah, it's nothing. So they've got to pay the you know the air conditioning bill and the, the, but this kid was working hard, so he just slipped him five well, bucks. And you you found the one kid working hard at a movie theater in the last ten years. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen them. <laughs> and I I worked at a movie. Hey, theater. Wait a minute, I'm the old man here, not you. <laughs> 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 Not anymore. And I, I mentioned that you know you want to at Christmas time, especially you tip the garbage man, whatever. Yes, and but the mailman. And, and my other point was the tipping has become a little weird with respect to the new system with credit cards, mm -hmm. where they flip around that. They're they're all different now. Some of them you put your card in, then they give you a piece of paper to sign. I wish that would go away. <laughs> That's a pain in the ass. I like the ones where you put the card in, and then it flips around, and you can. But it, sometimes it'll ask for the tip, which is great. You can hit 10, 20, 20 25 percent. I whatever. like the tapping. The tapping with the card. You tap on the yeah. card, and it, and it beeps. I like. Well, can't we get those to work universally? Yeah, that's they, never worked that's, for me all mm, once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm and really I excited it when it does work. Once. Yeah, but but the p larger point here is then we, there was a news article about how this one guy went to his veterinarian's office, and when he went to pay, it turned around and there was they wanted that it, it asked for a tip, which no, yeah, that seems somewhat odd. You guys are tipping your doctor. Yeah, well, do you want to <laughs> live or not? I don't think I don't think twenty percent's enough. Oh. Uh, dear Bob and Tom Show. Um, I live in a small city, has its own garbage collection. The garbage man will walk up to my elderly neighbor's house to get her cans for her, walks them all the way back. Aww. This makes me smile and happy to live in a small town. They deserve a tip. They do. Yes, they do. Okay, there you go. So Isn't it enough they go through all our garbage and... and... <laughs> 
You're saying uh, them taking home our trash is gift enough or tip yeah. enough? And they see stuff they like <laughs> and they sell it and stuff. Oh, and I'm sure yeah. they do, especially <laughs> celebrities. I Brand think that... Chick McGee is royalty, right. broadcast royalty. You see you my be so toilet. lucky to carry my, his Diet Pepsi cans. Toilet paper roll. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just the cardboard part. Right, yeah. Random letters. Here's one, another Tomism. Hey, gang and Christy, I was reading some random facts. Found one that screams Tomism. Penicillin was first called mold juice. Mold juice. <laughs> hey, pass me some of that mold juice. If I'm not you're drinking going... mold juice, what about penicillin? Uh, <laughs> if you're seeing a doctor and Thanks, they use the Keisha. term mold juice, <laughs> it might be time to get another doctor. Yeah. Was that because penicillin became is... out, it came out of mold? Obviously. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Isn't kombucha just mold juice? Yes. Just old mold. Tastes like tea? it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Christy. I cannot stand I that can't stuff. Can't either. Ugh. You ever had that, Josh? I have, yeah. And it's uh, it's like... Uh, it has its place. It's, yeah. it, first of all, it sounds like the name of a Russian submarine, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, do you? They, uh, they, 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 they trace the kombucha. To try I am on kombucha. The nuclear... Uh, kombucha. Slammed do you like it? Uh, I thought the flavor was okay. I didn't care for the consistency. Sometimes it gets a little stringy. Uh. Mm. <laughs> hmm. Kendra has written in uh, from Michigan. Oh, smooth. I've always been a morning person. My husband is a night owl. We've been together for 21 years. Married for 15. Have always slept separately. We're very happy and still enjoy each other's company. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. And when you do that, if you have separate bedrooms, is one of them the designated... Uh, do it zone? Uh, oh, sex was... den. Oh, oh excuse me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Killing block. Killing yard. Yeah. <laughs> Ace, Ace, what's the term for your bed? What do you call it? Heaven. <laughs> Heaven. Welcome to heaven, baby, he says. <laughs> Would you like Let's to read see. my latest romance novel? And get it over there? <laughs> Take a look at that. So it's, it's wildly inappropriate. I need to, under, uh, since I don't, I don't have the separate bedroom thing going, but is, is one would typically be a, I mean, can you come visit anytime you want? How does that work? I think that's there, part of the fun. Are there rules? I'm sure there Not are. I think, it's, I think it's part of the fun, but. Uh, well, Christy, you've had this situation. Did you? Was there one that was the designated, uh, shall we say, love room? Yes. Oh, okay. Was it the one that you slept in ordinarily? Or yes. Was... Oh, well, that's interesting. Was it the one with hairspray marks on the headboard? <laughs> oh, hairspray? That must have been someone else. <laughs> oh. Uh, was, uh, how did that work exactly? Was the was there a, a were there certain hours posted or? Oh. What after, after <laughs> the doctor is in type thing? Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, they had a clock out. So be what? be back in the morning. And then, <laughs> By the way, how, how many how many physicians out there? I want a real quick question, or anyone with a PhD. Now that I think about it, uh, in, in the beginning of an intimate moment, have said, "Oh, baby, the doctor is in." <laughs> <laughs> now he's out. Now he's in. It's kind of irresistible, isn't it? No. Uh, let me ask you this: though, Do you make you? cute little remarks like that when you're? <laughs> no, he mustn't. There's no talking. Yeah. How do you initiate sex, Dad? There's no talking. You say, uh, uh, Christy. Let me ask you this though. Uh, let's just go back in time. This is not your present day situation. Right. <laughs> this is when you had the separate bedrooms. And I didn't have separate bedrooms. I, yeah, I was wondering. Chick did. Chick, when you had separate <laughs> bedrooms. What? Which one was, was did there? Did you just get me and Christy confused yes. again? Was there yes. a designated love room, if you will? No. Oh, there wasn't? No. But if there was an event, shall we say, yeah, an intimate event, would then you stay there, or do you immediately we get can, up and go back to your place? We can talk about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move on. Well, I'm sure we'll get on to a topic, Thank though, you. initiating. Do you have, like, a move? or? Yeah, do you, do you, <laughs> well, with the separate bedrooms, do you knock on the door? Do you have to get permission? No, I'm serious about this. Like, do you have a move? Do you have a... We'll I'm kind of like a third base come, coach. When we come back. When we come back. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> Got something to say? Send us an email. Bob and Tom at BobandTom.com. This is... Hey, guys. My dad has a new album out called Under the Bed. And it would really help a lot if you were to check that out so I can go to college. Please. <laughs> just, I'm just getting ready. Oh, oh, oh there's one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, one, seven, eight, eighteen wheels on a big rig. Everybody, here we go. Oh, there's 
And they're rolling, 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 roll. Okay, let's back them up. Here we go. Oh, there's 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 4, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wheels on a big rig. Okay, the even numbers. It's an easy Oh, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Wheels on a big rig. And they're rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, by one and a half. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh, there's one half, three, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, ten and a half, eighteen. We are on a big rig, and they're rolling, 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 rolling. rolling. Okay, the odd numbers. Here we go. Oh, there's one, three, five, seven, seven, eleven. On a big rig, and they're rolling, 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 rolling. Okay, Roman numerals. I'm here. I'm ready for this one. All right, go. Oh, there's I, 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 V, 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 I, V, I, I, V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, 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 wheels on a big red. Yes, very good. Roman, 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 Roman. Okay, Roman numerals backwards. Here we go. No. Oh, there's X V I I I X V I I X V I X V X I V X I I I X I I X I X I X V I I I V I I V I V I V I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I Cannabis industry has grown at lightning speed with weed dispensaries now almost as common as your corner grocery store. One shop manager in Bangkok says half his customers are first time weed users and most of them are Asian. And that's your news. I'm Christy Lee. More of the Bob and Tom show on the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob and Tom. I only uh, use family bathrooms now. Oh, do you? Mm-hmm. Do you sit on that little baby toilet? That's where I crap. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you, do you uh, position yourself, co- contact, butt, to seat, or do you hover and do the 30 seconds over Tokyo thing that I do? <laughs> I count down. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24 7. Hey, this is comedian Ron White, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Your horse says run, it's very last race, and there's nothing left to do. Giddy up, giddy up. We don't think it's very good taste to turn him into glue. Giddy up, giddy so up. if your horse has lost his stuff and his legs aren't thin and bony, giddy up, giddy if up. his meat ain't very tough, then he comes to Burger Pony. Now, when you come into any participating Burger Pony restaurant and order our Swale and a Pail, every kid in your group will receive a free hot fudge Sunday silence. And don't forget our Clint Eastwood <laughs> Western spaghetti. <laughs> And our delicious burgers, including the Daily Double and the Triple Crown. <laughs> and remember our motto, if we're not in your neighborhood yet, your neighbors have probably passed a petition. <laughs> <laughs> so if your horse has lost his stuff and his legs aren't thin and bony, and if his meat ain't very tough, then he comes to Burger Pony. Comes to Burger Pony. Comes to Burger Pony. Bob and Tom. For your information, these are two of the worst kids I have ever encountered in my life. And I worked the state fair. We were stupid before stupid was cool. Why do you have to get drunk to be an ass? Why do you have to get tight before you get loose? Why do you need a double before you get into trouble? Can't you get into trouble without an excuse? You want to get up and get out and get free and get crazy. But why do you have to start by getting stoned? Pad, you don't have to get drunk to be an ass. You can be an ass. <laughs> 
on your own. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus said, take this bread and eat it. It is my body. And the disciples said, Jesus, we're all on low-carb diet. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you dying for our sins, but we're all trying to slim down. Like <laughs> we want to look good in the painting. Horse racing, you said you're from Kentucky. You love horse racing. Love horse racing ponies. is my passion. The only sport that I really love is, is horse racing. I've owned a couple horses. We wow. we're, tr we're purchasing one now. In fact, a, a two-year-old colt. Cool. I don't know if you all know this. All Kentuckians know this, and most people around the country know thoroughbreds are named traditionally after a combination of the mother's and father's name, the sire and dam line. For mm -hmm. example, I didn't Kentucky know Derby winner Ali Sheba, out of his father, the great stallion Ali Dar, and its mother, the broodmare Belle Sheba. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're looking at one now uh, called, out of a sire named Whiny Bull by a, a mare named Girl on Girl. We named it Rosie O'Donnell. It's <laughs> 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 an old uh, Eskimo trick of how to uh, catch a polar bear. Now, you, what you do is you go cut a hole in the ice. Right. Right. And then you take little peas and you place them strategically four inches apart all the way around the hole right and a polar bear will crawl up and he'll look at it in very much curiosity as what is going on there now when he bends over to take a pee you kick him in the ice hole <laughs> <laughs> you don't say we didn't warn you there's laughter ahead this is bob and tom 24 7. the nation window nation Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold's here. Pat Godwin on the road. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold sneezing. Sorry about that. Hey. Uh, <coughs> welcome. <coughs> Excuse me. You all right? <laughs> Boy, that one, that one really got the you. The International Snot Society. Your glasses are slightly uh, askew. I you looked uh, dazed. I'm, <laughs> I'm confused. I'm fine. Welcome back to the program. We have a lot of different things we're talking about at the same time, of course, including um, this uh, new story about what they're calling sleep divorce at the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. Uh, suppose they have a big office and are there, sure. beds, are there beds in that station? You can take a nap anytime you want. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Uh, they're <laughs> saying that um, uh, more than a third of Americans have a so-called sleep divorce, meaning that um, couples are sleeping in separate beds. We got a lot of um, action on this and a lot of letters. And it's funny because two of them had the exact same uh, question that I asked and they've answered it. What? About the love making? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, this guy writes, um, you know, Tim writes, I've been married 16 years. We've slept in separate rooms for the past 10 years. She tells me I snore. I don't know what she's talking about. I've never heard anything. <laughs> he goes, also, right. I get up at 2.30 in the morning and she's a light sleeper. We get along a lot better if I'm not waking her up. By the way, I've decorated my room like it was when I was single. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, oh, that's one of the beauties of that. And he goes, when we have our intimate time together, sometimes it's a home game. Sometimes it's a road game. Yeah, ah. that, that's got to be fun. Yeah. Hmm. And then, um, let's see, this uh, This is another letter from Dan. I'm a 3 a.m. riser with a four-bedroom house. The kids are gone, so it makes sense. I can go to my room and go to bed at my early hour, usually by 9. She can stay up as late as she pleases, not worry about disturbing me. You know, me, the breadwinner, <laughs> writes Dan. By the way, date nights are a your place or mine or home or away game. See, that's got to be so fun. Hmm. Can you imagine being in bed? Let's say a couple, a little stale maybe in their marriage, 55, 56 years old or so. <laughs> They're in separate bedrooms. Yeah. He's and, got quite the scenario going and, here. And uh, they, all of a sudden, oh, you got a text and you look and it's your husband, you up. Isn't that fun? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun for a couple? <laughs> and then she texts back, no, but our neighbor Bill is. <laughs> and, and he in. keeps it up. And in. It's got to be fun. I like that home or away game. Yeah. So, um, and, and uh, I, you, you've never had the separate bedroom thing, Chris? No. Okay. No. Tom, your uh, your lady comes up to you and says, you know what, I want to make love tonight, but I don't. <laughs> I, I said, oh. oh, so the neighbors are coming over? I don't. Uh, Is this a fairy tale? I don't want to do it in our uh, bed. Yeah. You get to pick the place in the house that's not a bed. What, what, what area do you choose? That's a very good question. And I got a new house. I know. Yeah. You christened every room, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you sure I am. No, I every room? No. Hey, tonight we're doing the seven-year-old's room. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Why did you have to go down creepy road? You said every word. Yeah, I, the Taylor Swift poster is really going to help. <laughs> it might. The, yeah, I was going to say she's hot. How about the pool? Have you done? You God, of course not. Uh, <laughs> man, I got the pool before you did. Weird for you. Uh, <laughs> Memories. Willie just texted me, not joking. Oh, <laughs> good for you, man. <laughs> well, we have, t for some reason. You ignored the letters. question. What room would you pick? I don't He's know. He's not going to discuss yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Christy, what would you pick? Um, kitchen counter? No, it's too cold. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, that's nice. You got marble, huh? Put down a, put down a pot holder. <laughs> <laughs> Slide around. <laughs> Probably the living room. Oh, yeah? It's got a nice velvet couch in there. Oh. Yeah, that'd be nice. All that'll right. Clean, that'll clean up. Hmm. Put a towel down or something. Oh. See, here's the problem. <laughs> I thought you were past the days You presented the, down. the scenario, and that's what you say. <laughs> well, it'll be easy to clean up, I guess. <laughs> Is velvet clean easily? I don't know. I've never had the, have to have the problem. To... Let us know in three days or whatever. Right. Right. I'll let you know when we get back from vacation. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, we promised we would uh, dip into sports briefly. Do we have anything of interest over there? Oh, no, oh, now you want to talk. You know, there are no Americans left at Wimbledon, except in the stands. What does that mean? So Why okay. should there be w Americans at Wimbledon? Why has that got your uh, being well, a bonnet or whatever you want to say? There was a time when this country would prov prov <laughs> produce, produce many great tennis players. And uh, first semifinal. The semifinals are set. Uh, you got Carlos Escape from Alcaraz. Yeah! Nice. Very funny. Uh, versus number three, Daniel Medvedev. And uh, he beat uh, Medvedev, beat uh, Eubanks. And then uh, the other semifinal, Novak Djokovic, the Joker, against uh, Yannick Sinner. S i n n e r, sinner, oh, sinner, and then on the uh, ladies' side, uh, let's see, uh, first semifinal between Alina S Slit, 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 and Marketa Vondorov. Ponderosa, and uh, number two, uh, Arnia Sabalenka, and number six, Onus Jabberjaw. <laughs> I believe that's anus. Jabber anus Jabberjaw. Jabber. Jabber. <laughs> Remember the shark, Jabberjaw? Are we talking about TV? He, Jabberjaw was uh, Curly Joe, wasn't he? He was essentially Curly, yeah, yeah in uh, shark form. What's Jabberjaw? It, it was, was a, a cartoon, cartoon shark. shark. Here it is right now. <laughs> By the way, Jeez. what are you guys doing out here? You sank our sea liner. Oh, I'm a big shark. <laughs> wow. A rare Holy. misstep by Hanna Barbera. Holy cow. <laughs> did they did they pay the Three Stooges a royalty on that I one? Doubt, I, I mean, I liked it when I was a kid, but could that be copywritten the way the Three Stooges talked? Not yes. really, because Stimp no. was it, uh, Ren or Stimpy. One of them. Who's the not Chihuahua one? I don't know. Uh, it's based off Larry. Larry, Fine. for sure. Yeah. Well, well, yeah he, well Billy West has he said that he. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said yeah. he used. But that's Larry's, great. That's funny. Yeah. Isn't you know, Homer Simpson was originally Walter Matthau. That's who Dan Kestel and Edda was doing. Oh, huh. really? Yeah. Isn't huh. Bugs Scratch on Marx kind of the kind of yeah. yeah? And Fred Flintstone is Jackie Glees. Oh boy, that whole show is the honeymooners. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody put up on Twitter the other day a recording of uh, the voice actors for the Flintstones, and it was wonderful. It was uh, the guy. They were all standing there at the microphone, and it was Mel Blanc as Barney, and uh, I forget who the old actor is that played Fred, but he's the classic actor. You know, Barney. And then B. Benaderet and uh, that other lady. It was, it was a nice picture. That's I cool. I myself for a couple. Dear Chick, I'm a trash guy in Columbus, Ohio. Hi, trash guy. You are right. If we find something we like or if it's worth something, we will oftentimes keep it and sell it. Why That's wouldn't you? Right. <laughs> That's one of the perks. I've sold things on eBay that have come from the trash. Oh. Thank you, Steve, for being honest. I that's great. I, I, there you, <laughs> go. you throw it, I, it. And legally, that's fine, right? I guess. Yeah. yeah. yeah Finders, I, keepers, I, losers, I, weepers. Would you want to go through somebody's trash? Well, I yeah. doubt that they're digging through every can. What? I think if it's something noticeable. We hear about this story all the time. What if uh, it's a uh, uh, priceless uh, Picasso that someone has accidentally thrown out and no, they find it in the trash? It's probably, they a, it. it's probably a good looking stuffed chair that's full of horrific bugs. Oh. <laughs> horrific <laughs> bugs. <laughs> Well, you know what? I say more power to you, Steve. 
make that side hustle. Are we talking about TV ratings anymore? Are we kind of uh, over that? Or uh, The gist of the story is the National League's 3-2 win over the American League in Seattle Tuesday night at the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, seen by just over 7 million viewers, down a record low for the second straight year for Major League Baseball. So you had 7 million watching the game, and you had almost 6.5 million watching the Home Run Derby on Monday night. Okay. Major League Baseball not doing that well on television viewing, evidently. But I'm watching more games. I know that because of uh, L.A. De La Cruz and the Reds. And and uh, the games seem quicker. Have you been watching Major League Baseball? Yeah, I and I don't know if there's a weather factor. With, I, same thing with movies sometimes when they, yeah. have a, they don't have a good weekend. You're going, yeah, they didn't have a good weekend because it was the weather was great. Yep. Hmm. I mean, do, is your my movie going is almost strictly based on weather. <laughs> if it's t not oh, a bad plan, it's yeah. It's been raining all day. Let's go see Indiana Jones or whatever. Really? Yeah. Huh. But I, who knows? I, that's, I, I don't know if I'm the exception to the rule. And the New York Yankees have announced that they, for the first time, uh, are going to add an advertisement to their jerseys, both home and away. No kidding. And uh, would anybody care to um, guess how much a patch on a Yankees jersey, home and away jerseys, would cost you for the season? Oh, like sixty million or something crazy. Uh, Twenty-five million dollars. Uh, and it's from uh, a company. The Yankees will debut at their patches on July 21st against the Kansas City Royals. It's a big damn deal, deal but it's Star Insurance, S-T-A-R-R -R Insurance, the Yankees' first ever signature partner. Wow. Star is an insurance carrier of ours for the last 10 years and have worked closely with our leadership team as part <laughs> of our pre-established partnership. It is clear that Star is the right company to embark right. with Don't read on this release, landmark God. relationship. It'll be the Stars and Pinstripes, folks. Are they allowed to limit who they do that with? What do you mean? It's so, Pornhub. Is that what you're going to go with here? Yeah, exactly. I think in good taste it would probably. Because you know that someone like uh, Pornhub or uh, how about the gambling places can they i don't know maybe a half-assed franchise like the cardinals would welcome Pornhub as their there's a sponsor. chance that they would wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> uh, or I, viagra cialis i think or, well, i think within reason and good taste i think the teams would probably yeah, i think have a problem with the if, if, i don't think if the money is green i don't i still yeah i don't think we're there yet is this going to be like nascar because so. in nascar it's become meaningless when you have 15 things in the guy's uniform, it's like, what? Who knows? You know, what is this? Hmm. But I think if you just, if, if they keep it, if they keep it lean and mean, it might work. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't, I'm almost certain it's not going to be someone like Pornhub. Okay. I think that's a silly, uh, not silly yet. Guess. I'm telling you this AI or what is, what's the stuff where they can put your face in anybody? I think you're going to see Marilyn Monroe porn and Monroe. Marilyn Monroe porn pretty soon. What do you say? Sure. You know, when the, when the airs, well, you know, you, we could make $50 million. If it, let's go. <laughs> Johnny Watt and Marilyn Monroe. Everybody likes money. That's why you should like Raycon earbuds. Good point. Hey, darn right. You got to keep your eye on the bottom line. And with Raycon, you can get a pair and a spare if you want, and you'll still pay less than you would for some of those big name hoity toity tech brands out there. Raycon knows that nowadays you have to keep your eye on the bottom line. And Raycon offers buy now, pay later, an easy and free return guarantee, free domestic shipping, and flat fee international shipping, and 50,000 five-star reviews. And I haven't even told you about eight hours of playback, crystal clear call quality, and water and sweat resistant. So go to buyraycon.com slash Tom today. And not all, only do they have a swell low price to start with, you get another 15% off your Raycon order. That's right. Buyraycon.com slash Tom. Score 15% off your Raycon purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash Tom. Got a nice letter here. Yeah. Hey, guys, I usually listen to your show on my Raycons, but today I had food poisoning 
He wrote this yesterday. Watched you on YouTube when I got home from the doctor. It made my day. Thank you very much. And enjoy the rake on your buzz. Well, thanks for the letter, Patrick. We certainly appreciate it. I hope you're feeling better. I like that. And uh, yes, Josh? I wish it was, uh, he had written it as, uh, <laughs> yeah, normally I listen to you on my rake on. Yesterday, I uh, had food poisoning. I watched you on YouTube. I've never vomited so much in my life. <laughs> That's not what it said. That, was, no, I, that, would be, that might be amusing to you. Um, the clause is mixed. We are just trying to see how much we enjoy the rake on earbuds. Thank you very much. Oh, you were still doing the uh, Coming up, we've got uh, Al Jackson, comedian, and other delights. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hello, this is comedian John Ab In the last break, if you were with us, you know that we took a pair of um, uh, special panties known as the Club Vibe. And these panties have a uh, special vibrating device Very that uh, special. slips into a, a pocket in the uh, in the front of the most intimate area. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. in, the, in the front mm -hmm. naughty. I think right. it's the front naughty. naughty. Oh, yes, I like uh, that. In that zone. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, Josh put them on, and, and then uh, Josh, did you enjoy that? Yeah, yeah, not bad. And the way it worked, there was a button on the on. There's a remote control button, mm -hmm. and uh, Sadie and and Chick were able to press that button. It also well, and you talk into it, the sound activates it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sound. we yeah. so as an experiment, we brought Dean our producer into the room who's a very fine guitarist and Dean happens to have a uh, bass oh, try no. playing a note on the bass and Christy see if it vibrates please all right here we go and and we should come up with a safe word no we should <laughs> need me to stop wait a minute what uh, note are, what yeah. note are you choosing whoa, are you whoa. a safe, safe romantic word. note yeah because no doesn't mean no when no you doesn't safe the safe word should What's be uh, getty? chick oh I think getty chick? getty lee getty, getty lee Yell for Getty and we'll stop Getty okay Chick could be fine I like that and remember you don't have to listen to the safe word <laughs> so now when he hits the bass, tell, that's me if, not safe. tell me if it that, vibrates. Bad advice, bad when advice. He hits. Right, we'll, start out with it. we'll start out with the G string right here. Is that vibrating? Yes. Is the, it still vibrating? Oh, yes. Is it indeed the G? Yeah. It picks up ambient sound from okay, the Okay, wait a minute. It's not inside. I'm okay, not I don't, know. I, know. I don't know how much longer we can go. Her face is already flushed. I don't hey, think. this is foreplay. That was just a foreplay yeah. note. Okay. Dean, do something with kind of a beat let's, to well, it. Well, let's so see if she can take a low E right here. <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Does that change the vibration? Yeah. Does it? Well, and it, it's sustaining. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm getting, I'm, I'm feeling a little left out over here. Uh, oh, do you have another you pair? You, you can't favor it. women. Uh, we do have another pair. Okay. okay, here's the funny thing. There's kind of a, a little delay between when you hit the b when you number? hit the chord and then it oh, picks it up. <laughs> anticipation, oh, little anticipation. Oh, we need to. Oh boy! Does it vibrate? You know, none of the bass players I ever dated did okay, this. <laughs> Tom, look at her face. I mean, she's, she's getting all right. Yes. Do you, know, do you know the bass line to Weapon Post? Okay, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> No more news today, you guys. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, and I did not... Okay, okay. Oh, oh wait, no, now, it looks like it, now it looks like it's actually painful. Safe word. Getty Lee! <laughs> okay, there we go. Hey, you dog owners, listen up. This is something for your big sweetie. Chew Works. Has your dog ever scarfed down one of those chew sticks without really chewing? Chew Works has a hold to chew which will prevent choking and GI blockage. When dogs can't properly hold the chew stick between their paws anymore, they tend to just swallow it. Available in three sizes, mini, junior, and large. Extra large coming soon. Their whole purpose is to provide a safer and healthier way for your dogs to chew. Chewworks.com.
signs talking about, stop pushing me, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, it's so hot out here. You know, our little gang hand sign would be like, you know when you hold your hand above your eyebrows trying to make sunglasses? Yeah. yeah. Squinting our eyes. You know? We wouldn't be talking about west side, east side. We'd be like, hey, well, let's go inside. <laughs> shade. Yeah, shady. That's what we'd be on the shady side of the street. We'd only be in neighborhoods with big trees, and we'd be like, shady side, fool. You know, 15 redheads talking about shady side. We stay inside because we get sunburned when we go outside. Shady side. <laughs> <laughs> I have dog, dogs playing dog, poker. Door, I have three of the dogs playing poker on the wall. You have dogs playing poker on yeah. the wall. The big yeah, velvet the painting. painting. Is it not a tapestry? The velvet. They're not velvet. Is it no. a tapestry? I do have dogs playing poker. A tapestry. One of them, but no, they're not the tapestry. Oh, mm -hmm. I. Uh, they're yeah, the tapestry that I gave you of my face. It has actually uh, my comforter. I have that. That's in my living room. Can I tell you this honestly? In tr all truth, my comforter is at the dry cleaners right now, and my your tapestry is on my bed right now. I slept oh, underneath God. it last night. Is he facing up or down? He's facing down. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry, I've never slept better. Oh, yeah. Really? Kiwi Rogers is our guest. Kiwi, uh, having just met you, I can um, guess you're obviously an, an athlete. Yeah, I work out a little bit. They have the whole thing where you pump weights and all that stuff. Yeah. You gotta have a cardiovascular man. Mm -hmm. but I was playing basketball the other day. They made me guard the worst dude on the other team. <laughs> it was a fat dude wearing thongs. Right? You know, oh. Standing on the court smoking a cigarette. You know I was a bad shape. And you couldn't keep up with I him. I couldn't keep you. up with him. <laughs> <laughs> I got involved with that aerobics. Don't like aerobics. Man, that's too much like sex. Aerobics? Yeah, you sweat, muscles hurt, and then you got a woman up there telling you you're not doing it right. <laughs> Morning laughter <laughs> just might be the best medicine. I can hear you, oh no. You're talking out your ass again. Bob and Tom. <laughs> Back to the Bob and Tom show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold's here. I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Thank you very much, Chick McGee. You're Special welcome. edition of the Bob and Tom show tomorrow. Coming to you live from the birthplace of aviation. I'm talking about Dayton, Ohio. We will be at the uh, classic Dayton Arcade live from the tank with a couple special guests, Duke Tomato and the Power Trio and comedian Roy Wood Jr., longtime friend of the show. We certainly look forward to that. Coming up later on this morning on the show today, it'll be comedian Al Jackson. Uh, and right now we are going to return to the sports page. Is that correct? Uh, prisoner. Uh, uh, this is a new story, Tom. Here we go. Prisoner suspected of stabbing Larry Nasser at a federal penitentiary in Florida said the disgraced former sports doctor provoked the attack by making a lewd comment while they were watching the Wimbledon tennis match. That's according to a person familiar with the matter who spoke to uh, reporters. Court records show the inmate identified as Shane McMillan, previously convicted of assaulting a correctional officer. Apparently there was a dust up there, and Nasser opened his trap. Wouldn't and... the reason for stabbing Larry Nasser be that he's Larry Nasser? He's Larry Nasser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you really need an excuse? Apparently that didn't help any that he mm -hmm. would open his trap during the Wimbledon match. And, yeah. Hey, look at the jugs on her. Probably something like that. Could have been triggered by the term "15 Love." That could have just reminded oh. me of oh. Well, there, that's, the, there, that's the joke of the day, right there. <laughs> See, 15. Oh, love. good. Hello, Bob and Tom show. Hey, Bob and Tom. It's Donnie Bakel. Hey, Tom. Donnie. Well, I made a mistake opening my tra trap too. I stepped up my volunteer at Empire Whippy's Little League baseball game last night. Oh, wow. And there I was behind home plate calling balls and strikes. You know who else is calling balls and strikes? Who? Oh. Every parent in the stands convinced their little uncoordinated little Claude's going to be a major leaguer makes tons of cash. Mm. <laughs> Any parent that questions a volunteer empire is what I call a dick bastard. Uh -huh. I swear to God. They yell things like, come on, Cody, mama needs a new house. You know, swing Tristan, he ain't going to put you on first base. It, it was long before these parents start yelling at me then. I got cussed out so much, I was convinced somebody busted a bunch of Phillies fans. You know? <laughs> and the fact remains, all these parents think they know the rules better than me. You try to find a rule in the rule book that says umpires ain't allowed to fill their ball bag with beer and ice in it. You want to find it. <laughs> 
You know, one rule I think gets broke more than any is the age limit. Because huh. there's supposed to be no older than seven, but the pitcher on the team Whippy was uh, facing was wearing an ankle monitor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Pretty sure he was over 12. He had a mustache to make Raleigh Fingers jealous. Remember Raleigh Fingers? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Oh, and then, spoiler alert, bottom of six, this kid got arrested for back child support. Wow. I swear to God. <laughs> Anyways, by the end of the night, it was so hot and humid, I just wanted to game them, so I called more strikes than the Hollywood Riders and <laughs> also called 37 pitch clock violations. And the other coach comes out and said, there ain't no pitch clock in Little League. I said, there is now. i got to get home and finish cutting the grass, you know. <laughs> so I throwed him out. Then I'm walking the parking lot. Some parent comes up with an old flip phone asking if it's mine. I'm like, no, my phone's right here. He said, I thought for sure it was yours because it says 12 missed calls. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard. i got to go. <laughs> yeah, there, it's, it's a no-win. Being, oh, sure. being an umpire, it's, it's the worst. And they're having trouble getting them now. Umpires? Yeah. Mm. They're, umpires and lifeguards. They're at a premium. That's true. Yep. You know, they, uh, it, uh, the umpires are tired of being uh, cussed out by the parents. And they're not paying them enough. So. Kids don't want to be lifeguards anymore? Uh-uh. Wow. I thought always thought that was a cush summer job. It was. From what I understand, though, I had buddies that did it, and you just end up babysitting the kids. You're supposed to be watching and being very careful, you know, being vigilant, making sure no one gets hurt or drowns. Right. And instead, the parents go, they're in the country club, they're having cocktails, and you're just watching some kid put pizza when he's eating in the shallow end, you know? Oh, man. Uh, also, you can't look at your phone. <laughs> well, yeah, I would hope not. That knocks out a lot of people. Yeah, I and guess so. I can't sit in the lifeguard stand with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, back in the day, did you guys ever have a lifeguard at a pool that was smoking a cigarette? Did that ever happen? Uh, it must have. I never saw it. I didn't see it. I never noticed it. Uh, That'd be a cool job. I felt like there was no smoking in the pool areas, so people didn't step on half-lit butts. Or yeah, anything. that yeah, makes sense. Flip them into the pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too, yeah. At least we'll put it out. Come on. Save your cigarettes <laughs> for the plane, okay? okay. Relax. <laughs> yes. uh, we're, we're back at the sports desk. Remember the adult swim? Did you ever... Get old enough to go to the pool yep. and, and uh, participate in the yep. adult swim. Yep. You know, oh, no, I, I could never swim in the adult I, swim. I never did that. But I was always a I kid. Remember, we had to get out. Yeah. Get out. 15 I, minutes like every yeah. other hour or something. No. Yeah. And has, and has anyone ever investigated the you can't swim for an hour after you eat? Is, yeah, I think it's been debunked. Right. Okay, so that's not, that, that just was one of those 50s era myths right. that just took hold. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, um, that and fluoride. I think they've always... <laughs> fluoride! <laughs> debunked. Well, speaking of the 50s, we were talking about this sleep divorce thing in which people are sleeping in separate beds. And that was the way it was on television. Yeah. I don't know what... I'm not sure what show had the first... Uh, they slept in the same bed. Let me think. Uh, it wasn't Lucy and Ricky. It wasn't Dick Van Rob, Dyke was one of them. Rob they, and Laura. They, no, they weren't. Oh. They were, beds. but they were in the same bedroom. They were in the same right. Also, were Lucy and Ricky. Okay. Just twin beds. Yeah. My first husband's parents had twin beds in their bedroom. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, that's sick and, and wrong. And he was adopted. You make your own call. Oh wow! Yeah. Did you ever um, stay over at their house? Wow. No. Are you kidding? I'm guessing you don't see those people very <clears throat> often. No, it'd be hard. <laughs> well, I'm assuming that they're. <laughs> That'd you, be an awkward you'd visit. A, you'd need a backhoe. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, if they were alive, would you go visit them and say, "Wow, well, uh, we of the were best never years. close to begin." Yeah, with. there you go. Nice. Ah, that's yeah, they were. Thinking. They were a very interesting couple. Hmm. Okay, she well. was definitely like. Um, yes. Mrs. Cleaver, if you will. Pearls, the apron. Was there an Uncle Bruce who would visit everybody? I don't know. I didn't ask. Or an Aunt Dolly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, back to sports. Dolly? <laughs> Stupid world record. I don't know. I don't know. I oh. just I just come in and I'm here and I try to be a reasonable facsimile of myself. Mm -hmm. Ready? <laughs> a family in Pakistan has broken the Guinness World Record for the most family members born on the same day. This is a great record. All right. The Mangi, Mangi family, M-A-N-G-I, consists of two parents and seven children who all share the same birthday. Hmm. Father Amir, <coughs> Mother Kudeja, and their children, aged 19 to 30, all born August 1st. The date is extra special for Amir and Kudeja, mom and dad, as it's also their wedding anniversary. Wow. Exactly one year before their eldest daughter was born. 
Do the math on this. December 1, right? If all these, all everyone was born on August 1st. Yeah. Help, yeah. Me, help me with this, Christy. You've, mm -hmm. done, you've gone through this cycle. <laughs> so. August is the ninth month. Eighth month. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Eighth. Yeah. Ninth month, September. When's, so in other words, are how they. How many months are there? Twelve. So they're conceiving. In December, Christmas. Yeah. Mm, right. It's actually 40 weeks from conception. Well, now we got a math problem. I'm sorry. That's... But I mean, it's, it's, they've apparently got some kind of well regimented. Yeah, something they're doing. Either her ovulation or whatever. Well, they can also yeah. induce these days. So yeah, it's, it's no, right. but, that's it, no, true. But if, too. You keep, if you keep reading, it says. Why would I keep reading? The story was boring to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, why, what is stopping you from unloading on him? You'd unload on me. <laughs> no, Josh is onto something with this one. This is. Is there any sets of twins? Would that make yes. it a little easier? Yeah, no, that makes it easier. Two sets of twins. Wow. Oh. But still, all seven children and the parents all born in the same day with no artificial well, insemination. There's no reason to read no the rest cesarean of the story. section. No. <laughs> no inducement of any kind. No. Oh wow. That is quite a quite a thing. Man. So, so I just thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, it would, uh, part of it would be kind of crappy. I mean, it's like having a birthday on Christmas. You know, you kind of don't get. Yeah. Uh, here's your present for both. Oh, yeah. Everybody's birthday's the it's same everybody's day. Everybody's birthday. It's... You're not going to feel that special. Yeah, yeah. Huh? You have to share your birthday with that selfish guy, Jesus, always taking all the attention away. What a selfish guy he was. Yeah, but I mean, in this case, you're, you've, you've got to share with <laughs> ten, what, nine other people. Yeah. yeah. And you're born in Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't. I don't. Okay. I can't believe Willie's the one laughing. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't condone it, but that, that got me, man. Uh, you tell me it's better to be born in Pakistan than in I don't know Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of good food over there. We have Chick Fil A. For <laughs> starters, you ever get Pakistani food? Yeah, it's good. They got some great stuff over there. But I get it here. <laughs> Makes it even better. Where I, I eat it in air conditioning. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Sterile utensils. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't have to smell camel farts. Come on. I don't know what's going on over there. I have no idea. Camel farts. <laughs> what you said. In Pakistan. I'm sure I'd are, love. Are you at the zoo? I'm sure I'd love it over there. <laughs> be fascinated. I would be. Oh, wow. So they don't have camels in Pakistan. I don't know. Oh, Josh, and if we sent you over there, we could do a reality show. Call it Joshi in Karachi, and that'd be fun for me. <laughs> is that a part of Pakistan? Yeah, I yeah. I so. see. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're just Which is why I'm terrified of it and judge. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you were glad you were born there. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. So I think it's pretty cool that they all have the same birthday. No. No? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it is crazy. Oh, that, that, you totally changed his tune. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's a great story. <laughs> you got another world record? Well, if you tried to sit him on me. <laughs> world record. A musician. Yeah? Has broken the Guinness World Record for the highest altitude grand piano performance. <laughs> Are we back on Nepal or something? Um, oh no, we're in the uh, Kardong Mountain Pass in India. Is that right? Oh. Can I do a complete a story? Sorry, go ahead. Hold David on. with an E, that's Davide, 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 Davide? David. Locatelli of Italy traveled to the Kardung La Mountain, which means the mountain, <laughs> pass in India to conduct a piano performance at 17,634 feet above sea level. His uh, feet beat the previous record of 17,473 feet. For the attempt, he played five of his own original songs. Oh, oh God. no. His Yamaha C5 brought into the location from New Delhi via a small <laughs> truck. See, th th that's, those are the guys that should be getting honored. They hold a the grand hell? piano oh, up yes. 17,000 feet. He played the piano for 16 minutes, which he recalls as the, he says it was the longest 16 minutes of his life. He's just sitting there. Well, maybe there's no, no well, uh, the oxygen level well, would be low, right? Low. I, I like 17,000 feet, that's going to be rough to breathe. I don't know if that's the dead zone or not. Maybe it is. Not yet. It must have been cold. Might be. Might be the dead zone. Should have played some cold play <laughs> instead of his own sure. stuff. Here we go. <laughs> I am cold and will play. I will, uh, this will play cold good. play. This will be good. I thought the highest piano performance ever was Dr. John. Oh, when I saw that guy, <laughs> man, he was smoking a joint the, the, the size of an oar. <laughs> Everything's everything. Everything's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, talk about a high C. 
<laughs> it's not done. Uh, might be. I do. <laughs> I, I, I love them. Really. Oh, yeah. How about a basketball analogy? All was, the notes. The guy's playing a grand piano and mm-hmm. 70,000 feet. He was at the top of the key. No? Well, oh, I basketball, don't basketball. It's a basketball term, Josh. I know you don't care. You don't have to read every one that's sent to you. <laughs> Well, there, there, don't be so high strong. There's someone with a, with a, 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 a just doesn't know what they're writing. I don't think. <laughs> high, high strong. <laughs> now, um, do they? Oh, leave here it? he is. Oh, here he is. Oh, now. he's wearing your suit, Tom. Well, he's wearing a uh, checkered flag sh- shirt. What the hell's yeah. that? Oh, I've got that same shirt. Look at this douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Josh, what do you not like? Is He's it the really dangling earring, the Is blonde hair, the blonde hair, or the glasses? It's everything. <laughs> it's the perfect storm of douchebag. Oh, man. He's got an Italian flag, it looks like. A, uh, uh, so why was bleach, it so hard? Blonde, kind of a pompadour with uh, way- wayfarers on. Did he have a lip piercing? Did I just see that? It looked like it, yeah. Maybe yeah. a gauge uh, piercing as well. And, uh, hmm. you know, all that's fine. It but didn't he look that like cold. A, he sure looked like a douchebag. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe he, he was. It, maybe he was only cold for the 17 minutes. He didn't have his jacket on. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. So, an, un, another unimpressive world record for you, Chick. I can't think of the last one that I was impressed by. I don't think I've been impressed by any of them. Well, no. Other than Bob Beeman, I like that one. But that the was a long famous time broad ago. Jump. Yeah, <laughs> or log jump, whatever you'd like to say. Oh yeah. Is the term broad jump no longer used? <laughs> when the ladies well, are out don't there. don't know how we got into these <laughs> it's weeds. It's still appropriate, right? Look at that broad jump. <laughs> Can you imagine? Look at the gams on that gal, huh? Okay. Uh, and now in the birthing hips competition, <laughs> Josh Arnold. <laughs> Coming up. birthing hips? Uh, we have um, uh, interesting news. Uh, I worked with a guy with broad hips. Man. Did you? Weird looking guy. <laughs> yeah. God. Kind of really shaped, tiny torso, big ass. Mm-hmm. What's weird? The, do you know guy? what the um, uh, sort of the the, the one of the his name was Bruce. The currency <laughs> and pretty the sure it was Bruce. underground these days is what? What do you mean currency in the underground? What you, yeah, what are, are you, you talking about? I don't about? think that's a sentence. Like you looking to buy a baby? Um, <laughs> what are you trying to buy illegally? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a uh, laundry detergent. Oh, that yeah. You heard about this? I have not, no. People are stealing laundry detergent. It's like the number one thing being this stolen. This has been out there for wow. a long time. Yeah. It's, it's been a while. It's mm. spreading now. Why is that? According to the sheriff in this case, the new currency on the street is laundry detergent. Is that right? So we'll find that's That's just... Pay you in Tide Pods? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. You wash also, your clothes in Tide? Of Josh. course I do. It's too damn cold to wash them out, Tide. That's right. <laughs> it's a yeah. seasonal. I would have said hot. Well, Mark, I was trying to keep it... Uh, Generic? Uh, yes, I don't. I... <laughs> check, check local listings. Yes, uh, of this well, is the, the Bob wheels fell off, didn't it? You got a comment? Our email is Bob. Girl, the food was great. The company, even better. Why sit here all night long? Going on about the weather I know it's our first date And good girls gotta wait But I just turned 83 And you said you're 78 The moon is full You know what I'm thinking Let's make love We're old and we're shrinking The hour's late Let's just do it on our first date I can't help but notice that uh, Boner, Todd Boner, the bass player, is now sporting one of our new camel toe t-shirts. Oh, cool. Look at that. Uh, Donnie wearing his traditional uh, wolf with a Santa cap on. Mm. Yeah, I'm getting ready for the holidays. I'm sticking right with the wolf, Tom. These okay. colors don't run. Okay. Uh, uh, Dusty Privet uh, in there on the drums. Scotty Winkler on the guitar as Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols have rejoined us here in the Napa Auto Parts studios. Now, uh, uh, coming up, of course, the uh, Napa shoe of the Week and the Napa Tool of the Week. But first, Donnie, you've got something new for us? Yeah, if I can remember the verbs, too. we got so much fog in here. There's more fog in here than the steam room at Joe Jen's Spa when you pay extra. <laughs> I swear to God. But, uh, yeah, this tape is a dedication. 
vacation tape. It sort of ties in uh, Tom Petty's and Thanksgiving, Tom. Okay. Because it's it's about Tom Petty. It's a tribute to him. He we lost. Our band's always been fond of him. And then the wishbone. Everybody's got a. It's going to be a fight over the wishbone this Thanksgiving, and that's what this tape's about from Donnie Baker and the Pork Pistols. Mm, I can't wait. <laughs> song is that when it sounds still sounds good <laughs> yeah, yeah, no uh, that's mom her, 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 her mom huh yeah well i mean angel's mom was fire ass hot uh-huh. oh. and angel sort of looked like tom patty's <laughs> and her mom <laughs> looked like that too but her mom wore them dark <laughs> like them transitional <laughs> frames i can't afford them uh, yeah. Yeah. and oh, yeah. so her mom sort of she was hot too she sort of resembled a young mitch hedberg's oh. Oh. Queen oh. Rose, too. Oh, that he always wore the transitional shades good yeah, point yeah. done Lumber, new, <laughs> including the kitchen sink, Burglar's Hardware Store, where you make out like a burglar when you shop at Burglar's. Free popcorn Mondays, free coffee Fridays, free parking. It's crazy Ernie's going out of business sale. Everything must go. Burglar's Hardware Store. If Burglar's doesn't have it, you don't fergin' need it. Hi, I'm Ernie Fergler. We- He's Ernie Fergler. <laughs> if you don't come buy some stuff today, he'll kick your ass. Be there. Bob and Tom, 24-7. There was this bass player, and he was uh, sitting in a in a bar and just getting really, really drunk. He, sure. was, he was mad at the world. Uh-huh. Yeah. He had been fired from his uh, latest job, mad at everyone, just angry, drinking. So he leaves the bar. He's very, very drunk. He's walking down the street. And across the street is a nun walking the other direction. Mm-hmm. Well, the bass player runs across the street, knocks her down, and just starts kicking her and hitting her oh and going crazy. Gosh. A drunk bass player. A drunk bass player. <laughs> mm. And he looks down and says, you're not so tough now, are you, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we get mail. <laughs> That's it for our 
our show based on... I actually uh, I have a, a sexual fantasy associated with the earthquake. Go. All right. Well, check out. Uh-huh. Mm. Uh, in my fantasy, I am making love to this woman. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she feels the earth move beneath her. Mm. Ah, yes. And then she rolls over on top of me and shields me from debris. <laughs> 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 Safety first, everybody. Safety That's first. Safe. Bob and Tom. If you irradiate poop, it will be sterile. But it's still poop. You can pick your morning radio show. Or- Hey, welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Jake, how are you, buddy? There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's yeah. Willie Griswold. Yo, yo. I'm fine. There's Tom Griswold. <laughs> Hello, Tom. But after you during the break, you seem a little low. This is Todd from Des Moines. Hi, oh. Todd from Des Moines. Oh. What is that, Iowa? He wants to uh, get this started, Tom. Todd from Des Moines has four gently used studded snow tires for sale or trade. I would consider a trade for a Conestoga wagon or a trampoline. Ah. He wants to start trade. A little bit of trade Radio. Um, According to Tammy, who's written in, the Flintstones was the first TV couple to be shown in bed together. Really? So I wonder who the first humans were. Actual living people. What? For some reason, I think it's Green Acres. Fred and Wilma weren't real? Oh, no, man. They were... uh, Huh. They were quite a couple, though. They were drawn together. Oh, nice. Thank you, Willie. Uh, did they just uh, sleep uh, in bed, or did they ever have a dab a do it? They had pebbles. They had to. Yeah. That's right. And if I remember correctly, you all were, you could name, was it Pebbles or Bam Bam that you could name? <sighs> Bam Bam. It was a big contest. I think, yeah, it was a contest. Yeah. I think Bam Bam was they adopted. Were, they were on prime time. Not right? Yeah. I, can't. I don't remember. I think so. That sounds right. Hmm. But Alan Reed was the voice of yeah, yeah, that's Fred, Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And just just so such a great, distinctive voice. Also, Tom, you were asking if Pornhub or somebody like that would ever endorse uh, baseball players uh, in terms of having their logo on a Let's jersey. Let's say Major the, League Baseball okay. players. Yeah, sure. Because, sure. well, the news story was the Yankees are going to have, what is it, the Star Insurance Company? Star with two R's insurance, whatever the heck that is. Yeah. Travis uh, goes by Benny tells us that uh, uh-huh. there is a 200 uh, a 250 supercross rider who's endorsed by OnlyFans. Oh. So it's creeping in. <laughs> mm. I mean is there going to be a Pornhub stadium? I, I, look, I, it's not going to happen soon, but it could eventually happen. Who are the horniest baseball team names? Um, immediately I think Angels can be kind of uh, sexualized and then Twins certainly can be sexualized. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Padres, if you're a fella, you know, you want to root for the daddies, I guess. Uh, the A's, it sounds, it stands for athletics, of course, but... Uh, hmm. It's Danvers on Mills. <laughs> Anus. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Is it, uh, by the way, do we have any more sports? Or no, you know, God no, you beat me up. I'm uh, done. Okay, okay. I, uh, I came in here with a fresh face and a... Yankees is sort positive of por- out of pornographic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Hey, Rocky, this is what you <laughs> Wherever you go, whatever you do, always. Exposed, you're exposed. Oh. <laughs> be a good sport. Depending on how hot Ray might be, the Rays. Yeah. I wish they'd be. I wish the Expos would come back. Yeah. I miss them. Yeah. You know? Our friend Drew Powell was wearing an Expos hat the other day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a, But you're right, Christy. That would be the perfect one for Pornhub. Aren't they based in Montreal? <laughs> Oh, they you know, they were a company. I don't know yet. Oh, oh por- Pornhub. Pornhub. Oh, you know yeah, they may be. I, Are that, they? Is it Canadian? Mind Geek. Is what? that the whole thing sure. that owns them? I'm not sure. Um, we have Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. What have you got? We talked about sleep divorce. How about the rise of platonic partnerships? Have you heard about this? According to USA Today, platonic partnerships are essentially a committed relationship to a person that does not include romance or sex. One such couple. So marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> Say it as Fred, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> so marriage, huh, Brian? <laughs> you know, but I know it's off today. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound like Fred today. I don't know what I know. it is. One such couple would be a 28-year-old <laughs> Patty that you Kulak do. <laughs> and 31-year-old Marissa Baker. They're best friends, roommates, and in a platonic life partnership. The women bonded over their divorces and became their biggest support systems. Baker said there was really good communication. I think that's where the partnership comes in. Are they even, are they gay? No, they They're don't just have friends sex. who are in a committed so relationship? Yes. In other words, they're roommates. That's what they, they even say they're roommates. They're, the they're said they share the financial committed? burden. Yeah. 
of maintaining uh, Kulak's house. They no longer prioritize romance as a means of happiness. Priority toys. Prior- prioritize. <laughs> so they've given up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they've given up, pretty much, yes. It's okay to give up. That while there sure. are no statistics yet on platonic, platonic partnerships. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> An analysis by the Pew Research Center Pew, showed that the number of married people fell from 67% in 1990 to just 53% in 2019. Hmm. 53% of the population is married. Yeah. Okay. Well, except for kids. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> That'd be a little weird. Boy, well, how's a lot? <laughs> you think that there's an, a lobbyist out there for the wedding industry who's like, can we lower the marriage rate? Just to get more. So now you're 12 not... is fine, right? 12? <laughs> Sen- <laughs> Senator? <laughs> no. So now that you're not just a roommate, you're in a platonic partnership? You know, when you just said that 53% of people are married, uh, not the kids, I just realized... I, I got a glimpse. I, I still can't <laughs> comprehend it yet. I got a glimpse of how stupid you think everybody else is. <laughs> that was really frightening that you felt like you had to mention that. That's well, I mean, terrifying. Statistically, it's not true. Mm. <clears throat> so it's not 53% of people on all that are married. I think right? it, I assume they mean of adults. <laughs> Probably safe to assume. And what, that what the, Pew, 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 the Pew folks tend to know what they're doing when it comes to these. They, they've what done a, a few. Yeah. My goodness. Um, <clears throat> the point is there are fewer than... But I, the, this is kind of a bad example that they've picked, I think. I think so, too. I mean, I know they're trying to be yes. politically correct. I think this I mean, is just... This, these are just two ladies that are roommates. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not a... Pl- I mean, it's... Oh, it's only a matter of time, I mean, right? aren't, aren't oh, they most, say they're most in a roommates, lifetime. Aren't most roommates in a platonic relationship? Absolutely. They yeah. share the financial That would have been weird if you they... went to college and, well, here's your dorm partner. By the way, he's also your butt buddy. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's not what the story's about at all. But they're not it's kids. the opposite. So. <laughs> but they're not children. We need to do but it. he did yes. get to say butt buddy. <laughs> yes, he did. You can just say butt buddy if you'd like. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Butt, 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 butt. <laughs> there you go. You feel butt. better? In the butt. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't understand what this is about. A couple of uggos who can't get men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. I mean, is it just because it's too weird to say, hey, this is my roommate when you're 50 years old? I don't know. Maybe. Aren't they essentially being incels, but they're females? Uh, it doesn't say. They still could be having people over and hooking up with people. They're just not prioritizing a primary romantic relationship. Right? But it sounded to me like they gave up on romance altogether. Yeah, that but... sounds like to me like they're committed to each other just as friends. Hmm. I don't know. I, I read it a little differently, but yeah. Maybe, oh, okay. Who knows? I, yeah. I just think that these are people that... And they're only intention- 28 and 31. They're not older. Yeah, I think they're intentionally living together. It's not a random... They want to stay together. They're going to focus on their house. It, it's it's one thing. And Christy, 28 to 31 is pretty old for a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be realistic. I mean... Are you trying to get fired from CNN? If you're an adult... <laughs> I would have been fired on day one. <laughs> well, that just happened, as, yeah, yeah, yeah. as you know. Yes, of course. <laughs> Um, well, here's a picture of the ladies. Uh-huh. Okay. But, I mean, I don't... So they're just roommates. They're not in a platonic relationship, though. Yeah, they are. They say they are. And you know what? Good for them. They, well, aren't, they, like I said, aren't most roommates in a platonic relationship? Yes. Yes, of course. But right. I don't think they look at it as a long-term partnership as this particular couple does. Right. Some roommates will talk about, hey, are you going on a date? Yeah, I am. I, yeah. I hope maybe this is the one. These women these are women going, are nope, not dating. this they're... is our life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, one of these... Well, oh, but they're ladies. probably really ugly, too. So that's probably... <laughs> they're actually not. They're quite attractive. <laughs> oh, there's here we a go. photograph of them here. They're very, uh, they're very, very attractive. Um, is that right? Well, they're, they're thin. Some good looking uh, dogs. Yeah, thin and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they have dogs. Nice. Uh, they remind me. That's always a plus for me. <laughs> <laughs> they have dogs. So the first couple to share bed on TV, according to this. Uh, overwhelming number of emails. Mike and Carol Brady on the Brady Bunch. That's what I'm, I'm just that's telling you. That's ironic. That's ironic. <laughs> yeah. and, and also the Munsters, Maybe I guess. that's why it was safe. Rears oh. its ugly head, no. I guess. I don't know. Are you sure? But Here we go. I, I, I should have... I should you have let what? you read it so it wouldn't have been questioned, but yeah, no, no, that's I'm what just, I'm hearing. Uh, but what about the, uh, I'm the, just fl- telling the Flintstones? You. Well, that doesn't... That doesn't We're hard. talking about real-life people. You know, if you have to ca- delineate that, the couple, that children aren't married, you would think <laughs> that you'd know that Flintstones are cartoons. <laughs> 
Why am I yelling? <laughs> Why don't you research this and we'll come back with it and we'll also talk about eargasm. Okay. Does, it, does everybody remember we we've uh, all got an internet? We got an internet. Uh-huh. Yep. 1947, Mary Kay and Johnny, some show I've never heard of. <laughs> 1955, wow. I Love Lucy. They were both sharing a bed on, uh, they were? on one of the things. Son of a and uh, uh, Ozzy and Harriet. Oh. Okay. okay, so it's older than we people. thought. And then much later, Flintstones, Bewitched, and Brady Bunch. Gotcha. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, thank you very uh, much. Now, sir, please go back outside. Does anybody know who this guy is? <laughs> I've got an internet. <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> thank you very much. He's internet guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we'll be right back. It's the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening. To- Yes. Oh, what do you well, you know, I, I tell you, it's, um, <laughs> here's the thing. Uh, it turns out these big old studios and streaming services have decided they don't want to pay their people that have made them so much money. Oh, boy, here comes the wine. And whining. so, <laughs> shut your mouth. You shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> One of these days, you might write a screenplay. We're doing this for you. <laughs> but anyway, we've had it, and we're not going to take it anymore because, I mean, otherwise, what are you guys going to do when you get out of work? What do you do? You go home and you stream all this stuff, right? So you can see us beautiful actors and these writers. That's right. <laughs> but they ain't going to be around until we get a, a fair deal. So <clears throat> Dino and I uh, wrote a song about it. Want to hear it? Here you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Drew Powell. I'm a star in Hollywood. (laughs) Things are dark in Tinseltown, and it ain't looking good. Riders are on strike, trying to get fair pay. Nobody's riding nothing, so I don't know what to say. I got the blues all down, down. I got them riders strike blues. top of my head down to the bottom of my uh, socks or feet. <laughs> See what I need? Actors, we need scripts just like flowers need what, whatever they need. <laughs> and I need to get back to work because I got a family to feed. <laughs> All you networks and studios, sit down and make a deal. Things are gonna get ugly if I have to miss a meal. Lord, I'm down. I'm hungry, guys. I'm hungry. I got them rider strike blue. Duke, y'all better take a solo, cuz I'm just about to blow a fuse, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think it's time for Netflix chill. I think Netflix, y'all gotta chill. Come on, Warner Brothers. Help a brother out. Hey, Amazon, it's prime time to make a deal. Pay your fair share. Nice. Yo, Disney, tell Mickey Mouse to slice off a little piece of cheese for these writers. <laughs> I'm mad, you hear me? Duke, I'm mad. Keep playing the blues, boy. I'm so mad, I'm screaming. All right, here we go. (laughs) We're going to bring it home now. You ready? But I'm down. (laughs) I got them right as track news. WGA Solidarity Brothers and Sisters. United we win. But stay divided and we won't win. Like, see what I'm talking about? I don't understand. I don't. I need some help. I got the blues, man. Freaking pay them. Pay the people. Hey, hey, hey. I need a job. Power to the people. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Aaron Brockovich. Uh, Drew Powell, all the way from Hollywood. That's a great song.
brilliant performance. <laughs> but perhaps no other defense in the NFL compares to the one seen in 1994 when O.J. Simpson faced double homicide <laughs> charges in an L.A. courtroom. <laughs> we salute you, Orenthal James Simpson, <laughs> NFL Hall of Famer, accused murderer, and free American citizen. <laughs> this has been Bob and Tom Super Bowl Trivia. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. There's a trend that I've I've been noticing uh, in uh, watching the news that uh, who are these people that protest death row inmates when the prisoner wants to die? The word nosy comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's inhumane. It's inhumane. Oh yeah, because he was real human. A lot of humans keep a freezer full of heads. <laughs> they're, they're so self-righteous out there on the picket line. Stop the killing. Stop the killing. No, I think you're missing the point here. <laughs> he wants to die. State wants him dead. Families want him dead. Oh, but you want him to live. Fine. He can live <laughs> with you. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's done drinking soup out of your skull, <laughs> dabbing his mouth with your peace pamphlet, <laughs> we'll come by, put a bullet in his head, and the world will have two less psychos to worry about. Comedian Greg Fitzsimmons has joined us in the studio. You're a New Yorker. Huh? Yeah. How's that going? New York's good. Not bad. It's, uh, it's a strange place because no matter where you work or what you do, you come in contact with freaks. <laughs> You know, I, like I, I grew up, I worked at a gas station for a couple of years, and the guy I worked with, strange man, former porno movie star from the 70s. Really? Yeah, he'd get confused every time he'd fill the tank. Halfway through, he'd pull it out and spray it all over the car. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we lost a lot of good pets. Uh, Hi, this is Nick Griffin, and you're listening up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. <laughs> Boy, the windbags love the topic of what couples on television shared a bed and, or didn't share a bed. Hot dog. <laughs> There's Jess Hooker. She Hi. joins us. Good morning. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, on horny baseball teams, Nick wrote in the best one, the Nationals, for short, the Nats, the heavy Nats. I mean. Oh, Willie, that's, yes. The horniest baseball team there is. So thank you, Nick. <laughs> and Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Uh, five topics at the same time. Let's pick one. Okay. Uh, You've heard the show. Uh, <laughs> I'm responsible for that. Uh, let's see. Jess Hooker's here. Hey, Jess. We'll get to a topic uh, that I want to um, force you to talk about. Okay. But um, a couple things. First of all, the Yankees are going to have uh, a commercial message on their uniform. like Star a Insurance with two R's. S-T-A-R-R. Evidently. I just hope it doesn't get to the point where it's like NASCAR, mm. because I think that's meaningless then, be, be, because there's too many things on the uniform, and they all just become nothing. But I think you're going to start seeing this with everything. You, you've already got all the fields are designated, and et cetera, et cetera. Do you think it could eventually be the, uh, for instance, the Frito-Lay Yankees as opposed to the New York Yankees? Do you think we'll eventually get to that? I don't think so. Um, I mean, yeah, I've always, Chick not. and I were talking off the other day, does the Wrigley Company pay anything commensurate with what that's actually worth? I'm not sure. I don't know that Bush does either for Bush Stadium. I, I think that's oh. just... The, you know, Do they not, still call it... Is it still Bush Stadium? It is. Mm. Even though, like... But is Bush... Didn't InBev sell or some some Russian company owns them now or something? Yeah, InBev bought Anheuser-Busch, but it's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're still... Yeah, it's still... But, Bush I mean, everyone... Yeah. Wrigley is Wrigley. And, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I would think, I, I don't know who would have to buy Wrigley so people would stop calling it Wrigley, but I don't think that company has been invented. They yet. should never. No. Uh, yeah. And, and, and historically, there are many, many t cases in which major companies, you know, will put their name on a stadium and then they'll fold. Right. Enron Field, for example. Sure. A lot of times. And there are a couple of, isn't there a crypto issue right now? Yeah. One crypto the, is where the Lakers play, mm. formerly so, Staples. Uh, uh, but the, the, oh, a, 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 a team. Wearing uh, that's kind of new in the world of the Yankees for Yankees. sure. They, the Yankees for sure. I mean, they don't yeah. even put last names on their jerseys. No, mm -hmm. they are really, really uh, clean. But again, they, and they saw, they always said they were going to keep it that way. But twenty five million for the season, I guess. They yes, gotta, sir. They got to pay the players, so you know. 
I want to. I want to know who Star Insurance is. They can afford twenty five million dollars to put a patch on the jersey. That's. Well, I mean, the well, argument is now people. Old man Star's doing pretty well. Yeah, people who weren't aware of Star Insurance are going to be aware of them now. Yeah, we are. All I can say, there was an American Dad episode where they uh, they were talking about getting an- anus insurance because uh, <laughs> the Stan, the main guy, prolapsed, oh, <laughs> and he said, "Oh, you should have had anus insurance." And the name of the anus insurance company was Dark Star Insurance. <laughs> Oh, what a Grateful Dead reference. Now, this, uh, this American Dad is on PBS, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. Okay, now, um, Masterpiece. It's Rue Kaiser. <laughs> so, I, uh, Jessica Hooker, since you have, are just joining us, um, this all started with a, uh, a a news story that is, I think, really dumb. About sleep divorce. Oh, it's something they're supposedly calling sleep divorce. You want to read the story? Yes, a recent survey has found more than a third of Americans have a so-called sleep divorce According to the poll from the American Academy of Sleep Medicine, many couples sleep in separate beds from their partner to get a better night's rest. It breaks down like this. 43% of millennials, 33% of Gen Xers, 28% of Gen Z, and 22% of baby boomers sleep in separate beds. I would have thought that would go the exact opposite way. I would have thought more baby boomers did it because they have more trouble sleeping. Right. They get up more in the middle of the night. Forty-three percent of millennials sleep in separate beds. That's amazing to me, and we've uh, received a lot of a lot of uh, emails from people that have done that. Now, I, I, uh, without delving into your personal relationships, <laughs> right. historically, if you will, or in the past, when one would review your life, have you ever been in that situation? Uh, yeah, I almost always have. I've been in one relationship where I shared a bed. Hmm. And I've been in two adult relationships in my entire life. So, yeah, just I'm running 50%, I guess. Can I make a guess? Yeah. Are you a big spoon gal? Do you wrap the fella up? I do. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I, I just thought so. You, you got that vibe for sure. You give that off. I'm a do big you spoon? like that? Oh, you kidding me? I want to feel like a tiny little baby. Wrap me up, make me feel <laughs> really? warm. Well, oh, well, well, well. Come on, man. I, wanna get, right. I want I'm some like, snuggles too. I'm like a spider monkey. Like, I'm just like, I attach myself to the back of them. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any. Um, uh, do you snore? Have you been told? Oh, I'm a whole, yes, I snore. I, I snore a lot. Yeah. Loud, too. Have you ever awakened in the middle of the night and have been abandoned by this particular <laughs> individual? <laughs> this is they, I've never been I abandoned. Have. Yeah, that's Have you me. really? Yeah. 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 It's awesome. You wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten up and gone down and slept on the couch yeah. before. Just because of noise? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, this is fascinating to me that... Um, Again, one would think that older folks would be more likely to do this, but this led to a discussion of who was the first one to sleep in uh, the same bed on television, and this mm-hmm. gets... Oh. We should just drop it. I don't think we'll ever... And we're getting so it's, much... Does it matter, really? You well, know that the... There are some people out there that it matters to very much oh. <laughs> what we're saying and how we're saying it, believe right. me. The Apparently, co- according to, as Dean just mentioned, uh, according to Me TV, Mary Kay and Johnny which was a live broadcast show when there were only 250,000 television sets in America in 1947. They apparently had a had a one bed. Okay. Uh, all right. Right. And, and, and it was indicated that it was implied that they were in the same bed. I Love Lucy in 1955. Fred and Ethel swap sleeping arrangements with Lucy and Desi while on the road or an Ohio hotel, and they're shown in the same bed. Okay. Oh, the the, like the first hot... TV couple I remember where a, a lot of the show took place in the bedroom was the Cosby show. Like, they were... Yeah, they yeah, would always talk in they there. Would, they would always... Like, it was like the end of the night, and it seemed like they had a decent relationship. And, and it was weird chatting. that the medicine cabinet was right <laughs> next to the bed. Oh, that was well, well, yeah, that was... Lock box with medicine. Does anyone <laughs> run the Cosby show now? I yes. Yeah, I, it, I, I, do they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, is yeah. yeah so they How? were doing your favorite thing talking right before they go to bed <laughs> i'm fine with it oh you hate it uh what i don't what i what i will never figure out about <laughs> first of all you have to remember it's josh's way yes or the highway <laughs> yeah i've kind of built that <laughs> so what you're what you're saying is you said hey look baby i've got to get up at three in the morning i'm going to try to go to bed tonight at nine and then she comes into the bedroom, and after not ta- talking to you pretty much all day, all of a sudden sits down, and my sister called. Blah 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 blah. blah. Well, it's 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 even more. Sp- it's and this is every woman I've ever been with. Ev- okay. Every. Okay. All right. I, uh, hey, what? It seems like something. Uh, you want to talk about anything? Something's on your mind? No, I'm fine. I'm good. Okay. All right. Are you sure? Yeah. No, I'm good. And then I'm 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 rolled over, <laughs> and I'm drifting off. I'm almost to sleep, and then it's. Hey, are, are you awake? Oh God. Yes. Actually, I did want to talk about. 
Now? Yeah. I gave you all day. You know, and this, and this reaction is wonderful. Right. That's, I don't think It's that's not uncommon. how I react. I don't think it's uncommon. But that's why I, when I start a conversation in the evening, I say I need 15 minutes. That way I don't sit there and blab for two hours and then we've wasted two hours of our lives. So I think if you put a time limit on it, you could listen. Sure. No, no, I, I'm a very good listener. <laughs> no, he, he, that, he was begging her to talk. Yes. To oh, I'm I just glad. didn't want it to happen. Oh, oh sorry. Before you're when, going to bed. Yeah. Okay. When and I'm it half always asleep. does. <laughs> Did you ever try the Fowler method on that? The what method? The Fowler method. What's the Fowler, Fowler it's method? It's like Jim Fowler from... Uh, no, it's named after a friend of mine from Harbor Springs. Um, oh. It involves uh, <laughs> the speech from her being limited by the, <laughs> yeah, the size of her mouth, the fullness of her mouth at the time. Oh, All the my, words God. oh my God. <laughs> no, I, I haven't tried the Honestly, Fowler method. I had method. my friend, Mr. Fowler. I, oh, I hope I, he's I, listening. I have a feeling if I were to try the Fowler method, it would quickly become the GARP method, if you know what I mean. Yes. Oh, you mean we're going to need to suture that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that in a baggie and freeze it. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we'll uh, cover Relationships this Relationships are hard. Yeah. 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 But like you said, Chick, we, we persevere. We keep trying. We keep trying. The human race. Humans everybody. want to be together. Now, yes. we're coming up, we're going to talk with uh, Al Jackson, a guy who has just come off of quite a year of a, a relationship <laughs> in which uh, he, he left his, he his apartment, fans apartment came back and the entire contents, yeah. including the ceiling fans, were gone. Uh, not just the furniture, uh, uh. even part of the electronics. We'll be getting to that coming up, but uh, if you want to make sure that someone doesn't steal all your stuff, mm -hmm. I think you want to make sure that you check in with our friends at Simply Safe. My buddies at Simply Safe, that's right, and there's something new, the 24-7 Live Guard Protection. It's made possible only by Simply Safe's new Smart alarm wireless indoor camera. Here's what it is. Fast protect monitoring plan at Simply Safe. If an intruder breaks into your home, Simply Safe monitoring agents actually see and can speak to and deter them through the camera, warning them that they are being recorded and that police are on their way. The new camera also the only indoor security camera that can trigger the alarm and instantly deter intruder intruders with a built-in siren. Plus, it can sense the difference between potential intruders and possibly the family pet. 24-7 live guard protection and the new smart alarm indoor camera work seamlessly as part of the indoor Simply Safe security system to keep your whole home safe from break-ins, fires, flooding, and more. And Simply Safe professional monitoring service starts at under a dollar a day. That is a bargain for peace of mind. And right now, Bob and Tom Show listeners, because you know us, you get special. Did I say Bob and Tom Show? <laughs> and a one and a two. 20% uh, off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. It's a huge offer for a limited time. Just visit simplysafetom.com to get all set up. That's simplysafetom.com. Remember, no safe like Simply Safe. And be sure to get those uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Very, very important. Now, uh, coming up, we're going to talk with a guy. He's got some relationship issues, I think, and uh, he's in a good one right now. We'll talk with uh, Mr. Al Jackson when we come back. I'll remind you also, tomorrow, the show coming to you from the birthplace of aviation, Dayton, Ohio. And uh, yeah, there was a great guest, uh, Roy Wood Jr., Duke Tomato and the Power Trio, uh, live from Dayton tomorrow. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom Show. Essential Morning. You think you lost money in investing? My whole people lost money in investing. <laughs> Bernie Madoff came along and took, oh, all, wow. took set us back ten thousand years. I hate that guy so much. I hate Bernie Madoff so much. Not and not for what he did, because I don't care about the rich. I uh -huh. hope they lose their money. But no, for how he looked physically. Did he have to look so Jewish while he was doing that? He's already the image of a Jew that's in every redneck's paranoid mind's eye. Just some crook nosed Jew on top of a pile of gold coins, swimming in it like Scrooge McDuck. Like, ah, I'm gonna take the ten thousand money. Ah. Like, I always trip out when I see somebody that so fully embodies a stereotype like Bernie Madoff did. Like, when you see a nerd who's actually wearing a pocket protector, like, they don't even make pocket protectors anymore. <laughs> Believe me, I know. That guy had to go out and hand mold the plastic resin <laughs> in his nerdy little pocket. When you're driving in traffic and somebody cuts you off and you look into the car and it is, in fact, an Asian woman, you're like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you serious? Are you seriously going to be Asian right now? There are people watching you. Mm -hmm. Have a 
a little bit of self-respect and don't be Asian. Like when I'm walking along and I see a quarter on the ground, I don't pick it up. It kills me not to, but I don't do it because there's people watching. Me. There are people watching. Me. You don't want to reinforce the stereotype. No. That's correct. Oh, you got my. Oh, man. Keep it real. Uh, uh, Moshe Kasher is our guest. I live, uh, I live in L.A. now. I live in a sort of, I live near Hollywood. I live across the street from a 99 cent store because ah. comedy makes dreams come true. Uh, yes. Yeah, they have a. They now have a. They now sell a 99 cent pregnancy test. Have you seen that? No. no. Yeah. How bad does one's life have to be? Like, how far down the socioeconomic <laughs> ladder do you need to flop before the 99 cent pregnancy test seems like a viable health option? <laughs> the 99 cent pregnancy test when you kinda have to know. Uh. <laughs> so I bought one. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, well, why not? Just to see what would happen. I peed on the little stick. And turns out. I have hepatitis C. <laughs> <laughs> I caught it from Who the knew? test. <laughs> wow, cool. Hey, you dog owners, listen up. This is something for your big sweetie. Chew Works. Has your dog ever scarfed down one of those chew sticks without really chewing? Chew Works has a hold a chew, which will prevent choking and GI blockage. When dogs can't properly hold the chew stick between their paws anymore, they tend to just swallow it. Available in three sizes, mini, junior, and large. Extra large coming soon. Their whole purpose is to provide a safer and healthier way for your dogs to chew. Chewworks.com. Adopted, uh, adopted, uh, adopted. Parents. Parents. Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm adopted. Mm-hmm. I was actually left in a basket on the, the stoop of a fire station. Hmm. And had uh-huh. I been a Dalmatian, they would have kept me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> damn your luck. Huh? Yeah, damn my luck. No. But I you were, lo- you were doing that's nice thing. Evers played in all but 29 minutes of the games. Three years later, in 1929, never scored all of the points for his team. This single game, 40 points scored by a single player is still a record that stands today as the NFL's oldest. Hmm. Nevers also holds a few lesser known (laughs) and unofficial (laughs) records, such as highest number of STDs (laughs) treated in a single season and... The longest winning streak with road horns. <laughs> this has been great moments in NFL Woo! history. Wow. Wow. Hey, this is Henry Phillips, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Well, what else would you be doing with your time? Bob and Tom 24-7. It's not on air. It's online. Bob and Tom 
Yeah. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. Pat Godwin out on the road. There's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Willie Griswold's here. What's up? I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about this uh, news story in, involving the so-called sleep divorce in which uh, couples that are together still sleep in separate beds or, in some cases, separate rooms. Correct. Uh, a lot of folks weighing in on that. We are now joined by comedian Al Jackson, and we'll open up with uh, Al. Are, are, do you uh, sleep in the same um, uh, bed as your friend, your roommate, your <laughs> lover? My friend? Why? <laughs> You're talking about it like it's a gay relationship in the 60s? Oh, that's with his friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we do. But it's crazy. We were talking about uh, this on my uh, podcast. Uh, my safe word is more downloaded. Uh, last week, about uh, a lot of people sleep in separate rooms because snoring is an issue that no one wants to talk about. It's a real thing. I, people can't control it, but it really does. I think it affects like when, when people wake up and they're like, why is my wife like always in a bad mood more? It's because you snored her to death the night before. And I think that it's, I think maybe separate rooms is not as hot, but I think it needs to happen. Because it, it, it just, uh, people don't people don't sleep well. People don't like it. Now, do you, uh, but you're in the same bed as your, uh, do you, what, by the way, what word do you like? Lover? Um, what's uh, the, lover to me seems a little bit too. Uh, that's my, I, I feel like you have to be in the south of France in the summer to, mm -hmm. to take a lover. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's my girl. Girl, girlfriend. Because yeah. girl, girlfriend is, it really isn't the, I mean. Lady friend, what do you want to say? Well, so? old, that Lady sounds like the friend. old West. I know. I mean, there isn't a good word for it. S O. That's that's used a lot. Significant other. Yeah. Well, that sounds like you're applying for a uh, loan. <laughs> medical chart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yes, my, my like, sister's almost eighty, and she talks about Andy, her boyfriend. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what I was gonna say. It's it, Tom. I feel like boyfriend girlfriend. That's gotta stop a, like when you hit. hit 35. I've never I, understood I why that has to stop. I don't either. I, see, I still do it. I'll talk about my girlfriend. Sure, I do it. I, well, not anymore. I'm a, hus I'm a husband, but I said boyfriend. I, by the way, you said that with a lot of disdain. No, I didn't. <laughs> yes, you did. Oh it's like, this, like the scene in the movie Airplane where the, the plane's about to go down and she goes, at least I had a husband. You're a fight starter. <laughs> You're a fight starter. I love, uh, so, Al, yeah. Al, so you don't, you don't call her your lover. She's your girlfriend. I, I don't. Uh, only in front of her parents. Yeah. I call her my lover. This is, uh, <laughs> you call her your daughter. She's my lover. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, but like, what, what, well, then what's the term when it's unsaid but said that they're, that you guys are sleeping together? Because you could be like, uh, Christy Lee, that's my girl. Mm -hmm. But then I could say Christy Lee is my girl. Right. We, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but we I'm don't sleep girl, together. But just like You're a my girl girl. forever. Yeah. yeah. Now, in the South, they do say that's my friend girl. Yeah. What? Which is more clear. Yes. It is. Like, that's my friend girl over there. That, yeah. mean, no, that means you're not in a relationship. Correct. You're just yes, friends. Yes, and it's, it's way clearer, too, because sometimes, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure it happens with both sexes where you kind of, you don't, the person doesn't say that they like that person. So when you're kind of like, oh, they're cute. What's up? And they're, they kind of need to, like, let you know, like, hey, I'm going after them, too. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go, that's my friend girl, you go, oh, that's really like, like, my co-host Erica is my, like, been my sister since day one. So I'm, she's married. But if she went, I'd be like, yo, that's my friend girl. You should holler at her. She's dope. Yeah. But not like. So when, like, you I, tell people that, you tell people that Tom uh, is my man. They know that we're just chums, right? I, I would I have said to people before, Tom's the homie. That's exactly how I would describe you. Oh, that's the homie. Call him when you call him when you're uh you know in town. What an honor. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're officially you're the homie, homie, but not my man fifty grand, because that would that you, would result you, you in You are my man fifty friendship. grand, although with inflation it's probably more like fifty six grand now. <laughs> so corny. <laughs> my, man, my man fifty grand is forty years old, I think. Mm, maybe mm. thirty, at least thirty years old. I see. Yeah. I see. But yeah, uh, now at uh, least thirty. Uh, yeah. we, we were talking about the the evolution on television of people actually sleeping in the same bed. Uh, is this too personal a question to ask? When your folks were together, were they in the same bed? They were, but I I, I remember like uh, watching shows, you know, reruns when I was growing up, where they would, uh, you know, they would say that when the show was ending, they'd be like, "Good night, good night," and they would be in separate beds. And even as a little kid, I was like, "What's up with that?" Mm -hmm. Like, why? It's it's like sleepaway camp. But I do think that, 
you, if there is a different sleeping arrangement, as awkward as it may be, you need to tell your kids what's up because they're just going to fill in the gaps. And if dad is sleeping on the couch, if it's because he has a bad back, even if it's not because he has a bad back, say it's because he has a bad back. <laughs> yeah. But, like, don't just, like, let your kid be like, oh, my dad sleeps in the basement. I had a, I had a good friend. I don't know if I, I told you he, uh, he he said, looking back on it, he realized what happened. But his parents got in such a bad fight that his dad moved out and got another place. And he was a little kid. And he's like, oh, it's so cool. My dad has an apartment. And we have a house. And like, <laughs> they didn't realize, like, oh, okay. You know, but, like, it's when you get, like, kids are not dumb. Like, they're, they just don't really understand things. So, like, I, I, I would just give a little explanation. But would you be offended if somebody said, I want, to, want you to sleep in another room? Not necessarily. No, and, and we wouldn't. all we all are a special case in that we all get up super early in right. the morning, and it's almost impossible to have a normal relationship. Mm -hmm. When you say, "Well, seven o'clock, I want to go to bed," or you get pissed when they want to eat after seven, and you're going, "I don't want to eat," and then have to go to sleep fifteen minutes later. So yeah, we're we're in this weird world that we have. Yeah, plus we're all uh, miserable people, so <laughs> that's probably the biggest reason. I think yeah. that goes See, without saying. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, let we me ask you this: to, we got we got to date third shift workers. Tom, we got to date like nurses that work like eleven to seven. Oh, there's like a we got to have like somebody who's got a weird schedule like that. Yeah, and and uh, now you travel a lot, Al, because you been you've been a stand up comedian for years. You're now one of the hosts of the Daily Blast Live, and you do an excellent job. And by the way, they need to build you a new set. Ever since you went yeah. from putting everybody on the set, they didn't make the desk any bigger, did they? Well, no, they did make the desk bigger, and now we're making it even bigger. Okay. But we went from a tiny desk to a big desk, and now our big desk looks small. So now we're going to go to an even bigger desk. Okay. Well, we had to do weird COVID stuff. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, in any event, I got this nice letter from this guy who agrees with me, and this involves when you're traveling. <laughs> when you're traveling. <laughs> so you'll hear it. You'll hear it because he agrees with yeah. me. That, that or if he's from Michigan. I mean, um, there you go. Or he's a sailor. You know, one of the things we love, or a skier, any of those things. Al, so you're on the road. You've, you've got your lady friend with you. And uh, you're in, a, in a, you're in a hotel, and you have to have a major transaction in the morning. Oh, jeez! Now uh, this guy does what I do, which is I go downstairs, if preferably the hotel has a conference center, where there's usually a gigantic bathroom no one's going to be in, and then you can do whatever you have to do and not disturb anybody. You know what I'm talking Tom, about? You and I. Do I know what you're talking about, Tom? This is, you're talking about my life, bro. This is this is what I love to talk about, and I've. I feel like a lot of couples do not have the discussion, especially, and Christy, you know this, on a first vacation, mm. Jess, you know that, like, you want to make a good impression, you want to be sexy, you're going to be wearing your bikini if you guys are in a tropical place, but, like, we are human beings, so then how do you handle that? Right. I talked to my co-host and what she said, which I didn't even think about, she was like, unless you're a crazy person, you need to take some poopery with you, uh -huh. because that that is the move, but here's what I don't like, and I, I don't know how to say this on radio <laughs> we are now in this age of cutesy boutique hotels which i hate that have gone away from the door hinge and they now have those farmers sliding door. doors yes, yeah. the barn door which leaves a gap which i have a term <laughs> yeah. an air leak gap uh -huh. yes what up with that though <laughs> because we're doing we're not you know we're not we're not making pasta in there it's not going to smell good <laughs> And, like, why would you leave a one-inch gap that goes around the entire door frame? Yeah. We need, we need like, we need Congress stop talking about stuff we don't care about and start getting on this gap. Yeah. Because yes. Seal those bathroom doors. Put in a vent fan. Yeah, I don't want to go to the lobby anymore. I don't, because sometimes there's a convention down there, Tom, and it's, like, weird. And, like, you know, I've got, because I've had to go to that lobby, and then sometimes there's, like, a kid's pageant. Now, I'm the creep. They're like, why are you down here? You have a room. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Pictures, barn doors. <laughs> there's a kid's beauty pageant, and there's some dude using the crapper. It's so weird. There's a lot of those. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in hotels. If you go oh, to yeah. the, there's always, I've gone to two furry conventions. I mean, I've stayed in places that, like, furries are huge. Who knew? Hmm. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, there was a furry convention, and I was at the in the food court at that mall where this little hotel is. Have I ever told you the story? Mm -hmm. and, no. the, uh, and the guy had a, a tail coming out of his shorts. <laughs> yes. So I'm, just, I'm not kidding. He was wearing like really no, short, like short shorts, yeah. and it was this big tail coming out of his shorts. And then it dawned on me how that tail was being held in there. It's actually an elastic belt. Oh, it's not like a <laughs> <No>. plug? 
<laughs> oh, I assumed that the guy was clenching. Oh, no, you have to tell him that it was a plug. Oh, I thought you told I... him that that oh, was no, a plug. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, yeah. that's no, what I, I thought. That's what Chick yeah. told me, you yeah. liar. <laughs> yeah, I know you'd I knew you'd believe it. That's why. Okay. But how would you be able to walk it's just, if it, it was a plug? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> okay. obviously, I bet I bet there are some that are plugs. I bet there I bet are. You that. Yeah. There probably are people that like to wear plugs in public. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine like being a furry and the internet is invented because you're in your small hometown. You're like, I can't tell anybody about this. I like to dress up like a dragon named Scuttles <laughs> and no one can feel me. And then you go on to the internet and as it starts to grow, you're like, oh, there are tens of thousands of people that like to dress up like uh, retired dinosaurs. It must be. That's a good thing is like it, it like helped niche people find each other. Oh yeah, and well, it's it's good and it's bad. It also helps the guy that you know decides he wants to, <laughs> you know, get castrated by a stranger, find a guy on a table in his garage. Yeah, in Fort Wayne. Yeah, oh. we had that story. <laughs> Al Jackson is our guest. Al's a very fine stand-up comedian. That's and, my uh, lead-in. Let me ask you this, Al. Um, without giving too much information, your lady friend is a uh, works in a for a professional baseball organization. Is that correct? She does. Die Hard Rockies fan. Die Hard. And we had a news story this morning that I think is, this will probably come up on your show, The Daily Blast Live. The Yankees are going to be uh, on the the famed pinstripes, are going to be putting a patch on for the Star Insurance Company. Is this going to be, do you think this is, I'd like to know what she thinks about this, and is this going to happen to all the teams? Well, that's the the cool thing about being with somebody that works for a pro team is because you get to hear all the the little things about like the advertisements that go just on the pitcher's mound, you know, and some are kind of self uh, imposed with the camera, and some are actually on there, like all these little branding things. And I think honestly, these teams are looking for any way to make money. And I mean, the NBA started. I think uh, the Lakers have don't they have Bumble. On their uh, on their jerseys, the like Warriors they have, like a, have Bumble on their the jerseys. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, like a dating app. Like yeah. a, the WA, the, they started doing this in Europe, then the WNBA, and now the NBA. I think like we're so used to advertising that it won't really stand out unless it's like you know for the blue chew or something like that really makes you think about it. But I think for the most part, I think it'll be pretty normalized. But the Yankees, it's going to be weird to touch that uniform. That uniform, it's, that means something. It's iconic. I mean. That. I'd forgotten Josh reminded us that they didn't even have names on the back yet. I mean, or if they ever will, probably. Well, you know, they started changing the names of these stadiums. And, like, the, I, I just got used to the Staples Center. Now it's crypto. But now crypto is, like, out of, you know, they don't do that anymore. So it's now you can't call it. It's all, like, is it going to be cha Wrigley cha Field. Chapter 11 Stadium. We, we were talking about Wrigley Field. <laughs> Does Wrigley even pay for that anymore? Or has that just become part of the... I, I, I don't know. I think Lambo, they're going to hold it down. But I mean, I'm sure if somebody throws enough money, you're going to make it. Uh, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I kind of like it old school, but I understand that, like Wu Tang said, cash rules everything around me, Tom. So eventually people will cave. But I kind of I kind of like the old school. Yeah. Where it's just, will, will it be? You know, Lam no advertisement. Lambo Field brought to you by Viagra. Yeah, and I mean, maybe after it'll be weird, but after Game Six. Will you notice anymore? Probably not. Wasn't there, what did you say, OnlyFans or something? Uh, some minor league baseball team? Sponsors a Supercross rider. Oh, Supercross rider. That's right. We what? interviewed an OnlyFans woman yesterday. They're famous, bro. Yeah. They're, like, you don't, that, I'll tell you the cool thing about doing a, a daily show, and you guys know this, too, because you've seen waves of fame. And, like, when we were coming up, like, famous was Stevie Wonder, you know, a blind guy that could play the piano and sing. And now it's just like, we got a YouTuber that uh, makes Thanksgiving dinner, but he cooks it with firecrackers. <laughs> and he's got as many followers or more than, like, Dolly Parton does. Hey, That's don't crazy. make fun of that firecrackers guy. He's I'm great. opening for him in Peoria next month. I need <laughs> exactly. to work. So. Like they've taken all the comedy club work. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's crazy. You go to these shows and you'll see, you know, the Bob and Tom tour will be here this weekend. And then... The next two weekends are some 20-year-old kid who is too good-looking to be funny, let's be honest. And, you know, it's just like you don't know them, but they have these huge followings from YouTube. So, I don't know. Maybe I missed the boat on that. Just yeah, there's another thing. I, Josh, we were talking off the air, and Josh made a great point. We were talking about uh, the uh, prices of concert tickets uh, in the, uh, the post-Taylor Swift era. 
Tom, I don't want to do this. I don't want to. You're bringing up a raw nerve, but please keep going before you. I know Josh was making. I was. I was saying. I think that this, the Taylor Swift thing is going to have all concert tickets skyrocket in price. And Josh, you said you call it the Instagram factor. Yeah, yeah people want to go pay a lot of money to go to these concerts, not necessarily to see the concert, but to get the Instagram picture of them at the concert. And, and we both have observed, never we, thought about that. And we have yes, observed absolutely. people at concerts that show up, take sure. the picture, and leave. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I will say this. I uh, for my daughter's 16th birthday. Uh, you know, I'm actually going to, to NYU the, the, this weekend with her to get her moved into the dorms. And uh, I, for her 16th birthday, I took her. Uh, to, uh, I got her and two of her friends uh, concert tickets at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta to go see the artist SZA. Do you know who that is, Tom? Yeah. S S Z A. I'm sure you do. Mm-hmm. She's got the and, hair uh, over her eyes. Looks like a black and white cookie with the. Mm-hmm. No, that's Sia. That's Sia. That's hilarious. That I was wrong. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah, I thought you were being sarcastic. No, SZA's like. Uh, she does. Look she's Sia like does this like generation's Erica Badu. Yeah. That's that's the. She's like a very pro feminist. You know, you go, you go, girl. Kinda, oh, some you know, hair, not, hair, not, some harebrained scheme, huh? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but like yeah. very empowering. I love. It. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, for your 16th birthday, I'm going to get you two, three tickets, you know, uh, to your best friends. And she was like, cool. So I had committed at that point. Tom, I got the pre-sale for three tickets. They were good seats. They weren't on the stage. $2,700, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. one's crazy. Seven. It's that's, that nuts. was like a, a U Civic when I was growing up. That was like it's, your car. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, Civics right. are tough. You can't kill a Civic. I'm telling you. Yes. Right now. It's in state tuition. They run forever. Uh, Al Jackson's our guest. Al is uh, one of the hosts of the Daily Blast Live. Al, it's always a great pleasure. And um, we were not embarrassed today. Uh, mm-hmm. Trying to teach you a word. We're never embarrassed. I'm, we're I'm, fam- I'm we're relieved. Fam- okay, we have a thir- 30 seconds. Give, oh. me a, give me a word. See if I know all it. Go quick. All right, Tom, I will give you a quick one uh tom let's get one that you can definitely get tom what is uh riz 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 r-i-z <laughs> r-i-z-z riz? r-i-z-z um what was that name again you have you have this tom uh <laughs> wow um riz uh, <laughs> it's in your name riz um <laughs> tom riswald it, uh, it's, it's is it is it a uh, is it a rap producer a hip-hop guy <laughs> no it, it's short for something that everybody in that studio has that's a good giveaway. A Riz. Starts with the, starts with the C, but this is a shortened version of that. Uh, Chris, charisma. Yes. Yes. Tom. <laughs> oh, that's your you. walk off. Oh, that's baby. your walk off oh, in there. Can, can, wait, can I get some more props for time in that no, studio? No, no, that no. That was <laughs> No, you can't. Yeah, he spoon fed no. me. I, I know. No, you, you talk to him. Have. You talk to him one time a week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you shut your hole. Uh, Al, you are good one point. of the most. Good point. You're one of the most rhythmatic guys that I know. Aww. Thanks, Al. Uh, We'll see you. All right, love you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Right Brilliant. now, I want to talk about uh, about helping yourself here. The Bob and Tom Show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There is so much going on out there. It's so confusing. Everyone can feel overwhelmed. And uh, maybe you want to kind of calm yourself down a little bit. That's where therapy comes in. Helps you have your best life. So um, well, something really interesting in the world of therapy is going on right now, and it's called BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes use of contemporary technology by hooking you up with a therapist uh, online, and the therapy is performed online. So it uh, helps you get uh, the best version of yourself. And the way it works is you fill out a brief questionnaire, and you will get matched with a licensed therapist. And by the way, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. And the key to this is convenience, flexibility. It's suited to your schedule. And uh, you can do it, by the way, as if you were on a phone call. You could do it uh, with uh, the cameras on. You could do it just texting back and forth effectively. Uh, it's better help and uh, therapy that is performed via your computer or your phone. So let therapy be your map with better help. Uh, go to better help dot com slash bt show to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp.com slash bt show better help h-e-l-p dot com slash bt show the bob and tom show is sponsored by better help when we come back christy's at the news desk what else is happening well, over we there? have to get to our eargasm story we have a horrific cruise story oh my gosh
Yeah, I kind of wonder. I'm surprised w- that you even gave me this. It's one. brutal. Many dead? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah oh. Not people, though. Not people. Oh, no. <laughs> in, a, in a way worse. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. Pets? Family pets? What's uh, going no. on? Uh, just, it's no. It's Noah's Ark meets Titanic? Uh, you're getting uh, closer. Yeah. Okay. We also have the corpse flower. We got an, a volcano erupting in Iceland. And they have to warn tourists not to go too close. Yeah, you know I'm sure what? they do. You once again, the last yeah. Time? Once again, the, yes. the insta effect. <laughs> yes. Hey, look at me. Look where I am. Look at the. Vo- In uh-huh. this case, it's more of an insta pot effect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there go all the good jokes. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom <laughs> Show. More Bob and Tom next. Got a comment? Our email is Bob and Tom at Bob and Tom dot com. Hi, Tom here along with uh, comedian Ryan Singer, and we've been talking about Ryan's car, which has got, uh, I believe, uh, 298,000 miles on yeah. it. And uh, this is a beautiful uh, machine. It's obviously taken him all across the country many times, and Ryan would like to sell it, so I'm going to try to help him do that. I have not tried the car yet, but let's give it a quick yeah, let's, uh, review. Let's, let's check it out. Now, um, oh, the, uh, what year is this? 99. Um, oh, the driver's side handle's broken off, so you either can go into the back seat or... Oh, wait a minute. I, I think I can get it. You want me to open it? Wait a minute. Yeah. You, you have to open it from the inside, oh, okay. I think. So, yeah. But, uh... As long as you have a friend okay. with you most of the time, you no problem. I'm just I'm have them open right the door for you. Kind of warm today here. Uh, does this thing have AC? Uh, yeah, AC works. Nice. And uh, nice. maybe I'll take that out so it's not beeping unless okay. you want to crank it up and there's a cb i don't have it hooked up yet but you got a cb nice a cb radio this you can see cb the uh the original social network you can see what's your cb there? handle again monster hunter monster so hunter forever in the same three to five mile radius at the exact same time maybe we'll chat on channel 19 yeah okay okay this is a test on uh, monster hunter testing the cb i'm getting a lot of action right now Well, does the CB come with the car? CB comes with the car. Not a lot of drivers around chatting right now. That's the problem. Freeway's only about 300 <laughs> yards that way. I, I think there'd be quite a lot of action. Yeah, they're probably yeah. just, you know, it's probably a slow day out there, you know? Okay. The uh, radio does work. CD player, as you can see. Uh, oh, that was a CD right nice. there. Nice. That's nice. Uh, you know, Cap, uh, Captain Beefheart is in there right now. Oh, wow, that's sophisticated. Uh, yeah, so it's got an auxiliary plug for an iPhone or a... Android or something like that. Did you install this radio? This is aftermarket. Yeah, I installed the radio and the CB because the uh, factory stopped working. Glove box opens and locks. There's a GPS. Hey, I'll, I'll even throw that GPS in there. It's a Garmin. Nice. nice. Uh, yeah. So now, can we get a shot of the actual dashboard to see the mileage? Oh yeah. Let's see what we're at. That's two nine two ninety seven eight hundred seventy miles. So by the end of uh, next week, after the tour, I'll be over 280, 298. Wow, so this is about to approach 300,000 miles. Motor sounds great. And this is a, what, a 90? 90... 99. 99, uh, this is a Camry? LE. A Camry LE. Four cylinder. Four cylinder, four door. Okay, well, let's continue the tour, shall we? Okay. Once again, we're taking a tour of this uh, beautiful 99 Camry, 298,000 miles on it. Let's head back here. Uh, nice. Uh, it's got the electric window thing. Yeah. Keep the ice off the back window. Gas door. Nope. You know, Good looking trunk. Yeah, trunk's got a lot of trunk space. No, we don't. Here. Yeah. Oh, we don't need. Uh, oh, here. Oh, Jesus. We don't need, uh, trunk's got lots of room. Lots of room. Everything that comes in the trunk comes with the car. That's the deal. Uh, you know, it's up. Uh, oh, you know, that's a weird. I, it's a weird tick on the engine. Yeah, you okay, need to find that. That's Ryan Singer's car. Now, if you'd like to make an offer on that, how does this work, Ryan? Uh, they can reach me at my website, ryansingercomedy.com, or email ryansingercomedy at gmail.com. Make me an offer. I'll take the best offer I can get. And this is for real. This car is for sale, and it comes with everything in it, except probably the chick you had locked in the trunk. Yeah, or the luggage. The, the luggage. The luggage in the trunk. You're not helping the show where 
you're going, we don't want to go. You think that you're a good up, we wish that you would shut up, because you're not helping the show. You're not helping the show. Where you're going, we don't want to go. Your moment of enjoyment will lead to unemployment Cause you're not helping the show Don't you see, Chick McGee Your career needs a plan B You're not helping the show Where you're going, we don't wanna go Bob and Tom are seething, it's time that you are leaving Cause you're not helping the show no, you're not helping the show. <laughs> Bob and Tom, 24-7. <laughs> What's harder to raise, boys or girls? I would uh, guess girls. 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 Mm -hmm. Boys are easy. Just give them a book of matches. They're happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, book of matches and some hands. Oh, yeah. yeah. Until oh, they turn yeah. 13 and you give them a Playboy magazine, you won't hear another word out of them until they're 25. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, Chick? You're right. Uh, oh, yeah. When you're right, you're right. Testify. I ain't seen my oldest boy in four years. <laughs> My oldest boy, he's 17, he's been driving for a year, he's had 27 accidents. My God. <laughs> In fact, I call him the David Copperfield of drivers. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, because it's magic. <laughs> because to hear him tell it, stuff just appears out of nowhere <laughs> and he hits it. <laughs> and he's stupid, he always comes with the same excuse. I mean, he's not even a good liar. He's like, oh, I had to swerve to miss a deer. 27 deer. <laughs> well, maybe she'd get me some deer whistles for my car. I said, son, you need mailbox whistles because that's the only thing you've been killing. <laughs> Mailman can't even deliver in the neighborhood no more. He just hands me the mail. He goes, you figure the stuff out. I, I'm done. Oh, hello there, Sonny. It's Morgan Freeman. Oh, hello, hello, Morgan. Morgan. How y'all doing? Good. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Oh, nice. I understand you have someone there that was talking about men making noises during <laughs> sexual encounters. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I understand you said you've never heard a man make a noise before. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, you've never been to Shawshank, Sonny. <laughs> now, in Shawshank Prison, is there a lot of, is there a lot of noise? Yeah. Oh, it's hard to sleep at night. Uh -huh. <laughs> Matthew Dufresne came to Shawshank Prison back in 1947. Uh -huh. And he had a nickname that he was known by. What's that? Oh, no, 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 please stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Kostaki Economopoulos, and you are listening. Details coming up. You just can't help yourself. It's okay to stop. No. And take a breath. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Okay. You, do you approve of this uh, interstitial music? I do not. There's <laughs> Josh Arnold. See what, Hi. I, see what I have to deal with, Jess? It's unbelievable. I'm there's, familiar. There's Jess Hooker. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Hey. Yes, I'm a real monster. There's <laughs> Lily Griswold. It feels like country music on Broadway. It feels like very overproduced. It's like something it's, trying to be something yeah. else. But like it's when not, a president yeah. works in the South and he's trying to campaign down there, this is what he plays. <laughs> oh, I, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm just happy. Here's yeah. Tom. Just like a Yankee. Let's write some words to it, Josh. What do you think? <laughs> it's the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> Three handsome men, two I handsome said I ladies. I liked it. Would it have been over by now? <laughs> <laughs> what rhymes with an, what rhymes with annoying prick? <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I can. I'm sorry, make, I'm an annoying. I, I can make prick. everyone feel better. <laughs> I have uh, the key to. Uh, to feeling good. Do you? Let the good times roll. What's I that? I bet you don't. Oh. Oh. I know it. The deep voice. Ace Cosby, here he is with his joke of the day. My new little puppy is still learning how to bark. Oh. Yeah. Right now, I can come up with the rough drafts. That was Ace joke of the day. That's a great joke. That's oh. cute. That is solid. It's cute. <laughs> it is cute. <laughs> Clever. Rough drafts. It's like a... Like a yeah. bark 2.0. Yeah. You're right. Uh, yeah. Boy, I'm, uh, I'm humorless. The beta bark, <laughs> if you will. I'll have to live with myself. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. We have uh, Christy Lee at the Bob and Tom News Desk. We've covered everything, right? Oh, gosh, no. The doctor on TikTok is offering an explanation. <laughs> by the way, that, that's where I get all my medical information. For the so-called eargasm people feel when sticking a cotton swab in their ears. Oh, yeah. That's Love what I was that. talking about. Yeah. The original video features a TikToker asking, quote, I'm just saying... 
if I'm not supposed to put cotton swabs in my ears, then why did evolution put a happy button in there? What? Dr. Karen Raj responded, explaining that a branch of the vagus nerve or vagus nerve, V-A-G-U-S. Vagus. I think it's vagus. vagus. Is yeah. it? It's not vagus. It's not vagus. It's not vagus. That's, that's a little more south. <laughs> there <laughs> is a vagus nerve. <laughs> well. What happens at vagus nerve stays in vagus nerve. <laughs> So I'm sorry, am I, I, so I'm not experiencing this. Is you, you... It extends into the ear, and for some, massaging this vagus nerve can elicit a calming and euphoric effect similar to orgasm. You really, you don't get a really good sensation when you use a Q-tip, Tom? I mean, it feels okay. I don't... Raj, oh. also, she also uh, noted I that it's... I need to get a Kleenex you know, and take it a says, nap. <laughs> it says right on the Q-tip box, you're not supposed to stick them in your ear. Yes. Yeah, yeah that must be the It pushes mo- wax down into there, not... But I mean, that's out. certainly the most abused thing you can buy at a drugstore that isn't a pharmaceutical. <sighs> okay. I mean, yeah. more people. I mean, what, else, what, else do people what else do people buy Q-tips for, except for, I don't know... Oh, I use them all the time. Makeup yeah. applications. De- detailing, detailing heavy gnats. You know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Have you guys seen the the new um, ear insert oh, it has a camera like a, it has yeah. a camera on the end of it so you can see what you're scooping out no. i have yeah, yeah. and it kind of has like clips yeah. Are, yeah. Is this, can, i mean is this safe for the average person to use it looked like it was maybe safer because you're not you're yeah, you, can you can see, see. What, what you need to remove as no, opposed this is to, like scuba yeah. diving you're gonna have some amateur go too deep well that's what happened with q-tips Mm. Q-tips were made for the ears. Mm. And yeah. then all of a sudden, somebody stabbed their brain. <laughs> and Q-tip went, well, now we have to say they're not for your ears. Huh. Dr. Raj also noted that it's very likely that the Dr. erectile Raj. tissues oh. in your ears engorge, meaning that eargasms may be in response to swelling in the ear canal that doctor described as ear boners. Nice. However, she goes I'm on to really say... I'm really skeptical of this. An well, no, there's, there's, they call that... Uh, is it vaso va- congenital? Because uh, con- vaso congestion means uh, the blood becomes en- your skin becomes engorged, right? Huh. Or that tissue becomes engorged with blood. You have it in the penis. You have it in nipples. You have mm-hmm. it. In- so it's also in your ear. That would make sense. Yes. Yeah. Okay, fellas. So you got one more, one more G spot you got to search for. The well, G-spot. some women, <laughs> some men or women love a tongue in their ear. Ugh, oh. I do not. For that same reason. I do not. Do you like that? I don't hate it. Do you have, a, do you, do you have to wear condoms so you don't get hearing aids? <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't know whether to laugh at that or cry. Uh, I, 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 I'm, well, you Doc- know me. I, I love an AIDS joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There's nothing funnier. Yeah. Dr. Got Raj. Farmer's daughter. <laughs> so got is big it, city. Is it vagus or vagus? I don't know. It's the vagus nerve. Vegas? Vegas. Vegas. We don't need no stinking Vegas. Are you sure it's not Vegas? Vegas? I'm 100% sure. Oh, cool. Dr. Raj begged users, if you want to get freaky with your ears, please do. Just leave Q-tips out of it. There's a lot of stuff that comes under the Vegas nerve, actually. Since they push wax deeper into the ear canal or can cause other damage. I, That's my doctor I have an idea for, for an invention. Okay. Ready? Yes. Take a number two pencil. And instead of an eraser, on the eraser end, you put a giant Q-tip. That's pretty good. Because you've seen people take a pencil <laughs> and dig in their ear. Oh. I'm not, I like a... That guy over there. He'll put anything in his Q-tips. ear. Q-tips. Keys. A pen cap feels pen real caps. good. Oh, I have the Bic pen cap. It's yeah. kind of like a I've scooper. I've seen you use a <laughs> yes. paper clip. Yep. Who would you guys hate if I wasn't here? <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a quick uh, overview. I'm with you, chick. Paper clip. I, I, look, I, we're not encouraging others to do this. The vagus nerve also controls your beat-to-beat uh, heart rate. So don't mess with the vagus nerve, okay? All There's right. a lot to do with uh, anxiety, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I looked it up. This is complicated. The vagus nerve is the main nerve of your parasympathetic nervous system that That's controls right. involuntary functions such as digestion, heart rate, connected to vag- vaginal orgasms. There you go. There you go. There you go. Hmm. So, uh, okay. Jackpot, Daddy. I mean, isn't this just, this is just going to encourage people to dig deeper in their ears and do damage? I th- I no, she's saying, please don't. She's saying, uh, don't stick the Q-tips in your ears. Isn't there, right. some kind of, isn't there some kind of screw-in thing they advertise now? It looks like a... It does, yes, it does. It looks like the, a plastic screw, yeah. like a, like a, yeah. Hmm. Mm, I never a, bought the idea of those ear candles. Yeah, me either. Look at all the wax. Yeah. You're melting a candle. <laughs> there should be wax. How do I know where the earwax begins and the candle wax ends? Oh. I got a new two-minute hump. 
<laughs> is, is there some kind of... Um, You're ready for Def Jam, baby. Yeah. Is Gosh, there some kind my of, ex uh, calls uh, me the two-minute hunk. <laughs> I'm sorry, is there some kind of uh, like a vacuum that they have for that? For no, for the ear, ear candle, the heat is... But if you go to an ear doctor... Will, uh, he, will he usually, or she vacuum it out? or uh, You know, like the things that you put in a baby's nose, whatever mm -hmm. that is? Oh, yes, yeah. that's what I not. They mm -hmm. have those for your ears. I had it done all the time when I was a kid because I had bad ear infections. And they flush it with hot water, and then they suck it back oh. out. Yeah. And then Do you have late... swimmer's ear? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Do you ever have tubes? That, well, we didn't have tubes when we were kids. No, we didn't. Did. They weren't inv invented Lots yet. Lots of tubes. I have yeah. swimmer's butt. Do you? Yeah, water gets in there and I just <laughs> get, in, I get infections. Wait a minute. You just like you just like enemas, don't you? Love. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had, what's the, what's the super enema called? The coffee one? The high colonic? No, the colonic. Uh, the colonic. I never have had one. That's actually illegal in some states. Yes. Oh, really? I've yes. never had. And isn't there, there, isn't there some place where they go and they actually read it as it comes out. They read it like tea leaves. Yeah, there's, a, there's a place here. Are they really, I mean, Very close to here. Am I correct in saying that it's like it's telling you your fortune? I it's to, a, uh, it's, oh. I'm not kidding you. I, it see, goes, I, it see goes sweet, I see sweet corn in your future. It's like a clear television screen and you just see everything shoot across it. It just... It I know that she, is really I know something. I bought a gift certificate from that place for, mm -hmm. for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Did they use it? I don't know. I think they did, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. I know that's how the great singer Kenny Loggins met one of his wives. <laughs> By getting a high colonic? Yeah. yeah. That's, seriously, that's where he met wow. I don't think they're together anymore, but uh, uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> that's uh, weird. There's having, good bacteria in there that you want. If you I gave high colonics, is that was, if that was your job, wouldn't you, I mean, if you work at like a <laughs> hamburger place... <laughs> You're going to smell like hamburgers. <laughs> I mean, I see where you're going. Isn't that right? Yeah. I mean, come on, right? Yes, yes. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That'd be rough. I'm sure and then, I wonder what kind of jokes they get. That, that, that'd be a whole topic. Ugh. Every profession, you get a certain type of thing people always ask you. Like, we had the thing about, hey, doc, you know, now that the baby's born, put an extra stitch in there, that kind of thing. Yeah. Is there, is there one for the, the high colonic people? I don't know. Mm, uh, no. They give you the option. They'll sit there and talk to you, or they'll leave you by yourself. If you want company, they'll sit there and have a conversation. You've had with this you. done? No, someone oh. very close to me has had it done. Oh, no. you, can you hear like? A, is, do you hear like a pump? Yeah, you can hear like the. It's walk like walk a. Walk they walk they walk said it was like you just hear water running. Yeah. Mm. How much? Did they, how much did they put like in? Like a there? washing machine. <laughs> you did it. Yeah, they gave me the option. They said. She goes, do you want me to stay here or do you want me to leave? I said, well, it's up to you. I'm going to be masturbating either way. I mean, is it extra? <laughs> we'll be back. I, I'm not sure we will. I, after that, I don't know if we should be. That's a good... Uh, um, uh, coming up, we have... Um, uh, uh, the corpse flower is back. A couple of them, as a matter of fact. And oh. um, a volcano, Iceland. And the currency on the street these days is, of all things... Laundry detergent. Hmm. We'll find out about that. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hey, thanks for listening to the Bob. Tell us more about scatting. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's like in the traditional jazz sense. It's, uh, you know, the... Uh, you know, the scooter, but, 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 beat a beat a but, mm. but I mean, I don't do that. I do it to classic rock only. Right. The most famous scat is probably the worst ever. Well, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, a great artist, but the doobie doobie, doobie do, one of right. the worst, uh, absolutely terrible right. scats. But yeah, but you, I mean, it's hard. Like if you're in the car and you're listening to Led Zeppelin, it's hard not to do the bow 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 and uh you know my girlfriend's like most people sing the lyrics that's true okay mm -hmm. uh, i can scat uh amos moses by jerry reed oh please. yeah let's hear it on that note, we have to go. Thanks for joining us.
Armstrong. I, I tell you, I am single now. This came up. We'll talk about it more later. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. I You're not going to be able to stop me. It's come out. Uh, but I tell you this much right now. I'm trying. Trying. I am trying to talk to girls. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm young. I can talk to young girls. You ever? Yeah. You ever looked at a young girl? They're great. They're great. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You ever talk to one? It's no. like torture. <laughs> it's like having a conversation with a baby, except babies don't have dumb ideas yet. <laughs> it's like. It's like if my nephew all of a sudden was misinformed about politics and had dumb dog stories. I was like, it'd be like I was on a date with him. They don't even know what to say, but I'll get to the naked picture in a second. I was talking to a girl. We were at a pool, a place that has pool tables. I go, hey, do you, I go, hey, do you play pool? Uh-huh. And she goes, I had sex on a pool table once. Oh, wow. That's a weird way to say you don't play pool. I don't even, I don't even know how to respond. Was it a league? What is that? How do I go to that? What? I'm glad I didn't ask if she played ping pong. Uh, yeah. Um, but that pictures thing. Yeah, you got to be careful. You send naked pictures. With these you. young chicks, they'll send yeah. naked pictures. Yeah. You can do it. You, and very, you don't even have to. I was just texting back and forth with a girl, and she's like, hey, I like you know I like you or whatever. And you want to see some good pictures? Hey, sure. yeah, semicolon uh-huh. close parenthesis. I do, uh-huh. and uh, and then she sends a few of them. And I'm like, hey, these are these are these are hot. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then. She's got short hair in one and long hair in the other. She's, they, just, they just keep them on file like W-2s. From now on, send me your boobs and today's newspaper. Uh, yeah, I want to yeah, feel I wanna special. See them, but sure. yeah. You want to know that they're fresh. to seat heard you hover and do the 30 seconds over Tokyo thing that I do. <laughs> I got down. Bob and Tom in the morning and highlights all day long. The Bob and Tom Show, weekday mornings at 6 a.m. Eastern on Bob and Tom 24-7. Hi, this is Bobcat Goldthwaite, and you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Speaking of Kennedy. That's a good shout-out. <laughs> Now that is a good shout out. Yes, uh, thank you. John Kennedy Jr. Maybe. Why do you think they call us Skippy Little Suda Teddy anyway? <laughs> uh, thank you. You uh, want to go watch the uh, films of uh, Bobby's funeral at my place? Well, what do you know? It's a uh, 4 a.m. and we're drunk. Well, let's make Whoopi. <laughs> Wear my Oxford pl- cloth. I was on a plane with one of the Kennedys one time. Really? Well, you lucky to be. Yeah, yeah. It was Ted Kennedy. He was on the plane. Yeah, he was in first class. You know, I was in the back. You know, sure. With the degenerates. But uh, but what a great name to be born. Pitt and Kennedy or. or Rockefeller or something like that. My luck if I was born in the money, my last name would be Massengale. <laughs> <laughs> my dad, the big douche baron. <laughs> the douche baron. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you, know, you got waiters making fun. You want oil and vinegar? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and bring it. <laughs> my dad, the big douche baron. <laughs> <laughs> they don't say we didn't warn you. There's laughter ahead. You guys want to grab lunch? We yeah, can't go anymore. Holy That's cow. a good day's work, everybody. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. And a fresh version of the New Testament Bible aims to appeal to girls by being designed to look like a teen magazine. Here we go. Revolve from Nelson Bibles is made up of 400 wow. glossy color pages and contains the entire New Testament, That'll but also... Great. Oh, look, here's another chapter. No more fun. Contains <laughs> articles written in the style of teen magazines. Mary's lip gloss. Including <laughs> quizzes like, are you dating a guy? Godly guy. How to suck the fun out of life. <laughs> Answers to questions such as if God made pot, why can't I smoke it? <laughs> Was it a Bible or just a religious magazine? No, it's a Bible. It's, Bible. it's got the entire New Testament in it. Okay. Written around these articles. No, headlines, Jesus resurrected, stuff like that. Oh, I see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Christy. Sounds good. Seven deadly sins. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> No more Ten Commandments. Six you can handle. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> Just the six that you can get by on. Six for now. <laughs> That's right. Worry about the other four later. When grandfather died.
eyes, life will be strange. When grandfather dies, my whole world will change. When grandfather dies, I'll scream and I'll yell, cause I'll be rich as hell. <laughs> and then I, I figured That's I didn't need to write anymore. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hey there. There's Jess Hooker. Hi. There's Ace Cosby. Howdy. Willie Griswold's here. What up? Pat Godwin on the road. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. Hello, Tom. Do you approve of this one? I do. Um, it's got a family feud kind of feel. Yeah, Ooh, game yeah. show, definitely. Kind of like, okay, move it on. Move, yep. move it forward. It's okay. Sherry, come on down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you say cherry or Jerry? It's a Sherry. Oh, Sherry. Do you have one that you like? Yeah, there's a bunch I like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, do they still do this on the Family Feud when they would introduce the families for the first time? They'd all be in a pose in a living room uh, setting. Oh, yeah. And you could kind of, oh, look, they're that's yeah. sort of clever. They're pretending to fight or, uh, oh, look, they look like royalty. <laughs> exactly. Ready do they for still action. do that? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. I watched a celebrity one yesterday, and they didn't have a background, but they were standing there. And... Okay. Okay. Hmm. I used to love that. Uh, is, Richard, is Richard Dawson still with us? He's not. No. Mm. Well, he would really kiss the women on the lips. He sure Wouldn't did. Mm. Yeah. Right on the lips. Wow. You just stare at their husbands. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. First, I'm going to kiss your wife and then your daughter, sir. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? He would. He yeah. Would. And he'd go in for seconds. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yikes. Uh, now, well, he um, got taught by the best, Bob Crane, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they they probably watched a couple of flicks oh, together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. They were both on Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> Hogan. Um, we were talking about this uh, sleep uh, organization that has uh, well, you've started the term sleep divorce, mm -hmm. which is not about divorce. It's about sleeping in separate beds or separate bedrooms. Yeah, it's a tad dramatic. That, uh, yeah, got, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. particularly care for the term. I, I agree with you, Josh. It is kind of stupid. Got this one uh, from David. He writes, my wife and I have separate bedrooms. We have for the last eight years. I'm a bartender. She's a school teacher. We have very opposite schedules. Makes sense. I'll be crawling into bed 45 minutes before her alarm goes off. Oh, boy. Also, we have three cats and a 140-pound Great Pyrenees dog. <laughs> uh, if, we're only in the, if we're in the same bed, the only sleep is by the dog of the three cats. And I snore like a freight train. Hmm. So they... Have separate there bedrooms. There you go. Now my question is, then is there a room that is the one for, uh, as they used to say in the TV game shows, making whoopee? I don't think so. <laughs> this was on CBS Sunday Morning about people having separate bedrooms and uh, they do sleepovers. They're like, hey, you want to come over to my place tonight? And that's fun. And they'll they'll bang it out and then they'll no. sleep or go back to their room. I don't bang know. It out. They will bang it out, said <laughs> no. the young lady. Well, yeah. apparently Jane Pauley said it. <laughs> I don't think she said that. Um, and then he writes, uh, he, he goes into the, the banging it out without uh -huh. such uh, unfortunate verbiage. <laughs> and uh, he says, afterwards, we, you get to go to sleep in your own room. I am happy with my window open and just a sheet. She's snug under a pile of blankets. Best thing ever. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that that it could works be a for thing. You. Yeah. That could be a thing. The blanket thing. I had a yes. college roommate. You that... said it twice. I think it's your thing. No, That's no, what no, I heard. no, no, not at thing. all. No, I meant that, that. What I meant to say, the, the thing of the cold air thing. Yeah. Do you ever know anybody that had to have the window open no matter how hot or cold or whatever yep. it is? I had a um, roommate that was that way. It could be 20 degrees outside, window <laughs> yeah. open six inches. Ooh. And heat blasting? Yeah. That's how it was. It's like the cold dorms. Yeah, that's what they did when we were in college during the winter to keep, uh, you know, parasites and infection and flu <laughs> and all those things out of there. Okay. Um, do you like a... Uh, <laughs> Nice cold room. I like a cold room, a, yes. And a warm man. Uh, not the <laughs> second part, but I like a cold room. I'll take a warm blanket. Yeah. No, I like it. I And I'm I'm at an age now where I got to crack the window open halfway through the night sometimes. The hot flashes are hitting, so. Oh. Yeah. Now, do you have one of those um, lead blankets that people use? What are those called? Weighted, weighted blanket. Weighted yeah. blanket. I have one. <laughs> really? Yeah. Have one? No, no, you're right. Oh, lead blanket. I do. Yeah. Yes, I have a weighted blanket. That's got to be very... Uh, Love it. Yeah, comforting. Or the one that's cooling, so you don't get too hot. Have you seen those? I have seen those. I have a cooling throw, I guess. Oh, okay. So does this blanket go from head to toe? 
Yes. No, it just is on the... <laughs> no, it's just... Um, if you have a blanket that doesn't cover your feet, it's not really a blanket. It's not it? really worth much as a blanket <laughs> if it doesn't cover you entirely, does it? But why, I, what I, is it you... No, this you, way... I don't have I, one of these. Why? I've heard about these weighted uh, blankets. the Flintstones were cartoon characters. You <laughs> I, have a, I have a child-size, twin-size blanket because... My husband doesn't care for it, so Perfect. it's on so, my side of the bed. How yeah. much does it weigh? It's light. It's the kid one, like so whatever. Tid, yeah, seven to ten pounds. And they're, and they're made of lead to prevent radiation. They're not lead. They're little... <laughs> 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 What's he talking about? So when you go get your um, teeth cleaned and they put that radiated... I love oh, it. it's such a love nice it. feeling. Mm -hmm. You don't like the radiation. Yeah, I do that. I could fall asleep in the dentist chair. Yes. Easily. Oh, me too. I why love those get, Why don't we get you in the dentist chair? <laughs> I wouldn't mind having one of those. What? Right here. That's so you're getting, you're getting so weird. You wouldn't mind having a dentist chair. Yeah, because but every time I go to the dentist, I'm exhausted. I've been up since 3 a.m. Yeah. And I guess, you know, it's the middle of the day, and all of a sudden I'm kind of sitting back, and it's comfortable. And uh, How do you keep your mouth open? Because of the uh, the agonizing drilling going on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hard to scream with your mouth closed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's get back to the news desk with Christy Lee. What's happening? Uh, well, two very offensive, smelly corpse flowers are in bloom in the United States. Why do they keep doing the this? The Titan Arum, or corpse flower, derives its name from the putrid stench of rotting flesh it produces when it unfurls. Lovely. In spite of, or because of the smell, the flower's unpredictable bloom often draws throngs of spectators. And they're, they're huge, right? Uh huh. The spectators, some are thin. And, uh, <laughs> not the spectators. Oh, no, really, the really fat people do like the. Let's corpse go flower. look at the stinky <laughs> flowers <laughs> together. A corpse flower in San Francisco's Conservatory of Flowers and one at the San Diego Botanic Gardens currently in bloom for a brief period of time. Both flowers have passed their peak in the blooming cycle, so their signature stench is no longer as pungent as it once was. Christy, are you at all curious? Would you go? No, nah, I'm not really curious about it. I'd like to see one of these, but really? apparently it, it's, I guess they, it's like a, a rotting corpse and humidity and he, it's, yeah, it's that really stinks. Why would you want to do that? Well, there's, they're really pretty. They're really beautiful. I'd like I to can do look at them. And they're kind of rare. They're kind of rare and they don't know, they don't exactly know when they're going to bloom. It just right. sort of happens. Hmm. Hmm. I think they're unique. I don't think they're really pretty. Wouldn't you? They're, I don't know. they're big, aren't they're they? Like yeah, that's mm -hmm. the thing. Classic. You can't, you can't tell from the photograph because there's no scale, but they're very large. That's part of the charm. I think they look kind of phallic in a way. Well, let's see it. Well, there's, yeah, there is kind of a, um, there's there's kind a, of a big... large thing in the middle oh, coming yeah. up. What is that, a stamen? Is yeah. that very you... nice. Kind you of, remember kind your of, biology class. <laughs> kind of dunce cap esque um, uh, really pointy. Mm. Hmm. They, uh, yeah. It's... Massive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, does that one have scales? Yeah, yeah it has two people standing, standing next to it. Yeah. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that the weird guy with the long blonde hair? <laughs> I got that. Picture. Yeah. Curly. Yeah. 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 Curly yeah. blonde hair. Yeah. Oh, oh that's a man. man? Yes. Uh, coming up. Uh, He's got a blonde mustache. These men with long hair. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Weird. Quit confusing me. Uh -huh. Quit turning me on. Cut it out. <laughs> Cut it out. You look so good from the back. It's freaking me out, boys. <laughs> uh, uh, what's coming up in the news, Christy? Well, coming up, we have laundry detergent being stolen. We have meth and soy sauce. And um, we have a very upsetting story about a oh, cruise you, you ship. Know, maybe we should skip that. Okay. It's so disturbing. Let's well, I, I've got to hear about it. Well, let's, vote right. a, let's vote at the break. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Funny. And then we'll do what Tom wants. I have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I acknowledge that. The meth and the soy sauce is is the meth. Soy sauce. The meth, the meth the and the soy sauce. You said soy sauce. <laughs> the meth in the soy sauce. Is yeah. that the low sodium? <laughs> <laughs> the green packets. That's the one I used. Uh, speaking of food, tis the season. It's the summer. Why does it have a lot to do with food? I don't know. It just seems like food's better in the summer. And also, at the same time, you don't want to waste your time at the grocery store. Oh, sure, it's air-conditioned and nice. They've got a lot of selections. But how about having somebody else do the shopping for you and then doing 90% uh, of the prep for you? That's what HelloFresh is all about. They go to the grocery store. They pack it up and send it to you. And, oh, by the way, they also get it all measured and send you the recipes for great restaurant-level meals at HelloFresh dot com slash BT show 50 the BT show 50 
Well, that 50 stands for 50% off and free shipping as part of a special offer this week. Once again, BT Show 50 at HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 50. What kind of food can you be making? Well, stuff like this. Y'all, check out the Southwest Beef Cavatappi with Poblano and Smoky, Red, Pepper, Crema. HelloFresh sends you 11 ingredients. Put those together in six easy steps. In just over a half hour, you're enjoying this delicious, hearty pasta dish. You made it home with help from HelloFresh. You're going to have more than 40 choices every week. Includes things like crunchy curry chickpea bowls or creamy dill chicken cutlets with green beans and potatoes. This is restaurant quality stuff. And again, the uh, sort of minor touches that make the food so great, they're on little packets and ready to go. And if you don't know a persimmon <laughs> from a, um, a watermelon, <laughs> watermelon, they got pictures, so it'll really help you. It makes you a better cook. And it's fun. It's a great way to teach the kids how to cook. It's great for date night, Josh. Have a sip of wine, baby, and I'm going to make my creamy dill chicken cutlet. That's right. It's great. Check it out. The code is BT Show 50. HelloFresh.com slash BT Show 50. Tell them the Bob and Tom Show sent you. Use that code, and it'll knock 50% off. You also get that free shipping. Coming right back with, um, we're not going to do the horrible story. Let's do, we'll, we'll do the volcano one. That's okay. much, much nicer. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Last time you were here, Eric, you impressed us with your uh, musical skills. You, um, oh, that's right. You, you are, are a manualist. manualist. Yes, I am. Now, for those that don't know what that means, manualism is the um, art. art of manipulating one's hands to make. Uh, there you go. To make that sound. <laughs> that, that wasn't me yet. I didn't. Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> you oh, you man. must be. Sorry, excuse you me. You must kick ass at parties. My, that was my no hands. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know the chicks dig this. Yeah, well, I know they do. <laughs> Yeah, if you're at a party, yeah, this is my, Eric, this is my, this I go, this is my go-to on a first date. I'm gonna this say, if you're at a party baby. and you see Eric and there's a big group of guys hanging around him, this is what they're doing. Wow. <laughs> they're looking, for, yeah, they're looking for uh -huh. that, and, then, and then my Dungeons and Dragons kit too. Uh -huh. doing that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, give us a sample. All right, there you go. Very nice. I see, the, see the group of guys laughing now at the yeah. party? Uh -huh. yeah. What? Wow. While the girls are all over there have rolling you, their eyes. That is amazing. Have you ever been laid doing that? <laughs> hey, you dog owners, listen up. This is something for your big sweetie. Chew Works. Has your dog ever scarfed down one of those chew sticks without really chewing? Chew Works has a hold a chew, which will prevent choking and GI blockage. When dogs can't properly hold the chew stick between their paws anymore, they tend to just swallow it. Available in three sizes, mini, junior, and large. Extra large coming soon. Their whole purpose is to provide a safer and healthier way for your dogs to chew. Chewworks.com. I had a moment where uh, my girlfriend thought she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you know, ladies, if you're uh, if you suspect that you're pregnant, tell the guy during the day. Don't wait until you're about to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. No, you know, because that's what she did. She's like, I have a cramp. I'm like, oh, I might be pregnant. Good night. Huh? I'm like, no, <laughs> Good night. I don't think so. I go, well, well let's find out. Well, what are you gonna do? So I, you know, hauled butt to Walmart. Yep. And um, <laughs> got a test. Got yeah. myself a little test. Doctor in a box. Yeah, two, I know. Two o'clock in the morning, and of all the times to get recognized. Uh -huh. You know, I walk into Walmart in the night shift. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fluffy. I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> what do you need? A miracle. Uh -huh. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> All right, here's some tickets to a Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so I found the aisle where they sell the pregnancy test, and I realized something. Walmart has figured out the evolution of how life works, and yeah. they put it in aisle four. As soon as you turn the corner, you see condoms. Uh -huh. Then you see lubricant. The next to the lubricant, you see pregnancy tests. The next to that, you see pampers. Next to that, formula. Oh, and yeah. at the end of the aisle, they sell beer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. You can hear the show here in the morning, and then because you're a Bob and Tom VIP, you'll get the podcast of the entire show, a 12-month library of podcasts, hundreds of Bob and Tom comedy tapes, and a 60-day video archive of the show. Bob and Tom VIP. You have to get it. It's state law. Yes. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Yeah. Awful entertaining. Essential morning radio. Uh, this is Bob and Tom 24-7. 24-7. 24-7.
clothes Take them all off, baby Honey, pull down the shades Turn down the lights Lock up all of the doors If I catch you wearing my clothes again Honey, I will file for divorce Bob, that skirt doesn't even go with that blouse. Now put on this apron and go do the dishes. Hey, everybody, this is Jimmy Pardo. You recognize my voice from the show and my face from television. You are listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Also with us, Christine Stedman. Now, you're a mom? Well, a mom and a grandma. I think you know that. I know. She's, I'm a grandpa. So this is how this works. Are you? Yep. She's um, been married 27 years and still a virgin. To yes. Well, you know, I have a, I have a lot of grandkids. My daughter keeps having babies, has one almost every year. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, she called me the other day. She goes, Mom, guess what? I'm pregnant again. There must be something in the air. I'm like, yeah, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Hello? <laughs> Bang! Hey, hello? Sing! Uh, I'm getting her fixed. Right now, Killer Bees joins us in the studio. Uh, Bees, how you doing? Real good, man. I well, get up a shopping it. list over here. My wife's eating in bed now. She's at that part of the pregnancy where they crave all this food. Mm -hmm. Some people have mirrors over the bed. We got a sneeze guard. <laughs> 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 Sleeping on those posturepedic sealer meal, man. <laughs> hey, you ain't lived till you're making love, and your wife says, "Go slow. I'm spilling my chili." <laughs> <laughs> All day, all night, all Bob and Tom. This is Bob and Tom 24-7. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Josh Arnold at the contrary. I'm no, I'm not. <laughs> Did you like this music? <laughs> yes. The answer is yes for me. Jack's, uh, Jess Hooker's here, and she has a... Uh, well, an hors d'oeuvre for us, I guess, this morning. I'm, uh, there's Ace Cosby. Hey. There's Willie Griswold. What up? I'm Chick McGee. And here's Tom Griswold. I like this one. I do, too. It's got that spooky guitar chord in there. <laughs> that one. I would not seek this out to listen to it again. I like it. Jazzy. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's spooky. I like it. Um, uh, I love it. <laughs> well, okay. You know, the arbiter of all things of good taste, Ace, what do you think? Well, I hear it was recorded at the shack. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke between me and Chick. Yeah, yeah. He, he likes to do that on the radio where we're broadcasting. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, and no, I kind of hear a lot. I hardly do, and he's talking right to me. Uh, tomorrow's show will come to you from That's right. Dayton, Shut up. Ohio. Um... <laughs> <sighs> um and we'll be here uh, with bells on. No, it'll be at the Dayton there. Arcade in a place called The Tank. Special guest Roy Wood Jr., comedian, and uh, Duke Tomato and the Power Trio. Looking forward to this fun, fun time tomorrow. <laughs> and from the, the the home of the birth of aviation, am I getting that right? Yeah. Dayton Oil. The Wright brothers will not be there. Mm. We couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> their, their flight got canceled. What? <laughs> Isn't that <laughs> ironic? Yeah. Do you know when the Wright brothers were developing those planes? Oh. Like, occasional passengers would die. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah they have blood on their hands. Yeah. No, I mean, they, hey, some guy goes, hey, can I go with you? Sure. And then, you know, pff, whoops. Do you think they still have family in the area? We could have them on the show. I yeah. So, the right Track brothers. them down. The right yeah. nephews or the right <laughs> grandkids. Right. So, so you consider the Wright brothers to be heroes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But in their experiments, they uh, people died. In, in, the, in an attempt to, to gain flight and become a commercial... Well, they uh, would... Thing. They would uh, Set up a, a, a giant going. field, mm -hmm. and they would be doing figure eights, and yeah. people could. Right. Can you imagine? They'd never seen anything like that. Go there's right. this flying machine. So when we're all yes. uh, enjoying submersibles in ten years, uh -huh. will the people who uh, perished uh, recently be considered heroes for uh, being know. a part of? <laughs> this is completely. Different. Hey, how is it completely different? Because they were going. No one had ever done it before. Yeah, oh, and the well, same here. Yeah, that, they hadn't. No, only, only fourteen. They've had submersibles going down to the Titanic for thirty years. Well, I'm just saying. Now, um, France had flight. You want a? Hey, Tom, you want a uh, hors d'oeuvre? 
How about an hors d'oeuvre? Oh, I got a nice amuse. You guys want a snack? Yeah. What is it? So I make these almost every morning. Yeah, and uh, no one else will try them, so now I'm going to force them on you guys. <laughs> what it looks it? like they contain three of my favorite things. So, so they're, I just call them butter dates. They're, <laughs> they're dates uh, without the pit. I took them out with um, some uh, really high-quality butter and um, some walnuts Christy, on top. I, Christy, I, has, I, Christy has her accepting <laughs> face on. No. Well, they do look like pupa, <laughs> but... Uh, they do look like I, I'm, giant, in, I'm eating one right in? now. So it's dates, they do look butter, like giant and cockroach larvae. Walnuts? Yeah. How is it's it, an Jeff? absolute treat, but I love everything involved here. Yeah. I, yeah. I eat dates almost daily. I've never had these, but I love butter dates. It's when I take my old lady to Culver's and we get a little <laughs> silly. <laughs> oh, my God, they're great. This yeah. is so good. Okay. Thank you, Jess. Mm. And it, it looks like a um, kind of a mangled nipple. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. A mangled or a, nipple. Uh, or a cheesy... Uh, no. Well, no. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. Other, other. Yeah. This does not <laughs> look dis- good at all. The distaff side of a cheese. If you don't like dates, don't do it. Is yeah. the that's butter, the white stuff? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, yep. Boy, they Man are butter. They are rich and good. <laughs> yeah. I'm having a second. Ah. <laughs> no good. Don't like dates. <clears throat> oh, never had one before. <clears throat> never had a date. Nope. Well, okay. you, ever, you never eaten a date? <laughs> that, 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 that. <laughs> Any, anyone want to take that, the second that, half no, of this joke? I'm going to no, do it. No. That, that checks out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like anything in that. I don't know why I ate it. You don't like butter? No, but Jess makes good food. Oh, I trusted her. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things, and it's like a meal replacement, and it's like candy. I yep. think it tastes like candy. It does. It does. Dates, dates are like candy. Yeah, very, dates are very like candy. Very chewy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Carmely. Very sweet and creamy. Yeah. There's so Crazy many good ribbons. things. Sounds great on the radio. <laughs> Yeah, in the morning is the best. <laughs> Waffles, bacon, bacon, egg, and cheese sandwiches, pancakes. Why would you replace those with these? <laughs> I, 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 Willie, I hate to disagree. Any way to eat butter, I like butter. They're delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're chewy, and they've got that crunch. they got everything going for them. <laughs> Christy hasn't eaten one, but she has the face that she No, I like don't. She I know she didn't want one. I don't care for one. She made it clear. One. Yeah. What don't you it's like? Not, I, it's not that I don't like any of those ingredients. <clears throat> it's just, for me... I, I, Guys are going to make fun. Yep. It's very high in calories and a lot of fat, and I just can't afford to do that right now. Good. So. No, you are a fat ass. And you just- <laughs> <laughs> sure. I've never seen uh, any. I've never seen anyone so am- fat in my entire life. Yeah. Well. There you go. Yeah. I'm struggling. Do you have to buy clothes for plus size dolls now? I bet you Almost. Do. Yeah. They kick you out of the regular doll store. <sighs> Chunky monkey. I had to give away they... clothes yesterday. They don't fit anymore. It's all sad. Jason told me at the break I was dressed like a cabbage patch doll. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, that wasn't very nice. <laughs> He's He's like, like, a, like the said. farmer, like the farmer cabbage patch. Doll. <laughs> jeans and a baseball shirt. They're wearing jeans and a t-shirt. All right. What the hell? <laughs> he's not wrong. I know he's not wrong. Yeah. yeah. But he's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jay- Jason is like the landmine of conversations. Yes. He'll come by and throw something in and walk away and watch the explosion. Uh, I've got another letter here talking about um, sleeping in separate beds. Oh, what does it say? Uh, this is from Dan. He writes, my older brother is my hero. He has taken separate beds to the next level. He's been married and divorced twice, and he finally figured relationships out. When the house next door to him went on the market, he bought it. And moved his girlfriend into that. I mean, that's, um, that's and awesome. she pays him rent and sleeps in a separate house. The man is a genius. That is one of my dear friends. She and her partner, whatever, have been together 10 years. They have never, never married. She took his last name, though, and they have separate houses right next door to each other every other weekend and on Wednesdays. <laughs> I'm not what? kidding. Yes. It's, that. it's like a custody it's, thing. They have boundaries and they do this. This yes. sounds amazing. Yes. Every other weekend and Wednesdays? Yes. Are what? Are their date nights. And oh. she'll go over there. They bang it out. So do they... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the term bang it out is it somewhat, works. somewhat less than romantic. It works very well. So, does, uh, now, so every other Wednesday, did, is it the schedule so rigorous that, okay, this week it's my place, next week it's your place? It's usually always his place because she has uh, grown children that still live at her house and and other family members, so oh. it's always at his place. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Now it makes complete yeah. sense. It made sense before that, though. This is a genius idea. It is, a, and she has, their boundaries are set. And now, obviously, if the concert comes up sure. or something, they would do yeah. that together, but it works great. We have, a, this show's almost eaten itself. Now we're getting 
emails and texts from Christy's friends, and we get a follow-up from Christy about Christy's friends. Oh. Not only does she have friends who call it... No. Now, I do have a question. Are your friends as fat as you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like really, really fat like you are. <laughs> like hard to be around? You guys Christy, don't you understand. Christy, you, you, look, don't you look understand. very nice. You would have been okay eating hear the one breathing buttery and the, day. You know, like you sweat all the time. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> do you cornstarch your folds? <laughs> I admit I have a problem with food. Yeah, it's my thing. I can tell. <laughs> you want to dig into your guys' problems? <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. See how much longer That's is the kind break. Of... No, not that time. <laughs> yeah. I'm finally letting cheese back in my house. Okay. I was losing weight because I just stopped having cheese in my house. I had magic mushrooms in my drawer for a year. I've got no problem with those. But if I've got cheese in my house... I'm eating it, baby. Everybody's got a thing. I'm making a weird quesadilla with three different kinds of cheese. Well, you know, something that mushrooms. leads to a story. Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can. Do you have the, did I give you the story about the Burger King? Yes, we had it yesterday. What's that maniac up to? Well, oh, that's <laughs> my, like, never. Well, this is an well, icy cold stare. <laughs> of the Burger it's a King. Burger King cheeseburger. Oh. Yeah, but it's really just a cheeseburger. I bet have you, you can eat the this? most out of There's all of There's no Christy. meat at all. I bet Chris, by the way, a dozen of those. Uh, uh, to be fair, this is exclusively in, in Thailand. Thailand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you oh. hadn't got to the story. CNN reports. A fast food chain has introduced what it calls the real cheeseburger, a bun filled with as many as 20 slices of American cheese. <laughs> the item launched on a Thai menu at a reduced price of $3.10 compared to the usual cheeseburger price of $10.90. This is crazy. It quickly went viral on social a, media in there, Thailand. Is there a cheese glut in Thailand you don't know about? <laughs> with many users on TikTok posting videos of them trying the new sandwich, Burger King assured theirs is no joke. This is for real. They are selling cheese sandwiches, basically. Okay. Yes. 20 it's slices of thick. cheese. Yeah, huh. it's this thick. So, I mean, what the, the interesting thing about this is, uh, obviously, you're going to get, there's not going to be a line at the men's room. Or the ladies. Room. Oh, yeah. But when you finally do go, it's going to be a whopper. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You see? <laughs> you ladies again. and gentlemen. When you finally go, it's going to be a whopper. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. At least you but, didn't give us the, that deserved more speech. <laughs> what's the one? That, I'm sorry. What's the one? Who has the Baconator? Wendy's. Wendy's, okay. Wendy's yeah. So this would be the constipator. <laughs> you know, That's right, again, be, this would be the constipator. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. Can you stop throwing it up to yourself and then cheering for yourself? <laughs> I love it. I never want to be stopped. No, no. He thinks it's funny. Uh. Oh, does he, Ace? Uh, once again, <laughs> who does Ace think he is? <laughs> I love it. Uh. Is that your next book, Who I Think I Am? That's <laughs> <laughs> the next one. That that award-winning follow-up from... Unreasonable confidence. It's the thing about the sandwich, I saw the picture. Here we it go. wasn't melted. No, it didn't look yeah. like it was melted at yeah, all. It was just, just cheese. cheese. What? Yes. No. Yeah, it looked like craft singles just yeah. stacked yeah, on top exactly. of each other. Yeah. Like <laughs> it did. With well, one, <laughs> top one, little bit. There you go. Yeah. Will you there look you at go. that? That don't make any sense at all. That is really something. That would not be horrible. Yeah, that would not be that's, enjoyable in your mouth. That's almost two inches of cheese. Yeah. There's no, and, and I didn't realize <laughs> there was, there's no lettuce. Nothing. No. There's no tomato. <laughs> it it, it looks like you it looks yeah. like you bought one of those things of the the plastic lined single. And took all the plastic off exactly. and stuck what them all in there. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It looks so they're, good. They're playing a joke. No. Yeah. Really, really, Willie, it's not too much for you? Here's what I would do it's I would get that in the bottom of my bag with the fries and the whopper on top, the chicken fries on top. I would seal the bag, strap it in, and it would heat slowly. So when it got uh. back to my crib, I'd open it up. I got half melted cheese. That's, I mean, that's, that's what we play for. Willie, you open up a fast, bur uh, fast food burger, and there's cheese stuck to the paper. What do you do? It's the I, I oh my gosh! I'm like an addict. I snort it up. I can't get enough of that stuff. You know what I do? I use one of those really hard fries. Yep. Like the smaller Scoop them up. and that's that becomes like a, 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 a squeegee, a, a bit of a chisel, yeah. yeah, if you will. And then today is National French Fry Day. <gasps> Would Holy you stop no. doing this? Well, you, th this is what Ace does. Okay, all the time. Oh, I saw I, it this morning. See, if you, yeah. I no, saw it, but if there's you told no me way. That yesterday, how are we going to get French fries at six? In I the would have brought French fries instead of Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> now, would you, if 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 Jess had brought French fries, would you have at least had one as a yeah, courtesy? Yeah, I would have had one <laughs> as oh. a courtesy. Don't you think you should eat one of those dates? 
<laughs> I'm not a, don't ever be offended for they're not all, eating They're all they're all gone. Stuff. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It's we not just it's, it's your loss. I, don't, I do not take it personally. My don't own worry. thing. They it's were I have the problem. They were not, delicious. I'm sure they are. I'm sure <laughs> they're Chewy. wonderful. Tom, a touch I of love crunch, dates. a touch of Tom, crunch from the walnut. Yeah. You see the size of her. Yeah. Don't make her eat so I for one am glad job I didn't have. I already have had six pretzel bites. Good God. Good Lord. Listen, we're going to hey, could, could we get Happy Humphrey back with the news? <laughs> Good God. A Japanese steak restaurant in Florida has been closed after meth was discovered in their soy sauce. Meth, <laughs> and, meth and the soy sauce. Uh, no, again, I asked the question, was it was the meth in the uh in the sodium free soy sauce or the regular? I WKRG Magic News. I don't I Reports. Magic. Why would I say Wait, that? Hang on. I don't know. KRG? KRG. It's got a G in it. Magic. Yeah. Okay, there. Reports that the Santa Rosa County Sheriff's Office opened an investigation <laughs> into the Nico Japanese Steakhouse. Butter dates talking to me. <laughs> after seven people were hospitalized. Jesus. Detectives tested two soy sauce bottles and unopened. Detectives. <laughs> No, with magnifying glasses, <laughs> <laughs> trench coat. All right, Mullen, let's send the detectives out there and see what's going on. Detectives with Detectives tested two soy sauce bottles <laughs> and unopened to go packets of soy sauce, soy sauce, which uh, came back as positive for meth. Wow! They, uh, those so someone detectives was... are getting roasted by all the other cops. Yeah. 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 How's that soy sauce investigation? Oh, no, someone's trying to that. poison people. Right. Hey, we got another case. Better get Panda Express on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys. Do you know how they knew that there Problem was... Problem with the orange chicken, fellas. <laughs> this is one of those, um, what do you call it? Uh, not the hibachi, but they got the cooking table. Timpani Timpani whatever the hell it is. Teppanyaki. Teppanyaki. Yeah. So the guy's cooking the... Th you know, I'll, I'll talk Benihana. to you. Benihana. I'll talk to you, Jess. Yeah, the Benihana. It's like yeah. that. This it's, is, it's a similar thing. This, this was not a Benihana. No, it was whatever, a Nico whatever, Japanese. Whatever this steakhouse. place was, yeah. they had the guy out there doing the thing, you know, with me, and mm -hmm. they knew it, there was meth in it because when he did the choo-choo train, uh -huh. it was like a bullet train just zipping right across the thing. And, Wait a minute, something's wrong here. This, guy, this, this guy's all hopped up. <laughs> you know, after a big drug bust, they take the picture of the cops and it's in front of like there's like two guns and a big thing of cash and like Ooh. a bunch of bagged up drugs on the table. Did they do this with just those little soy sauce packets yep. on the table? Oh, oh yeah. Crossing their arms like a big bus <laughs> and, and, and the grinning Asian cook with the big knife. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'd like the Breaking Bad roll. <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with, uh, this, oh, these poor guys. Do poor think, guys? Who? Do you think this it was, restaurant no, didn't? Someone, the poor someone, guys because they don't know who contaminated yeah, someone, the food. Somebody did it. Yeah. Someone yeah. did it to this restaurant for right. whatever reason. And, Remember mm -hmm. when you just switched the salt and the sugar when you were a kid? You thought yeah, that now was it's funny? <laughs> 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 yeah. I'd like the crank Rangoon. I'm off the soy sauce. I'm liquid aminos. Yeah, That's I the way that to go, too. yeah. I really enjoy it. Mm. You think you're better than liquid me, don't amino. you? No, well, I know I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is liquid amino? It's, it's, it's a coconut. coconut. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really good. Coconut based, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's good. And Mass they, amounts do, of soy aren't good for your Do they have hormones. this at, uh, at the restaurants? I don't know. I buy it at home. I buy it. Bring it. Yeah, I, I don't have think it at so. home. You bring it in? No. No, I, I but don't, I get no. sushi to go and eat it at home. Don't a lot of sushi chefs go, aren't they kind of insulted that yeah. we are just dunking everything in Appar soy sauce? Apparently in Japan, uh -huh. you don't do that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. And you don't use chopsticks in Japan either with soy with uh, sushi. What? what do you use your fingers? Why are sushi so big? Yeah, always with your fingers. Do you That's... think they should be a little more bite size? Yeah, especially the rolls. No How kidding. Are you supposed to get those in your mouth. And they just you girls can't fit those in your mouth. Oh, oh yeah. we have nothing to talk. This date's over. You can't. I I love using chopsticks. I love using them. I had a poke bowl last night for dinner, and I used it. But I for uh, sushi. How many of those can you eat? Poke bowl. Oh, boy. I didn't finish it. Are you? Is it must have been of the size of a bathtub? Oh, okay. it was just. Small. Be, is there I'll have the salmon and tuna? I have a question. <laughs> is there is there a um uh, uh, a, a contest that involves testing your dexterity with chopsticks? I'm oh. Curious. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, you mean what you can pick up with chopsticks? Like how small a grain of rice or whatever? I got to tell you, it's, it's, I'm kind of a chopstick savant. Are you? Is that yeah. right? Oh, yeah. It's one of the great skills. I am not. <laughs> Do you have nice. your own set of chopsticks? No, 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 no. No? 
Now, Josh has the ones you screw them together like it's a pool cue. <laughs> is that in right? In a little tiny case, yeah. Yeah, the visual is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you, you do have your own child. Fats California roll, they call me. <laughs> do you like the when metal I, ones? No. I hate the metal uh, ones. No. I got real good with those because that's all that were available in Korea. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're slippery. I can well, pick no. up an ice cube with those. What? I'm very good. Cool, Brad. I bet, I, I bet I'm better. We, we have to have a contest. I bet I'm better. Is that right? We have to have a contest. Uh, right now, Josh, I know the one thing you're not great at necessarily is being a handyman. Therefore, you have to have a lot of help at the house. Therefore, you're so glad that Angie is up and running with a way to find some really good people. That's exactly right. I can finish a home project. I just can't do it well, and that's the key with Angie. Angie's made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. If you own a home, look, you know how much work it can take. Maybe it's everyday maintenance and repairs, or perhaps you have a dream project you want to turn into a reality. It can be hard just to know even where to start. Maybe you don't have the right tools or the right design, but now all you need to do is Angie that. That means you're going to find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you require. Angie has over 20 years of home service experience. They've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. You bring them your project online or on the Angie app, answer a few questions, and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish. Or... And she will help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly so you can find out how much a job will cost, what it'll entail. But man, oh man, will you be happy that you Angie'd that. Which means you can take care of about any home project in only a few taps. That's what Angieing that is all about. When it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app or visit Angie.com today. That's A-N-G-I dot Calm. I sure am happy I've Angie'd that before because I would never have done as good a job as uh, the professionals I found. Thank you very much, Josh. When we come back, we may have the letter that ties all of this discussion about separate bedrooms together. All right. Okay. Right there, see you? Yeah, I like it. You want me to read it to you? When we come back. Sure. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Thanks for listening to the Bob. We're trying to see how Chick McGee will do in the cherry spitting competition in the parking lot. I care for cherry. No, I, I, well, here, I'll eat the cherry, then I'll give you the pit. Oh, no, no, you don't do that. No. <laughs> no. I've never been so turned on in my life. Come on. <laughs> now, when no. you do it, you have to pass it uh, tongue to tongue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, yeah. now, we just talked with one of the champions. It oh, turns out yeah. Nats, hey, Bob. Yeah. Nats love cherry. Oh, do they? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? It may just be me that they love. I haven't been able to shower since last Tuesday. Oh, so. oh, yeah. oh. Oh, don't yeah. tell us that. I can't get this wound wet. Oh, I'm that's sorry. Too there bad. may be a BO issue here. Oh, boy. Okay, so it's 50 feet to the poster of me. Right. Now, is the, the line is right here where the sidewalk meets the asphalt. So, uh, has Chick uh, popped a cherry in his mouth? Does he have a pit in there? Have you have you ever popped a cherry? No, never have the pit. Oh, come on. One time in Wells, West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Chick McGee is. Uh, he's at the line. Uh, he's got, now, he's remember. He's the cherry. The pit, where is the pit in your mouth right now? Oh, he, he dropped it. Oh, oh three three second rule. Oh, I'm sure there are no, I'm sure there are no goose turds. Netta, he put it back in his mouth. Oh, this okay. is where the geese poop all the time. Oh, no. yeah. No, they pooped on the it, other side. It hasn't rained in Not three in months. Parking lot. Okay, now, uh, is uh, is there a line that Chick ha he can't yes. cross? You, you can't cross. Plant your feet. He's got to get a toe on the line. Uh, you predicted you could spit it how far? 30 feet is what you... Okay, I think you're going to get maybe 20. Wait a minute, I have a severe crosswind. You feel that? Oh, now he's... Oh, pussy crosswind. Oh, yeah, crosswind. well, you know, those crosswinds... You think can... the bullet cross complains about a crosswind? Probably. Uh-huh. Bitches about a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> have we got... Uh... Okay, go ahead. Do we, have, do we have our measuring tape? It's already marked on the, on the pavement. Okay, ready? Go ahead. It's off and Where did it, go? it got to the second blue tape, which how, is how, how far? far is that? 20 feet. 20 feet. Oh. That's how you, that's you said you 30. There's a significant difference. Okay. Now chick is leaning back. Uh, now are you folded? Is the, is the pit folded into your tongue? Remember he said the key is lung power and getting a vacuum seal. He just spit. Uh, no. How much? What do you think? What is that? That's short of 20 feet. 
Short okay. of 20? Okay, short of 20 It's getting feet. worse. You're, Again, you're, what? You're next. I think you need a... Okay. Yeah, Tom, put your money where your mouth is. I never said I could do this. Oh, yeah? Come on. Okay. Come on, These spit. cherries been washed? Come on, chick, chew up a cherry for him. They've been washed. Beat them like a bird. Cherries. Haven't you seen them wash them at the store? <laughs> Go ahead, take over. Oh, boy. Oh. Breathe <laughs> through your nostril. <laughs> You look like Jeez. you look like some bad lawyer at the turn of the century in court. <laughs> Your Honor, uh, I've never in all my oh, 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 he's ready. I can't do that. I'm a... you, roll, have you swallowed roll. the cherry meat? No, what's the technique here? You roll your spit tongue. It. Can you roll Just your tongue? Spit. I'm afraid I'm gonna swallow it and choke. Just well, spit. Now we could only help. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! That didn't even go ten feet. Here comes Christy Lee, ladies and gentlemen. All she's right, got, now we have a gal. She's got on her Daisy Dukes. Great lung capacity. Okay, let me get this microphone down here in front of Christy. Mm -hmm. That's the smallest tongue I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, well, let's All right. do that. I don't know why I can't do this. Like I don't a, think I'm going to be very like good. A three-year-old tongue. <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, Eighteen-year-old tongue is what Thank you meant to say. Every, the all line, models the line the is where the asphalt meets the cement. He's out here with his cane. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm injured. Do you mind? Uh huh. Okay, step up. You you, you can't take a running start. All right. Uh, is Christy eating? A Christy chair? has kind of a controversial stance, Bob. She has her her feet staggered. Okay. And uh, now the t the technique, Christy, you're supposed to go up and down like you're doing jumping jacks. <laughs> Remember, it's that's Brawless always, Day. That's right. It is Brawless Day. Okay, here we go. Christy leans back. Can she spit? No, she's. You can't make her laugh. It, I, what was that? Two feet? <laughs> was that? How far did that go? Six feet. Okay. Uh huh. I you, think she got a little on her chin. <laughs> <laughs> how are we on time, Bob? We don't have a score as time. Well, well, we have about uh, one or two more minutes here. I've never been a spitter, Bob. That a girl. <laughs> That's what I like about it. I think her. those Christy Lee, I've never been a, <laughs> never been a spitter t-shirt, might be a big already, item for the store. Hey, guys. My dad has a new album out called Under the Bed, and it would really help a lot if you were to check that out so I can go to college. <laughs> Spit take fit. Wow. Join us next week for another edition of Spit Take Theater. Hi, this is Augie Smith. You're listening to Bob and Tom 24 7. Oh, we have um, comedian Michael Palasak joining us here in the studio. Now, uh, you are a young guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, out on the road doing your comedy. I've seen your live show. It was it was great. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Now, are you, uh, you were, as I recall, a college man? Yeah, I, uh, I graduated a while ago, and it's weird because. Uh, I didn't know I was going to do this right away, and people would always ask me those questions. They'd be like, oh, Michael, what are you going to do after graduation? What are you going to do after graduation? <laughs> what are you going to do after graduation? I'm just like, well, I'm pretty sure my parents are taking me out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. After that, I have no idea. Uh -huh. I was an English major. All that's helped me do is critique my rejection letters. <laughs> <laughs> Tell it, brother. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, there should be a comma there. <laughs> <laughs> in between the words incompetent and unqualified. That's, yeah, separate That's adjectives. Bad. What are your friends doing from college? Uh, I don't yeah. know. One of my friends, I remember he was he was really into science. One of my friends at school, one time he was like, Michael, I'm going to get a tattoo of an atom on my arm. I was like, wow, that's going to be really small. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You yeah, probably yeah. won't be able to see it if it's accurate. Uh, 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 <laughs> I got tattoos of atoms all over my body. Where are they? I don't believe you. <laughs> Here's one of the fattest things I've ever done. I ate a pie in a car. By myself. The apple pie that we had, it was so thick and beautiful, I just ate it like a piece of pizza. Wait a minute. So you ate a pie by cutting it into triangular pieces <laughs> and eating it one by one? Like a, what a weirdo! Like a pizza? No, like without a fork is what I meant. You pick it up and you eat it like a piece of pizza. You dick. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're listening to Bob and Tom 24-7. Coming up. Welcome back to the Bob and Tom Show. Christy Lee at the news desk. Hello. There's Josh Arnold. Hi there. There's Jess Hooker. Hello. There's... Ace Cosby. Buddy. That's right. There's Willie Griswold. Hey, man. I'm Chick McGee, and here's Tom Griswold. With, I believe, uh, today in history. Is that right? Not yet. Not yet. We've been talking all morning about this uh, so-called sleep divorce 
in which uh, it's essentially it means people are uh, often sleeping in separate beds. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, the American Institute of Sleep, blah, 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 has <laughs> called it sleep divorce. And uh, interestingly enough, I, the one thing about this that I thought was interesting was apparently um, millennials are significantly more likely to sleep apart mm -hmm. than, uh, than baby boomers. Uh, so um, uh, a lot of interesting stats on this topic. But we talked about it in uh, separate bedrooms, in some cases separate houses, um, depending on schedules, et cetera, et cetera. Th this letter uh, comes to us from uh, Dwight. Ah. Oh. He goes, uh, first time emailer, long time listener. My wife and I have had separate bedrooms for over 10 years. She likes to sleep with the TV on. I like it dark and quiet. My bedroom is the designated sex room. Oh. I have sex while she's in her bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir. <laughs> I, 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 it kind of ties, ties it right up. Uh, but I, again, when, when, if you have the separate bedroom thing, how do, what is the designated... Uh, I think it's great because you have two places. Yeah, you can yeah. mix it up. Somebody can have silk yeah. sheets. The other person can have linen. Right. <laughs> you can... Uh, yeah, I don't... I don't. You, it, it's an invitation. It kind of makes it feel like a date or a hookup or something. There's a little excitement there, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Sure. So do you, is there a code? I mean, do you, is there a texting thing? Uh, do you knock? Yeah, you text. You're in the same house. It's not. It's got to be different for you every You can have couple, a conversation. You, you can have a conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat up on the texting protocol, so you right. do. That, uh, I, I, you think CTF. you are. Yeah. Do, you, do you do the classic letter U space oh. UP question mark? Or you could do the DTF question mark. Mm-hmm. Or just slide in the bed. Yeah, or just go in there. Spontaneity. There you go. Just slide in without an invitation. Oh my in mood. Yeah. Get them in the mood. We understand that human relation baffles you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you go about it? Do you get something notarized? And get I something asked yesterday. <laughs> he wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> this is my attorney, Mr. Cohen. And I'd just like to tell you. Time for today in history. Uh, oh. Okay. okay. Say by the bell. Time now for today in history. This may take a while. Oh, no, better uh -oh. not. Um, right. Today is what, July 13th? Oh, okay. Way late. Um, 100 BCE. Uh, happy birthday, Julius Caesar. Hmm. Um, Julie. Friends call him Julie. I like that hotel he has in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> um, happy birthday. Harrison Ford, born in 1942. Thank you very much. Uh, cake. I'm old now. Very Give me a old. big piece of cake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the, he never the, takes his teeth apart. That's yes, right. Oh, he's great in that in the new Indiana Jones movies, and he's, he's great in a TV show called um, Shrinking. 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 No Cheech way. Marin, uh, fine actor, great comedian, mm -hmm. and collector of art, and you have quite the intellect. Yeah, bright yeah. guy. He was the, one of the first guys on uh, what was it, Celebrity Jeopardy, and he killed everybody. Yeah. Oh, wow. Real 1946. smart. Um, Real smart he is. Uh, SpongeBob. Tom Kenny, comedian, born in 1962. Ken Jong, friend of the show, also comedian. Best friend of Bobcat, Tom Kenny. Um, and uh, finally, in uh, 2305, the birthday of Jean-Luc Picard. Mm. Ah, right. yes. Of the United Federation of Planets. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, and in oh 1923, the Hollywood sign. <laughs> this, is, this, this is for you, Ace. The Hollywood sign was dedicated in 1923. What did it say then? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Hollywood Land, right? Hollywood Land. It was a real estate development called Hollywood Land. Oh, huh. that's right. Um, in uh, 1934, Babe Ruth hit number 700. Uh, historic day. Blah, blah. And that's a woman, uh, obviously. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, 700 yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. And uh, or... things we learned today on the show, Tom uh, thinks his heart doctor doesn't listen to our show <laughs> due to the fact that all the caffeine he drinks every morning. The decaf? Yeah, it's decaf. Yes. Right. Right. Uh, we talked about sleep divorces all morning. Tom has been shunned by the male gay community. That's exactly right. We had official correspondence from the uh, gay coalition this morning. They don't want me in, so I can't go gay. Oh, did you not hear the possibility that if Tom... <laughs> well, no, I, I made the remark that if, if I were gay, I thought I could do better than Godwin. Mm -hmm. Somebody I, no, said... I definitely heard that part. Also, yeah. the expression, can't go gay, is why they won't let you in. <laughs> <laughs> One of the reasons. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <clears throat> and the Flintstones are a cartoon, Tom, not real people. Okay. Homosexual hotline. Um, your closet is our lobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closer. Another reason. 
Uh, the log on the fire. See you in Dayton. This is the Bob and Tom Show. For a complete copy of the Bob and Tom Show contest rules, go to bobandtom.com slash contest dash rules. Or just scroll down to the bottom of the page and see contest rules.